So hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto was abandoned by Kashina and adopted by Tsunade. The movie. If you guys enjoy this, what if? Comment down below. And let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. And check out my playlist. So let's start the video. Chapter 1. Prologue. Ashina woke up feeling exhausted like she hadn't ever felt before, and her eyes fluttered open. She groggily looked around to see the white ceiling of the hospital and sat up feeling pain course throughout her body with every movement she made. Then the memories of the night came rushing back to her as she remembered all that she had lost last night. She remembered how her husband sacrificed himself to seal that demon and save the village. She felt a pang of hurt as she remembered how he had split the yin and yang halves of the chakra and sealed them into Mido and Narumi, well the soul of the demon into her son Naruto. She reached onto the side of the bed and let her feet touch the cold icy tiles of the hospital floor and got up with a great amount of effort. Suddenly the door clicked open and in walked Jiraiya, Tsunade, Hiruzen and Kakashi. They all looked stunned that Kashina was up and already standing. Tsunade rushed to her side and helped her as she stumbled a few steps and helped her stand straight. Kashina even if you are in Yuzumaki having a ripped apart from your body has taken its toll on you. You should rest and let your body recover from the strain. She scolded, but Kashina paid it no mind. Tsunade brought her back to the bed and helped her sit gently as she started going through her medical charts. Well Kashina you should be fine after a week's worth of rest. But there has been a lot of damage to your chakra coils that will take some time to recover. You will have to spend a couple of years in rehabilitation to let your chakra coils recover before you could use the shinobi arts again. She said and Kashina nodded and gave her a small smile as Tsunade smiled back. Alright you people talk, I have to go and check on some other surgeries that are going on. She said and left as Hiruzen gave her a grateful nod for returning back to the village in its time of need. He knew it was only temporary, but the village needed her medical skills, and he was glad she was there. She had saved many lives already treating the patents that had been given up by the medical staff, and he couldn't be prouder of his student. He walked up to Kashina's bed as he saw she was lost in thought and put a hand over her shoulder as she looked at him surprised that she had spaced out and smiled a little smile back, and he saw that she was hiding the pain that was in her heart. Hiruzen, where are my children? please bring them to me. She said in a pleading voice, and he nodded as the three men walked up to the cribs and took a hold of each of the peacefully sleeping children in their arms. Hiruzen and Jurea laid the twin redeated girls in her arms as she looked at them smiling that they had completely inherited her Yuzumaki traits as they gazed at her sleepily with their violet eyes and went back to sleep. The three men smiled at seeing their interaction, and Kakashi stepped forward to hand over her third child as he put his hands forward. Ashina saw the blonde bundle in his arms and her eyes widened as she laid her first gaze on him and immediately saw those three faint whisker marks on each of his cheek and remembered what he held. Flashbacks of the previous night came rushing back to her as she saw the visions of Kaiubi piercing Minato's abdomen with his claw as he tried to save Naruto and finally sealed the soul into him and her hand slapped Kakashi's hand away. Kakashi was startled as his hand was slapped and saw Naruto felt the movement and was about to get up when he started rocking the little child and he went back to deep slumber snuggling in his arms and he smiled under his mask, seeing how much he looked like his beloved sensei. Hiruzen and Jiraiya too saw the interaction and were surprised at Kashina's actions. Hiruzen decided to voice his confusion as he felt dread form in the pit of his stomach. Kashina, what's wrong, don't you want to hold your son? He asked gently and she stared at him with icy eyes that startled him a bit. That thing is not my son anymore. She said in an icy cold tone, and all three were wide-eyed at what she said. Kashina what do you mean, Naruto is your son? Hissed Jiraiya in a low voice not wanting to startle the sleeping kids, and she glared at him. No, my son died the moment Minato sealed the soul of the Kaiubi into him. He is possessed by the demon that killed my husband and almost destroyed the village completely. Look at those whiskers on his cheek. Those are proof enough of the possession. He is the reason my husband died and left me alone. She hissed glaring at the blonde bundle in Kakashi's arms as he held him protectively in his arms and backed up a couple of steps away from the bed. Hiruzen was stunned at the confession she made and the pure hatred she glared at the little blonde bundle with. Kashina you can't be serious, that is your son. Just look at the resemblance he bears with Minato. He has inherited those strong Namika's genes from your husband. Don't be blinded by your hatred. He spoke gently trying to get the point across. Yes Kashina you were a Jinchuriki yourself, you should know better than to talk about it like that said Jiraiya in a calm tone trying to keep his temper in check while Kashina's face darkened as she glared at them. That thing killed my husband and took possession over my son's body, and those marks on his face are proof enough. Minato must have slipped up the seal in his last moments, and the demon took advantage of it. Just finish that thing off and be done with it. 
It has caused so much damage to this village and my family already. She said in a cold tone and all three were wide-eyed at her words and their eyes turned cold as they glared at her. I expected better from you Kashina. Said Hiruzen as Jiraiya and Kakashi too followed him without saying a word. They walked out of the room and sat down on the bench in the hallway, all of them in deep thought. Tsunade was walking down the hallways as she saw the three sitting there with thoughtful expressions on their faces and saw the little blonde bundle in Kakashi's arms as he stirred away Ken was getting a bit uncomfortable. Kakashi tried to calm him down, but he kept struggling. All the three men tried everything they could, but the boy wasn't calming down as they saw his troubled expression. He wasn't crying, but they knew he was uncomfortable and nearly whimpering, but didn't know why or what to do for him. Tsunade saw the pathetic attempt of the three men calming him down, and they were all startled as Tsunade walked up to them and took him in her arms as she wrapped him up in a warm embrace. He instantly calmed down and smiled as she rubbed his back gently and held him by his waist as she gazed at him with a loving expression. Naruto just kept staring at her with wide blue curious eyes, and she smiled at him lovingly as she kissed him softly on the lips, and he giggled happily as she rocked and cooed him making him giggle all the more. Aren't you adorable my little angel? She cooed and he gazed at her curiously and rubbed her cheek softly with a bright smile as she held him closer to her. All the three were dumbfounded as Tsunade played with the little child that they were trying so hard to calm down and smiled a moment later seeing her lost in her own little world. She cradled him in her arms and watched as he was smiling and giggling as she rubbed his whiskers that made him look all the more adorable in her eyes. She brought him closer to her chest as he yawned cutely and snuggled into her embrace and just went back into his deep slumber again. She smiled at his peaceful sleeping face and gazed at the three smiling men and looked on curiously. Why is it that you three idiots are taking care of him instead of Kashina? She asked and all of them looked down ashamed, confusing her greatly. Well you see Tsunade, Kashina has kind of abandoned Naruto thinking that he is possessed by the Kaiubi. Said Hiruzen nervously as the temperature of the hallways dropped a couple of degrees. What? She asked in a low voice and all of them began to sweat as Kakashi spoke up. Well you see Tsunade-sama, she believes him to be the Kaiubi and that his soul has taken over his body. She even went as far as to call for the boy's death. Explained Kakashi nervously and Hiruzen inside. Yes, well she isn't the only one, the whole council and the villagers are forcing me to either execute him or just throw him out of the village and be done with it. With Kashina abandoning him, he has nowhere to go. The orphanage isn't safe, and with the truth of his heritage and the burden he holds within him, the villagers as well as his father's enemies will stop at nothing to kill the boy. He said sadly and all of them looked down as Kakashi spoke up. Jureya sama why don't you adopt the boy, he will be safe with you. Said Kakashi and Jureya grew nervous as he looked around trying to think of an excuse. Well Kakashi I have to run the spy network for the village and I can't have the fear of a helpless child with me if someone tries to attack me for something. And I really am not a great father material kind of a guy you know. He said laughing nervously and here is inside. I would have adopted him, but the council will raise hell over it, and with Baiko's death and me retaking the Hokage position, I cannot take care of him, there just isn't the time that a small child like him needs if he is with me. He said soberly and both turned to Kakashi. Well I have Anbu duties and I really don't have any experience with children, nor am I mature enough to raise him. Plus, he reminds me too much of Sensei, it hurts to just see him and be reminded of the loss that I have endured. He said as all three of them looked down on the ground thinking of what to do as Tsunade had enough of their rambling. Pathetic. She whispered and they all looked at her questionably. I think that you would all make such excuses and leave a little child of a person who gave up his life for this pathetic excuse of a village. How far has this village fallen? To think that a mother abandons her own son, his father's friends abandon his son as a worthless child, and the village he died protecting is calling for the murder of his child. This isn't the village that my grandfather and granduncle envisioned and died for. It was their dream that no child should ever suffer the childhood that they faced in their era, and thus the village hidden in the leaves was found, but I guess they failed. She said icily and all of them averted their eyes ashamed as the truth was slammed into their faces. Don't worry about the child if none of you cowards are willing to take responsibility for him, I'll adopt him as my own son. She said calmly and all of their eyes widened as Hiruzen and smiled hopefully. So you are going to stay in the village now Tsunade? He asked hopefully, and she scoffed as they all looked confused. I've seen the real face of this village tonight and it disgusts me to no end. No, I will be retiring from the shinobi forces completely and go out of the village to raise Nerichan there as my own son. He will be safer there than here with all the wolves hunting him in the village. She said and hears and was wide-eyed. You can't be serious Tsunade, the village needs you now more than ever and Naruto belongs here where his father wanted him to be raised. He said desperately and she glared at him icily as he flinched from the stare. I came here just to treat the people of this village from the attack after I heard about the attack on the village and the magnitude of the destruction. 
I was going to retire anyways, but I guess destiny had a beautiful plan for me in mind. Kami gave me a beautiful son to raise and live for. She whispered softly kissing Naruto and Hiruzen smiled sadly knowing she was right and he had no way to make her stay. Plus, Naruto was really not safe in the village at the moment. The villagers were plotting ways to get rid of him and the council wanted him to keep the demon away from the hero twins Yuzumaki so that he won't get his power back and kill them. But Tsunade, what about the enemies that will be hunting him down for his father's enemies? You are safer here than outside the village. Said Jiraiya knowing the village needed the strength of a Sanin and her skills desperately at the moment and she glared at his pathetic excuse for keeping her tied down. Please I am one of the Sanin Jiraiya and my skills haven't gotten that rusty for now. Ever since I got rid of my hemophobia I have upped my skills again, and I don't think that anyone is stupid enough from Iwer Kumo to take me on just for the sake of hurting a child and bring the wrath of Konoha on them. They are recovering from the last war themselves and won't do anything stupid for now. Nothing any of you say will make me stay in the village any longer. She said and Jureya nodded hesitantly knowing she was right. Kakashi just listened silently knowing Tsunade will be giving him the love of a mother that he so desperately needed. It was the best for him and he was happy for his sensei's legacy. Alright Saratobi sensei, I'll send my retirement papers at your office tomorrow morning, along with the adoption papers for Neruchan. I'll leave tomorrow at noon after we have dealt with everything. She said and he nodded hesitantly knowing there wasn't anything he could say to make her stay in the village. Alright then I have healed all those that needed my immediate assistance and left the rest of the cures needed with the medical staff. If that is all I will be retreating to the Senju compounds for the night. Me and Neruchan need a bit of sleep. She said getting up and they watched her leave with ashamed faces, knowing that the truth she spoke of their cowardice would sting them for quite some time. Senju Compounds Tsunade walked through the large Senju Compounds to the house of the clan head and saw that this abandoned part of the village was mostly unscathed, with the barrier seals of her grandmother still holding up strong even after all these years. She walked through the gate of the house and onto the rock steps on the grounds of the huge garden towards the old royal two-story house that was still as elegant and beautiful as it was in its old days. She opened the door as the barrier didn't stop her recognizing her blood and chakra signature, and she walked in towards the master bedroom and put down Naruto on the huge bed as she went into the bathroom to get changed into her sleepwear and came out in a white robe tied around her and her hair flowing freely as she sat on the bed and took up Naruto in her arms and sat down as she heard the door open and knew Shizune must have come home. Shizune slid open the door and dropped a small bag in her hand in shock as she saw Tsunade there holding a little child in her arms, gazing at him lovingly. She wondered who the child was, and his blonde hair just shocked her all the bit more. Tsunade-sama, who is that child? She asked in a stunned voice pointing at Naruto and Tsunade saw Naruto's eyes open slightly from the voice as he yawned cutely and gazed at her with those wide blue curious eyes again. Shizune came beside her and sat down as she watched the adorable child that wasn't even paying attention to her and just staring at Tsunade curiously. Tsunade kissed his lips softly and he smiled and giggled happily as she cooed him and suddenly Naruto tugged on her robe slightly. She thought that he must be hungry since the last food he was given at the hospital was six hours ago. She gently opened her robe as Naruto latched himself on her nipple and she held him close to her as she held a ram hand seal and Naruto started feeding himself happily. Shizune watched in disbelief as she saw her master feeding the little child on her own. But didn't understand how that was even possible for her to do. H how? She stuttered out and Tsunade smiled at her little apprentice. This is a medicine that I wanted to introduce to the nurses at the hospital for children who lost their mothers unexpectedly and needed to be fed. The council shot down the proposal seeing that it took a lot of training and time and they thought of it as a waste of time for potential combat medics during war. Well I guess it does have its uses now. The user sends the medical chakra activating our mammary glands forcefully and stimulates them to create the milk for the child. I am the only one for now who can use it with the amount of control it needs, or it could lead to breast cancer in any inexperienced females attempting it. She said as Shizu nodded with a smile and was amazed at the skill of her master as she watched the little blonde boy feed himself. She saw the glow of happiness on Sanadi's face and smiled at the two. She hadn't seen that smile on her face in so many years. This was what she needed the most she mused. Who is Sanadi sama she asked and Tsunade changed the position for little Naruto as he latched onto her other nipple and gazed at Shizune with a smile. I have adopted him, Shizune and his name is Naruto. Kishina has abandoned him, he is actually Minato's son and has the soul of the Kaiubi sealed into him. The whole village, his mother included, has abandoned him and is calling for his death. I'll take him away from this village and leave the village tomorrow. I will send my retirement papers tomorrow morning along with his adoption papers and we'll leave tomorrow at noon. She said and Shizune was wide-eyed that they would do such a thing and watched as Naruto stopped and Sanadi smiled as she tied a robe again. 
She undid her and watched as Naruto was staring at her curiously and then saw him looking at Shizun for the first time. Shizun gasped as she saw his wide beautiful cerulean eyes staring at her curiously and hesitantly took him in her arms as she saw him staring at her. She just resisted the urge to yell Kawe and glomp him to death at his adorable face. She watched as he gazed back at Sanadi and opened his arms to her urging her to hold him and she took him from her and cradled him in her arms as he snuggled into her embrace happily. Shizun was surprised that he had such an attachment to her in such a short amount of time. He really likes Tsunade-sama. She whispered as she saw Naruto feeling sleepy and going in and out of sleep, and Tsunade nodded. Yes, after all he is my son. She spoke in a soft and happy voice making Shizun smile as she walked out of the room towards her own, letting them have their rest. Tsunade lay down with her head on the pillow facing sideways as she gazed into the sleepy eyes of the little blonde beside her. Do you like me as your mother Naruchan? She whispered softly and he rubbed her cheek with his tiny hand and she kept her own on his hand as she brought him clothes and he snuggled into the crook of her neck happily and she smiled. It was almost as if he understood her words she mused. She closed her own eyes and went to sleep with a big smile after all those years. Good night Naruchan. She whispered as sleep claimed them both and they slept peacefully into the night. The next morning, Tsunade woke up with a yawn as she felt something snuggle into her neck and a small breath on her neck as she gazed down at the little blonde bundle, cuddled up against her and smiled. She slowly sat up with him in her arms as he too yawned cutely and gazed at her with those curious cerulean orbs. She was transfixed by his eyes and his little smile and she was surprised that he hadn't cried once since last night when those three idiots were scaring her little cute baby. She saw him and fed him as he tugged on her robe again and she rubbed his back gently waiting for him to burp and then freshened up herself and little Naruto as she sat in the warm water of the bathtub with Naruto in her arms who was giggling and playing with the water. She played with him and laughed so happily after a long time and felt completely refreshed. She walked out of the bathroom as she walked over to the dresser and closet for some clothes. She opened it and saw her usual clothes but chose to discard the green jacket for today and wore a white full-sleeved battle kimono that gave her good access if she had to feed Naruto again. She picked up Naruto and put the diapers on him that Shizune had brought her a while ago and wrapped him up in a blue blanket with a senju symbol on it as she walked out with her hair tied in a loose bun with A. She walked through the streets and towards the Hokage Tower as every villager turned and gazed at her, curiously seeing the little blanket in her arms and whispering things about who the child was or was he her son, since they gazed at his blonde hair and started gossiping. She paid the idiots no mind as she gazed down at a little boy hidden from the villagers in the blanket and saw him playing with a lock of hers's free hair and smiled as she came up to the Hokage Tower. Hokage Tower, Hokage Office, Harizen was going through his paperwork and was wondering if it would ever end. The stacks just kept piling up no matter how many he completed. He sighed as he heard a knock on the door and sighed in relief from the break he got. Come in. He said and the door opened as Sanadi walked in with a blue blanket in her arms and he saw the familiar mop of sun-kissed blonde hair peeking out of it and smiled at his student. Maybe this would be good for the both of them he mused. Sanadi walked up and placed a scroll on his desk with the official Senju clan seal on it and he sighed. You don't have to retire, you have a lot of years ahead of you and you already have San and travel rights you can just go without retirement. He tried to persuade her one last time, and she just scoffed. Please Saratobi sensei that means the village can recall me if there is ever trouble and force me to return. I don't want to return to this village until I want to and until Neri-chan is ready for it. She said and he sighed as he took the scroll and unsealed it. It was worth a try he mused as he stamped the scroll handing it to her secretary and knew the council would raise hell over it. He took out the papers for adoption and kept them in front of her as Tsunade took a seat and picked up the brush, signing it as Hiruzen took them back and stamped them with his official seal and handed them to his secretary too. Saratobi sensei this adoption is official right, I mean Kishina is still his real mother. She said uncertainty as Hiruzen cut her off with a wave. I had the paperwork done with her last night after you left and she has evicted Naruto from the Uzumaki clan and has cut all her ties with him. She requested for Minato's inheritance, and I am afraid that Minato has left most of his fortune for the girls, since Kishina has evicted him from it and left just a little for Naruto. Minato believed Kishina would take care of him and left her the guardian of his fortune, but he has left the knowledge he had for Naruto seeing he took after him. He said handing her some scrolls with the Namika's seals and Tsunade took them with a smile. Well I don't care about the money anyways the Senju fortune is already large enough. And I'm sure Neri-chan will appreciate these much more than money anyways. She said and here is and nodded with a smile. I suggest you keep the name Naruto Senju for now and do not associate with Anamika's name for the time being until the animosity dies down a bit alright. He said and she nodded with a smile as she gazed down at the little child in her arms. So how do you like your new name Naruto-chan, Naruto Senju has a nice ring to it right? 
she asked cooing, and he giggled happily making the adult smile, and Sanadi sat there playing with him. So Sanadi where will you go now? Asked Hiruzen and Sanadi answered him while playing with Naruto not looking at him. There is an old Senju compound unused from the Warring States era. Grandpa used to take me there when I was a child, and it is quite a big house with lots of open spaces and the protection of my grandmother and granduncle's seals. So it should be the safest place for Naruchan for now. There is a small village nearby for supplies and is unknown to almost everyone now. She said and hears and nodded sadly. So when will you return to the village? He asked and she frowned. I don't know sensei, maybe when the village has recovered enough from their hate and Naruchan has grown up enough. If the villagers would still hold their hatred on him then I don't know if I would really ever return if Naruchan doesn't want to. She said and he nodded hoping that the villagers came around in time. So I guess this is goodbye for now sensei. She said standing up and he nodded himself getting up and walking her to the door. Sanadi left and walked down the streets as she entered a convenience store and bought some supplies for the trip and went back on her way to the Senju back, avoiding the annoying gossiping villagers. Senju compounds, Sanadi walked in seeing Shizun packing all the stuff up and smiled for her help. She sat down on the cushion in the huge traditional Japanese living room as Shizun came in, finishing the packing and smiled at her as she sat down in front of her. So Tsunade-sama did everything go alright. She asked the both of them to pour some tea, and Tsunade took the glass gratefully and sipped it, keeping it down on the table. Yes Shizun everything went fine, and from today onwards our little Naruchan is Naruto Senju to the world, and my son being the official clan heir to the Senju clan. She said happily and Shizun smiled brightly. So now I am a big sister and have a little brother to coddle. She chirped happily and Tsunade smiled and nodded as Shizun took the little boy in her arms. Now I am your big sister Naruchan, you like me don't you? Isn't your big sister the best? She asked cooing, and he giggled giving her a confirmation as she coddled him happily and played with him. Sanadi smiled thinking how he had made the both of them so happy over the past two days. She saw that he was now warming up to Shizun too and was happy about it. Is everything done in Shizun? Are we ready to leave? She asked and Shizun nodded. Hi Sanadi sama everything is done and we can leave any time we want. She said and Sanadi nodded as she took Naruto from her arms and both started sealing the things into storage scrolls and Naruto giggled every time they sealed something at the poofing sound it made and the both of them laughed as they saw him get upset when everything was sealed. Sanadi glomped on him as he puffed his cheek slightly and rubbed her cheek against his, making him giggle. Both of them picked up the scrolls and walked out of the compounds going towards the gates. At the village gates, Sanadi came up to the gate seeing some people standing there. Hiruzen, Kakashi, Jiraiya, and the three elders too were there with them. She frowned thinking about what they could be wanting with her and walked towards them. Kaharu and Hamura came forward and gave her a warm smile, and Sanadi just gave a small nod of acknowledgement without so much as a slight smile. They noticed this and grimaced at her cold greeting, and she looked at their faces of disgust that they had for a moment as they gazed at Naruto, and she held the sleeping child tightly to her chest which they noticed and frowned. Sanadi-chan, why are you retiring and leaving the village? You have free sand and travel rights, and we haven't forced you into anything all these years, so why are you doing this? We can always get you reinstated and forget about all this. You don't have to leave said Kaharu with her grandmotherly smile as Tsunade spoke up. No, I don't want to be tied down to this village any longer, and Neri-chan needs my full attention. I don't want you recalling me for any reason by force, and I have served this village quite enough already. I have fought in two of the last wars and have lost enough, it's time I left the shinobi forces and lived for myself. She said and Hamura spoke up. But Tsunade-chan is the village your ancestors built, the village needs the strength of a Sanin and the last Senju in the village at this time. You shouldn't leave and that too just because of that thing. He said venomously, whispering the last part as Tsunade narrowed her eyes at the old coot. You better hold your tongue you old goat, that thing as you called it is my son and the heir to the Senju clan and the son of Minato Namikas. She said coldly and Hamura flinched and glared back as Danzo spoke up. You should state Tsunade, what would your grandfather and granduncle think of you leaving the village behind? He asked in his stoic voice trying to guilt trip her glared at the old warhawk. They would be ashamed of what this village has become, especially what some of their students have fallen to. She said as Danzo frowned, understanding her insinuation. He thought it to be a waste that the last Senju and the Sanin were leaving and that too for a useless Jinchuriki with no chakra. Maybe if he tried he could get the real thing and make them good weapons for the village, he thought. All three backed down seeing she was in no mood for any persuasion, and the other three stepped forward. Well Tsunade keep writing and keep in touch with your old sensei alright. Said Hiruzen and she nodded with a small smile. Um take care of Naruto Tsunade-sama, I can't think of a better person than you to care for him. Maybe you could come back with him sometime. Kakashi said nervously and Tsunade smiled seeing the usually laid back copy ninja fiddling with words and nodded. Don't worry Kakashi you'll see him and I'll take care of him. 
After all he is my son, don't you worry about a thing. She said and Kakashi nodded with an eye smile. Well Tsunade Haim don't you worry I'll be seeing you soon, after all I can't be too long gone without seeing my godson. And Minato did name him after my book's character. He said proudly and she smiled. Yeah the only book you wrote that was worth anything. She said and Jiraiya looked offended. Hey I'll have you know my books are a hit. Even Kakashi and Sensei have turned to my ways of exquisite literature. I let you know. He said and she looked at the both of them incredulously, who were whistling innocently looking away, and Jiraiya continued. And after all, maybe you could show me a thing or two for my research. He said giggling perversely and a moment later he was embedded in the village wall crying and I'm tears as the other two sweat dropped. They all said their goodbyes, and Sanadi walked out towards the old Senju hidden compounds with Shizu and then little Naruto in her arms with a smile. Chapter 2 The old hidden Senju compounds were back to life as this time they were being used for living peacefully, instead of the hideouts that they were previously used as. The huge compound fields were flowing with greenery that was grown by Hashirama Senju himself, along with a stream flowing through the middle of the grounds that was raised from an underground water source, the living and ongoing proof of Tabarama Senju's mastery over the water element. The old house standing there to the side of the compound was a traditional two-story Japanese house that held the elegance that all the great clan compounds like the Hayuga held and sitting on the porch of the house, looking at a small blonde boy, was Sanadi. She smiled as she watched a boy cuddle up Katsayu in his arms and giggling happily as he chased her around crawling and giggling. She stood up walking towards the little bundle of joy as she crouched down in front of him a few feet away opening her arms as she urged for him to come to her. Naruto immediately forgot all about Katsayu and started crawling happily to Tsunade who stepped back a bit and he sat down confused, tilting his head to the side cutely as she resisted with all her heart to not blunt the boy to death. She opened her arms again, and he smiled as he again started crawling to her, and she again stepped back a few steps giggling as Naruto sat down puffing his cheeks, making him look all the more adorable in her eyes. Shizun sat to the side as she watched a mother-son duo playing. She saw Tsunade teasing the boy and laughed as she saw him puffing his cheeks at her teasing. She saw that he never cried no matter how much she teased him, and the most that Tsunade could get out of him was puffing his cheeks. Tsunade opened her arms again and saw as Naruto put his hands to the ground and stood up with shaking legs as he took a step towards her and her eyes widened. Shizun gasped as she got to her feet and her hands over her mouth as she saw Naruto take his first step. Tsunade's eyes watered as she saw him take his first step and she saw him take another and saw he was watching her sadly and was confused but urged for him to come to her. Come on Neru-chan just a bit more. Come to Ka-chan. She said through a sob and Naruto took five steps and stumbled as she grabbed her in his arms before he fell down and saw him gazing at her curiously. He put his little hand on her cheek and wiped the tear away, and her eyes widened as she understood why he looked sad after his first step and embraced him tightly to her chest. Oh god Neru-chan you walk so much just because I cried. Oh my boy I love you so much. She whispered and he snuggled in her arms making her smile. She gazed into his eyes that always drew her to him as she kissed him on the nose as he scrunched his face a bit and she giggled. Oh you're Kachan's adorable little fox now aren't you Neru-chan, aren't you? She cooed and kissed him as he giggled, and Shizun laughed as she too joined in tickling the little boy. Suddenly they heard a voice startling them. Hey it isn't fair for two ladies to. Said Jiraiya as he jumped up and saw a hail of kunai and senbin, concentrated on where his crotch was a moment ago, and turned ghastly white as he finished the sentence. Team up on my godson. Hey what's the big idea that could have been fatal to little Jiraiya? He yelled indignantly as Shizun lowered her launcher, and Sanadi lowered her hands that were filled with senbin ready for another charge. Well you damn pervert if you would come like a normal guest, then maybe you would get a little safer welcome, and I would be glad if little Jiraiya disappeared, maybe then the girls can bathe freely. She said and Naruto giggled clapping as Sanadi smiled at Jiraiya knowingly, and he grumbled about disrespectful blondes, and Shizun laughed. Even my own godson betrays me what has the world come to. He cried and I'm tears walking up to Tsunade as Naruto patted his head in reassurance, making him cry harder and Tsunade and Shizun to hold their sides in laughter. So what are you doing here, pervert? Asked Tsunade and Jiraiya acted mock hurt clutching his chest. Oh you heard me can't a godfather come and give his godson an early birthday present? He asked and pulled out a small wrapped bundle and handed it to her as she saw a cap with a toad, looking like it would eat the one who wore it and some stuffed toys, most of them toads, and she glared at the man. You weren't going to get him to sign the toad contract before me, no matter how much you bait him. She said glaring and he whistled innocently. I have no idea what you are talking about. He said in an all too innocent voice as Naruto clutched a stuffed toad to himself happily and Jiraiya did a victory dance. He is already coming around to the ways of the great toad sage Jiraiya. He said doing a strange dance on a big samurai toad who croaked with a sweat drop feeling ashamed. Tsunade and Shizun stared at him blankly while Naruto clapped and giggled. 
Jiraiya picked up Naruto rubbing his cheek with his own as he cried happily. Oh my, someone who appreciates true talent. He said happily as Shizun took Naruto from him and a moment later his head was bashed into the ground, true talent my ass that was pathetic. She said, cracking her knuckles as Shizun and Naruto giggled as they saw Tsunade and Jiraiya arguing about who Naruto would summon in the future. Let's go and have some hot chocolate. You like it, don't you Naruchan? Asked Shizun and Naruto nodded happily as she walked in, leaving the two arguing adults. A few minutes later she saw them both come in as Sanadi had a victorious smirk on her face with Yureya and a lump on his head, grumbling about violent women winning arguments through demon strength. What did you say? Asked Sanadi sweetly as an image of the Shinigami appeared behind her, and Jureya gulped and waved his hands in front of him in defense. Nothing Tsunadi Haim. He said nervously and Tsunadi nodded and sat beside Naruto, who was drinking his hot chocolate in his small mug happily as she faked a hurt expression. Oh Neri-chan doesn't even share his hot chocolate with Kachan, I'm hurt. She said as she faked some crying and Naruto gazed at her with a sad expression, and she felt a tug on her kimono and saw Naruto handing her the mug and the toad he had gotten from Jiraiya with watering eyes as he sniffed, and she immediately scooped him up in her arms and tickled him making him giggle. She embraced him as he snuggled into her arms and buried his face in the crook of her neck, making her smile. He really loves you, doesn't he? Said Jiraiya in a serious and genuinely happy tone, and Shizu nodded with a smile. Yes, Jiraiya Sama Naruto never cries even if he is hurt. But when Sanadi Sama is sad or crying he would immediately start sniffing and his eyes water as he hugs her. He can't see Sanadi Sama sad, it is the only thing that brings him even close to crying. Said Shizun and he nodded as he watched Sanadi coo and tickle Naruto. Yes he is my little Neruchan and loves me the most don't you Neruchan? She asked teasingly as she ran her fingers through his stomach and he giggled trying to cover himself up with a stuffed toad, but to no avail. Jiraiya smiled as he saw how great Mother Tsunade was. He hadn't even seen Kashina that close to the twins, and that was saying something since she always tried to be around them after her loss of Minato. So perverted, why aren't you in Kanoha? I know Kashina is throwing a huge party for the twins, and with all the women there it's strange that you would be here. Asked Tsunade as she helped Naruto drink his hot chocolate slowly and wiped his mouth gently with a small towel. Tsunade Haim I don't have to go to parties for women, girls fall at the charm of manliness. He saw all of them staring at him blankly except Naruto who watched him quite curiously, and it gave him confidence. Toad Sage Jiraiya. He said summoning the samurai toad from earlier as Naruto clapped and giggled while Tsunade sighed. You shouldn't encourage Neru-chan, he is already bad enough. She said tiredly and Jiraiya looked offended. Hey what's that supposed to mean? He said indignantly as Naruto just giggled at the man who sat in a corner with a dark cloud over his head, muttering about not getting respect. Suddenly she heard a knock on the door and wondered who it was, since only a few people had the access to pass the barrier to the compounds. She opened the door and saw Kakashi standing there and waved at her lazily. Yo. He said and she sweat dropped at his laid-back attitude. Um Kakashi what are you doing here, I thought that with the Kaiubi festival in the village, the Anbu would be needed a lot more there. She said as she ushered him in and he answered lazily. Yes well Tsunade Sama you see I had a bit of extra time for the start of the mission and I thought visiting him before I started the duty for the festival tomorrow and reporting a bit later would be nice. He said rubbing the back of his head sheepishly and she giggled. Yeah no one will really be surprised with you being late anyways. She said and he smiled as they entered the living room and he was surprised to see Jiraiya there. They saw that Shizun was trying to push Jiraiya off Naruto as he was trying to show him some book and she frowned. What the hell is going on over here? Asked Sanadi and Jiraiya immediately put the book back and smiled innocently as he slapped a hand over Shizun's mouth and laughed. Nothing at all. I was just playing with Naruto over here and Shizun wanted to join us. He said laughing nervously as she frowned and nodded knowing he was lying as he let go of Shizun who was glaring at the man. Well Tsunade sama I brought a little present for little Naruto over here. Said Kakashi with an eye smile as he handed her a package, and she unwrapped it to find some clothes that had dogs imprinted on it, and she glared at the Cyclops Ninja and Jiraiya, and Shizun laughed wholeheartedly. I swear the whole world is trying to persuade my Neri-chan into being their summoner. She said with a sigh and her sweat dropped. So this had already been tried and used and watched happily as Naruto took the clothes and gazed at them happily. He smiled and sat the blonde on his lap as he played with him a little when Naruto suddenly pulled down the mask he wore, and everybody's heart stopped as they saw Naruto do the impossible, and immediately got in front of the two to look at his face. They saw what he had under his mask. Another mask. And they all face faulted as he eyes smiled, and Naruto giggled at seeing all of them pulling their hair at being outdone by him. A moment later Naruto yawned as he opened his arms to Tsunade motioning for her to pick him, and she smiled as she picked him up, and he snuggled in her arms, making them all smile. Tsunade felt the familiar tug on her kimono and saw Naruto looking at her innocently and knew what he wanted. So little Neri-chan is hungry isn't he? 
asked Sanadi as he smiled and she took him to her room with her as Shizum served tea to the two men who took it gratefully, and Jiraiya asked just before they were all going to sip it. So why did Sanadi take her inside her room? Wouldn't his food, you know, be here? He asked, bringing the cup to his mouth as Shizun answered calmly. Oh no Neri-chan has to breastfeed, so she took him inside to feed him herself. She said as both the men spit out their tea and violently coughed at the revelation. She's what? But how is that even possible? Asked Jiraiya with eyes as wide as saucers, and Kakashi too had a stunned expression on his face. Shizun smiled at seeing their shock and answered. Tsunade Sama created a medical ninjutsu for nurses to feed young children who didn't have mothers at the hospital, but it wasn't ever implemented. But it gave her the perfect chance to feed Naruto with what a newborn child needs the most. She said and they both nodded dumbly thinking of the level that Tsunade had reached to create so many great medical techniques. Well that kid has all the luck in the world to think he is doing the thing that almost every man in the elemental nations has dreamt of doing. Grumbled Jiraiya and Kakashi nodded sagely while Shizun sighed, shaking her head. A moment later Jiraiya started giggling perversely and got up and started walking as Shizun spoke up. I hope you aren't going to peek at them Jiraiya-sama, I think you remember the incident four years ago and to think what she would do if she caught you peeking at her while she was feeding Naruto. She trailed off as Jiraiya stopped dead in his tracks and Kakashi gulped both imagining what she would do and started laughing nervously. Well you have gotten the wrong Shizun. I was just going to the bathroom. He said laughing nervously and sat back down sipping his tea as Shizun smiled and sipped her own cup as they sat in silence as a few moments later, Sanadi came with a sleeping Naruto snuggled in her arms and she sat down on the table smiling as she rubbed his whiskers, making him purr and snuggle into her more. So Tsunade Haim, Saratobi sensei sent this for Naruto's present. Said Jiraiya handing her a scroll as she took the scroll with a raised eyebrow and unsealed it as she saw a reverse summoning seal and threw it on the ground. A puff of smoke later stood Monkey King Enma as he looked at all of them and then grinned at seeing the little sleeping blonde in Sanadi's arms. So this is the boy Suratobi told me about. Well he certainly is Minato's son and will be a really strong shinobi in the future. I can see the potential just by his chakra signature alone. He said Tsunade twitched as the temperature of the room dropped a couple of degrees and she handed Naruto to Shizun as she stood up and cracked her knuckles, making the three of them gulp. A few moments later Shizun gently cut the ears of the sleeping child as the three men screamed in pain as Tsunade started beating them all and threw them outside the house. Don't try to force my little baby boy into your stupid summoning contracts. He is only one year old for God's sakes. She shouted as she slammed the door and the three stood up cracking their sore bones as Enma turned to the two of them. What did I do wrong to get beaten like that and damn does she hit hard? He grumbled as the other two nodded and walked back to the village while Enma puffed into smoke and returned to the summoning realm. Hanahagakur no Sado, they returned to the village to attend the grand party that was thrown in the honor of the Hiro Uzumaki twins. Kishina had arranged a huge party along with the support of the whole council as she waited for Kakashi and Jiraiya to arrive. Hiruzen was already there, but they were the closest friends of Minato and she wanted them here. She saw them come into the party and walked up to them happily. Hey where have you been? I've been waiting for you both all night. She said and they both smiled, handing her the presents that she just kept aside and turned to them. They frowned at her lack of enthusiasm for their gifts as they remembered how Tsunade had given their presents to Naruto almost instantly and had respected them a lot. But they shrugged it off seeing she already had a lot of them seeing the people at the party. Well you see Kashina we went to Tsunade first to wish little Naruto there and it took us a little while to return, though we tried our best to return on time. Said Jiraiya and Kakashi nodded with an eye smile, and she frowned at hearing about the two and nodded. So how is Sanadi and Naruto? She asked and they noticed the little hesitation in her voice as she asked them about them. They are fine, but Sanadi just wanted to keep the whole affair simple, calling just those who were really close and just a small get-together for dinner. But we left as we had to come here first. Said Jiraiya and Kakashi just glanced around seeing so many important people around was a first for him he mused, and that too just for a birthday party. So how is Naruto? She asked nervously, and the both of them looked at her surprised at her blunt question, as Jiraiya answered with a smile. Maybe she still had some hope left after all. He is great. I haven't seen a happier child, and Sanadi treats him like a teddy bear all the time. I swear he is too close to his mother already. He said and Kashina frowned and felt a pang of jealousy in her heart. Jiraiya knew this would egg her on as he had seen her realize the mistake she had made a year back. Yes the way he just relaxes in her arms is surprising, but I guess Tsunade Sama is a great mother. And Jiraiya Sama, is it true that he took his first steps yesterday? He asked and Jiraiya smiled remembering the scene that had been etched onto his memory and saw Kashina's interested eyes and his smile widened. Yes I was there yesterday, Tsunade was teasing him yesterday by calling him to her arms and would step back and then call for him in her open arms again. 
After a couple of tries he stood up and took his first step, and Sanadi started crying from happiness. Naruto seeing this was saddened and took more steps to her just to wipe her eyes as it hurt him to see her cry, not knowing she was shedding tears of happiness. I am glad I took pictures of every moment yesterday, I'll give it to her the next time I see her. He said as Kakashi was amazed at the story and Kashina's heart broke as she heard the story and she imagined her baby boy coming to her arms like that. She broke off those thoughts and walked away, her mood ruined as she walked up to her daughters. Kakashi looked confused while Jiraiya smiled sadly. How long will you hide the pain in your heart Kashina, you were the one who pushed your son away, and now he loves Sanadi more than any other child loves his mother from what I've seen. Don't wait too much or it might be a bit too late. He thought as he left the party going towards the bar for some sake to remember his student that was reminded of him every time he saw his son. A moment later Kakashi jumped beside him and he smiled at him knowingly. So you too huh? He asked and Kakashi nodded with an eye smile. Yes he reminds me too much of Sensei doesn't he? He asked as Jiraiya smiled fondly thinking of his godson. Indeed he does. He said and both of them entered the bar to drown their sorrows away. Meanwhile at the hidden Senju compounds, Tsunade and Shizun walked out of the kitchen with a freshly baked cake in their hands and saw Naruto there sitting with Kitsai glumping on her happily. Tsunade smiled at how much Kitsai liked her little boy and was always happy to be summoned to just play with him. And Naruto loved her just as much, glumping on her every chance he got. She put the cake on the table and crouched down on the carpet where the two were and smiled. Well Neri-chan let poor old Kitsai go and let's cut your cake alright. She said as Naruto let her go and she picked him up as she smiled at Kitsai. I'm sorry Kitsai for all the trouble he causes you. She said and Kitsai too slugged up along with her to the table. It is no problem at all Tsunade-sama, I really like spending time with little Naruto-kun here. She said in her melodic voice causing Shizun and Tsunade to smile. They cut the cake and popped the party poppers as Naruto giggled and played happily all night as the celebrations at the Senju compounds came to an end when Naruto fell asleep in Tsunade's arms from exhaustion. The little family celebration ended on a happy note as they all slept the happiest they had been in a long time. Time skip one year later, it was just another usual day at the Senju compounds as Tsunade sat in the living room reading Naruto a picture book as he had his wide curious eyes fixed on the pictures as she read him the story. Tsunade thought about the last year while reading the book as her mind wandered off. Ureya and Kakashi had visited a couple more times in between the year and Hiruzen too wanted to come over but was cooped up in work and had stuck to sending her letters only. Ureya's visit was a bit peculiar last time since he had talked to her about Kashina. That was a topic she didn't want to talk about but seeing as he insisted she heard him out. He had told her that Kashina was starting to realize her mistakes and her questions about how Naruto was doing and how his life was coming up or various other things were becoming more and more frequent. She had harshly told him not to take up that topic again and he had obliged hesitantly but a little fear sat down that day in the back of her mind that if she really did repent her mistake then one day she might take her Nerichan away from her. She shook her head clearing her thoughts when she felt Naruto rubbing her cheek softly and looking at her with those curious eyes and she realized she had spaced out and stopped reading. Her eyes softened at seeing his innocent face and involuntarily her eyes watered at the thought of her losing her baby boy. Hachan. Naruto said in his little voice and her eyes widened as she wiped away her tears frantically. She instantly brought him clothes and kissed him on his cheek as she looked at him desperately. What did you just say Nerichan? Can you say it again please? She asked and he nodded. Ha-chan. He said again and she brought her son in a warm embrace as he snuggled into her taking in her warmth and kissed her cheek, softly rubbing her tears away making her smile. Shizun came up and saw the tear stains on her face and was worried as she rushed to her. What's the matter Tsunade-sama? She asked and Tsunade beamed as she pointed to her son proudly. My little Neru-chan just said his first words, isn't that right Neru-chan? She asked and he grinned foxily making him look adorable to the ladies. Ha-chan. He chirped happily making Tsunade's heart flutter and Shizun brought her hands to her face in shock as she ran up to them. Neru-chan can you say Ni-chan please? She asked pleadingly, making Tsunade giggle. Naruto just tilted his head to the side in confusion as Shizun picked him up and kissed him on the cheek. Ha-chan. He chirped happily again, making Shizun groan and Sanadi to laugh as all her fears lay forgotten, and she took him in her arms, and he happily nuzzled into her. Well looks like he knows all the important words now doesn't he? Neri-chan. She asked cooing as Naruto grinned and gave her a sloppy kiss on the cheek. Sanadi sama that's not really nice, he'll say my name too, you see. Said Shizun puffing her cheeks and Sanadi laughed. Hello ladies, how are you doing? I heard some commotion down here. Said a new voice that Sanadi knew all too well but she was too happy as her baby boy was cuddled in her arms and had given her the happiest moment of her life. His first words were for her which couldn't make her happier. You always come here at the right time you damn pervert, you really are lucky you know. 
she said and he looked at her curiously wondering what she was talking about. Neri Chan just said his first words a few moments ago, didn't you Neri Chan? She teased and he snuggled in her neck from embarrassment making her giggle. He was too shy around people other than her and Shizun and did this if she teased him in front of them. Really, is that right? He asked not to believe it when Naruto looked at him and smiled. Ha Chan. He chirped and Jiraiya's eyes widened as he too rushed to him and took him in his arms, rubbing his cheek against his smiling proudly and crying and I'm tears. That's my godson. He said happily, making the lady smile but ruined it a moment later. Now say boobs, make papa proud. He said giggling perversely and a moment later Shizun took Naruto from his arms making him whine, as a beating ensued courtesy of a seething Tsunade. You damn pervert when will you ever learn? Don't you dare try and corrupt my baby boy. She roared as Jiraiya's screams were heard all over the Senju compounds. No not there. Not there. A-H-H-H. He screamed as Shizun shook her head while Naruto looked at her confused. You'll understand Neri-chan someday. She said with a smile taking him in and getting him to try and say Ni-chan. A few minutes later Tsunade came in smiling and dragged a half-dead Jiraiya with smoke coming out of him and put him on the floor as Naruto went near him and poked him with a bat, making Shizun giggle. Tsunade-sama don't you think you went a bit overboard? Asked Shizun and Tsunade waved her off. Oh don't worry, he has built up a resistance to beatings over the years and I didn't even go halfway through what I did seven years ago. She said as a moment later Jiraiya stood up looking fine as he dusted himself off. That's right the great toad sage Jiraiya can't be put down by the hands of such a fine lady. He said doing a strange dance making the girl sigh and Naruto giggle and clap. Only you understand my true talent, my boy. He said crying and hugging him as the ladies shook their heads. I'll never know why Neri-chan likes that stupid dance so much. Said Shizun and Tsunade nodded but smiled a little. She was glad that Jiraiya was making so many efforts to bond with his godson as she saw him play with the new stuffed toads he brought and Naruto giggling as he made some strange faces making him laugh. She joined them in playing as Jiraiya suddenly stood up motioning for her to follow him and took her to the side and she followed seeing his serious expression. What's the matter with Jiraiya? She asked and he smiled sadly as he handed her an album that she took with a confused expression. That is the photo album and journal of Minato. I brought it here from the Namaka's mansion after I asked you for a bit of Naruto's blood the last time I came here. He said and realization dawned on her face as to why he had asked for a bit of Naruto's blood. But why have you brought it here Jiraiya? She asked and he smiled at her confused expression. Tsunade Haim, Naruto's growing up and now he can speak too. He will grow as intelligent and powerful as his father was, of that I have no doubt. But he will start to ask you questions about his father sometime from now, with all the books you read to him, I have seen his confusion and sadness when he reads stuff about a child's father. When he asks you will have something that belonged to his father to show him. He said and she nodded and took the album and journal to the archives in the basement and kept them there and sealed the room again. Chapter 3 The sound of laughing and running was heard all over the Senju compounds as Shizun stood cooking up the lunch in the kitchen and smiled at the joyful noise ringing in the compounds. It made her happy that Naruto made everything so lively here and was glad at the changes he had brought to her master. She no longer drowned in her sorrows and was actually now fully focused on raising Naruto and saw how wonderful of a mother she was. Neri-chan comes back here or else. She said, chasing the running blonde playfully with open arms, laughing a bit as she did so. He had an expensive bottle of sake and her cup in his hands as he ran. There's no way you'll catch me Kachan. He chirped happily as he ran with her sake bottle in his hands and was laughing as he made her chase him all around the compound. He suddenly tripped as he fell face first and skidded a bit as the bottle broke and Tsunade gasped. Neri-chan. She shouted as she ran towards him and picked him up in her arms as she saw the pieces of the bottle embedded in his palms and the blood that seeped through it. Neri-chan, how many times have I told you to be careful when you are running? She scolded a bit angrily as his eyes watered and he held his head down and a few tears dropped seeing her so angry. He tried to pick up the broken pieces to see if he could fix it, and her eyes softened as he sobbed and picked up the pieces, collecting them in his bleeding hands. I'm sorry. He said timidly thinking she was mad because he broke her bottle and was startled as she scooped him up in her arms and held him close to her as she made him drop all the pieces he had in his hands and rubbed his back gently, and he cried in the crook of her neck, whispering apologies and sobs. She cooed at the little boy and soothed him telling him it was alright. I wasn't angry because you broke the bottle of Neri-chan, I was angry because you hurt yourself. I worry about you too much so be careful from now on alright. She asked softly and he nodded as she kissed his tears away gently and took his hands in hers softly as her hands were enveloped in green medical chakra and she started pulling out the pieces and healing his hands. Naruto winced from the pain and she kissed his head as she kept healing him gently and held him close to her. SHH it's alright it won't even feel a little painful in a few moments alright. 
she whispered gently and his sobs stopped as she let go of his hands and he looked at them amazed that they were all fine already. Sugoi. Kachan how did you do that? He asked with glimmering eyes as he watched her amazed and she giggled as she scooped him up in her arms and he giggled as she twirled him around and held him close to her as he watched her curiously with wide cerulean eyes waiting for an answer. Well Neri-chan that was your Kachan's invention and the medicine that helps me to heal most of the wounds like I just did with you. She said and he tilted his head to the side cutely getting him a kiss on the cheek and he giggled. Kachan, what's just jutsu? He asked fumbling with the words making her giggle as she walked into the living room and put him on her lap as she brushed his hair softly and put her chin on his head, making him snuggle into her, and she smiled as he looked up with those wide curious eyes that were always eager to learn new things. There is a thing shinobi used to perform amazing things. Your Kachan is a specialist in medical techniques that are used to heal people who are hurt badly. Do you understand Neru-chan? She asked softly and tried to explain it in the simplest way possible. She saw him with a thoughtful expression on his face and let him absorb it all in, and after a moment he nodded. Hi, you help people who are hurt with those awesome cool glowy hands stingy. He nodded sagely, and she laughed at the way he explained such a complicated thing in his own cute words. She kissed his head and brushed his hair as she held him close to her. Hi hi Neri-chan your Kachan can help people with the awesome cool glowy hand stingy. She said teasingly and he looked down embarrassed. I'm not so smart am I? He whispered and she smiled and brought his face up as she put a finger under his chin and kissed his forehead softly and gave him a heartwarming smile. No my Neri-chan is really smart, you are just a little small now to understand these things. For now, we'll let you learn to read and write alright. She said softly and he nodded happily. Are you strong Kachan? He asked and she thought for a moment how to answer it. Well I can hold my own against most people, and there are only a few people that can stand up to your Kachan, including that pervert Jureya. He may not look it, but he's really strong. She said and his eyes widened. Is Jureya Oji-san really that strong? He asked and she nodded with a smile, and he frowned. There is no way he is stronger than you, you always beat him when he comes to meet us. Kachan is the strongest. He said in a determined voice, and she giggled and nodded as suddenly there was a puff of smoke and the voice of wood clattering, and Sanadi sighed. From east to west and north to south, the women fall to my feet and succumb to my charms, the legendary toad sage of Mount Mayaboku Jureya has arrived. Said Jureya doing his strange dance on his samurai toad as Naruto beamed and clapped. Hervey sage. He said happily and Jureya's face faltered and Sanadi laughed wholeheartedly. Don't call me that you damn brat. He said indignantly and huffed and crossed his arms as Sanadi and Naruto giggled at him. That's a great name Neri-chan call him that from now on alright. She asked and he nodded as Jureya's jaw dropped to the ground. Hey my dear godson won't call me now will he? He asked hopefully as Naruto looked at him confused and tilted his head to the side cutely. Call you what pervy sage? He asked innocently and Sanadi snickered as he cursed under his breath and dispelled the toad. Shizun walked in and saw Jureya there and smiled as she served them some tea and all of them sat at the table. So Jureya, any special reason you came or is it just a regular visit? She asked and he frowned as he made a short signal towards Naruto that she caught and gave him a curt nod. Neri-chan can you go and play with Shizun for a while until me and Jureya talk? She asked and he was saddened as he sat on her lap and wrapped his arms around her neck. Do I have to go? He asked softly and she smiled and brushed his hair softly. He never liked it whenever she sent him away to talk to Jureya personally, but these things were just not for him. She brought his face in front of her cupping it in her hands as she gave him a smile. Please Neri-chan, we'll be done shortly. This is something for us adults and it would make you bored, so you go and play with Shizun, and we'll be with you shortly alright. She asked softly, and he nodded and kissed her on the cheek as Shizun took him by his hand to the clan grounds. Jureya smiled as he saw the interaction between the two and couldn't be happier. So what is Jureya? She asked and he snapped his attention back to her and turned serious. Tsunadi I'll be straight Kashina has asked me if you could maybe come back to the village so she could meet Naruto. He said bluntly and Tsunadi immediately stiffened and her face turned emotionless. And why would I want to do that? She asked coldly, and he flinched under her gaze and knew how protective she was of Naruto. Well she has realized the mistakes she made in her grief and sorrow, and is repenting of what she did. She wants to meet her son. He was cut off as Tsunadi interrupted him. My son. She added coldly and he nodded as he continued. Yes well and she wanted to meet up with him and make up for all the lost time. He said and she stared at him blankly not giving away any emotions and was silent for a few moments. And you honestly believe me to return to the village so that she could meet the boy who she threatened to kill as an infant. You believe I would risk Neri-chan's safety and let him see the villagers glares just because she feels repentance. What will I do when Neri-chan asks me the reasons for what happened all those years ago, will he be able to understand and stand the burden he holds? She asked in an icy tone and he grimaced knowing every point she made was right. 
that Sanadi is reasonable, she is his moth. He gulped as she leaked her killing intent and continued. She wants to make amends and her guilt is genuine and he will have to return and face the village someday, even Saratobi sensei believes you should let him meet her. Don't worry you will be escorted by Anbu and he won't even see the villagers I guarantee you. He said in a desperate tone to persuade her to return and she just stared at him icily. No. She said coldly and cut him off before he could protest. I don't care whatever you or that old monkey thinks. I won't let Nerichan near Kashina or that village until I see it fit or if I ever see it fit. I don't care if she feels guilt or whatever the hell she feels, you all are selfish no one thinks of what effect it might have on my little boy. You just want what is best for you. I'll keep my boy safe here until I think he is ready to learn the truths and will lay it out to him gently. She said with finality leaving no room for arguments. But that is his home, he belongs in the village. He pleaded and she glared at him. He belongs here in my arms and safety, he will return to the village if he ever wants to, and if he doesn't want to do something, then Kami herself will have to first go through my punches before touching my boy. She said and he knew she wouldn't change her mind. And I know this isn't the only reason why you said this, is it Jureya? She asked and he grimaced at being caught. Well Tsunade Haim the village is requesting you back after it leaked out that you have left the shinobi forces and adopted Naruto. The villagers after knowing that you are living happily with him after all these years are willing to accept him and the council too along with the elders are willing to accept him back with open arms. He said and she took it all in silently and Jurea continued knowing this was his chance. And Sanadi the village needs you back. They are willing to implement the medical plans you laid down and want the Senju clan to represent. He was cut off as Sanadi spoke up. That's it, you don't want me or Nerichan back, you want what we represent. You want the Senju clan head and its heir back. You want to show that the village still stands strong with me in it. She said and he opened his mouth, but she cut him off. And let me guess the council found out that Minato left all of his knowledge to his son and they want the feared Namaka's heir back with them. I know the Yuzumaki twins haven't inherited any of their father's genes and are Yuzumakis in every sense of the word and now that they realize what they have lost in Nerichan, they want him back. The council doesn't want the Senju fortune to be lost from the village, well the villagers will do anything to keep the founder clan of Kanoha in the village. She said and he looked down ashamed as she kept every point in front of him correctly. He always knew that she was good at political matters and this proved it. Neri Chan and I will return if and only if we want to return. I won't force him into anything he doesn't want to do. I'll train him a bit so that he could have enough skills to protect himself, but if he doesn't want to be a shinobi then so be it. She said and his eyes widened as he started to speak, but she stood up. Leave Jurea and this is the last time I let it slide since I know the council forced you and Saratobi sensei into this. But if you ever come with this sort of a thing to me again then I'll cut all ties with you. She said icily and left the room leaving an ashamed Jureya behind. He clenched his fists and cursed those damn elders and the council that put him up to this and ruined the already volatile image that Sanadi held for him after his hesitation at adopting Naruto. He stood up and left towards Konoha to report this to the council and suddenly smiled. He would be smiling smugly when he smashed Sanadi's answer in their faces. Sanadi walked out and let her emotionless mask drop as she sighed tiredly feeling drained and walked through the hallways towards the living room and took out a bottle of water and drank it, crushing it in her hands from the anger she felt and let her killing intent loose at those damn elders. She knew those bastards were the ones behind all of this. She felt a tug on her kimono and looked down to see a whimpering Naruto clutching to her leg and letting her killing intent disappear as she picked him up and cradled the sniffing boy in her arms. She berated herself for letting loose her emotions and scaring him and rubbed his back gently calming him down. Ha-chan are you angry? He asked softly and she smiled and kissed the top of his head as she sat on the porch of the house with him cuddled up on her lap. No Neri-chan I was angry, but you took it all away. You always give your Ka-chan a lot of strength, you know that. She asked and he looked at her with wide curious eyes and smiled happily. Really? He asked and she smiled and nodded as he wrapped his arms around her neck and gave her a kiss on her cheek and snuggled into her neck and she smiled as she wrapped him up in her arms. She would never let anyone do anything to him, as long as she had her eyes on him she promised and would save his innocence for as long as she could. So Neri Chan let's begin your writing practice now alright. She asked and he nodded as she picked him up and walked into the traditional Japanese living room and sat on the cushion, pulling out the calligraphy kit that her grandmother used to use and rubbed the stone on the calligraphy set's ink equipment to create some fresh ink. Alright Neri-chan I explained this to you last time right, now show me how to properly rub this stone to create ink. She said to the boy on her lap who nodded and picked up the stone and started rubbing it carefully the way she showed him and she smiled. That's very good now let's start your calligraphy practice then. She said and he nodded as he picked up the brush and put his tongue out and had a frown of concentration on his face, with his tongue sticking out a bit as he drew the same kanji carefully that she drew. 
She was starting him with the writing skills and combining it with the calligraphy art, just as her grandmother did when she was younger. She saw his strokes were a lot sloppy, but there was improvement. They went at it for a couple of hours before Naruto started getting tired and rubbed his eyes as they showed he was tired and she pulled him back, pressing her closer to him and wrapped him up in her arms. So is Neruchan tired? She asked softly as she put her cheek against his after kissing it and he nodded making her smile. Well you did very well today Neruchan and I am proud of you. She said and he grinned foxily and turned around in her arms and snuggled into her embrace as he yawned and put his head on her shoulder, and she held him close to her rubbing his back softly as his eyes dropped from exhaustion. A few minutes later he fell asleep and she picked him up and went to her room tucking him in her bed and kissed his forehead and went out. She was surprised at the rate he was improving and knew he was taking after his Uzumaki heritage in the calligraphy arts and may even want to pursue sealing one day. She walked out and saw Shizun coming in with bags in her hands and smiled. She wondered where she was all this time, and now she knew she was out shopping. How did the writing practice go Tsunade-sama? She asked as they walked into the kitchen and she smiled. He is improving at a really good rate, my grandmother's trick still comes in handy you know, even after all these years. He's learning how to write and getting calligraphy practice at the same time. Nito Bachin used to do this with me to help if I ever decided to pursue sealing, but it was never my field of expertise. I have some skill in it but not that much. She said and Shizun looked at her surprised. I didn't know you knew Tsunade-sama. She said surprised and Tsunade nodded. Well having the Uzumaki clan heiress as your grandmother certainly has its perks. She said and Shizun nodded. Both of them had dinner and finished it as Tsunade stood up and was helping Shizun with the dishes when she felt a tug on her kimono and looked down to see Naruto rubbing his eyes and looking at her sleepily. She picked him up as he yawned cutely and snuggled up in her arms. What's the matter with Neruchan? She asked and he snuggled more and she heard him sniffing and was worried as she felt him sobbing a bit. Did you have a nightmare? She asked softly, and he nodded a little as she rubbed his back and calmed him down. There was a big fox with so many tails, and he was running and destroying everything Kachan. He said softly and she stiffened as she held him tighter to herself. She glanced at Shizun who wasn't paying attention to her and walked into her room and sat on the bed with Naruto in her arms. The big fox you say, did he say something to you? She asked softly and he nodded. Yes he said that he'll make me see the truth, but I don't know what he meant, and then he laughed and I was so scared. He said trembling and she cradled him close to her cooing him. SHH Neruchan, there is nothing to worry about. I am here for you. She said softly and he fell asleep crying as she put him to bed and lifted his shirt up softly gazing at his stomach. She saw that the seal was perfectly fine and sighed in relief. She had read Minato's notes on the seal and knew there was no way that the fox would be able to make contact with him unless he accessed his mindscape. It was just the process of the seal strengthening itself over time that must have let some memories of the fox seep through. That meant that Naruto's chakra coils were now beginning to develop, and she smiled. She laid down beside him, and he cuddled up against her with a small smile as she wrapped him up in her arms. Meanwhile in Kanahagakur no Sado. Hokage Tower, Hokage Office, Hiraya entered the office through the window and saw Hirazin there sitting and puffing his pipe and the three esteemed elders waiting for him and made himself known with a small cough as Hirazin smiled at his student. Ah Jiraiya I was waiting for you so how did it go? He asked and noticed Jiraiya's flinch and sighed. She burned me off sensei, didn't even listen to one reason, and deducted everything from the elders and council's plan to Kishina's plea to meet Naruto. She said that if Naruto didn't want to become a shinobi or return to the village, then she wouldn't let anyone force him into anything. And this is the last time I have done this for you. She has threatened me with another attempt, and she would cut off all ties with me. He spat the last sentence venomously at the three coots who flinched and looked down. This is bad Hiruzen, the Senju clan belongs to the village. Do something said Danzo and Hiruzen stared at him blankly. And pray tell what do you want me to do? She isn't a part of the shinobi forces anymore and is an honored retired Sanin. She is the clan head of the Senju, the most powerful clan of the Hidden Leaf. If she wants, then she could go to the daimyo himself and he would definitely help her with the amount of prestige the Senju clan still holds. You all should have thought of that before ostracizing and glaring at her son. He said icily and the three flinched as Kaharu protested. But the child is the Namaka's clan heir along with the Senju, he belongs in the village. He needs to form bonds in the village, and the whole village is now willing to accept him, seeing as he is living peacefully with the slug princess herself, and see that he couldn't be the demon and want the both of them back. She said and the other two nodded while Hiruzen shook his head. He still didn't understand how they got a sniff of Minato's knowledge being passed on to Naruto, but he was regretting the leak now. There is nothing I could do now, the matter is out of my hands. This is the last time I have listened to the suggestion of the council on this matter. He will return with Sanadi if and when he wants to, your forcing is only making matters worse. 
He said as Hamura and Kaharu started to protest, but he put his hand up silencing them. I've heard and said enough this matter is closed, you've heard her decision, now leave. He said and they glared and stood up walking out. Anzo was seething on the inside. That damn monkey had let too much freedom be enjoyed by Tsunade, and now he didn't have the chance to manipulate the boy to his way and use his influence and power to his gain. The boy held the knowledge of his father, along with the influence of the Senju, and would have been a useful pawn to him after he failed to get his hands on the twin Yuzumaki sisters. He had tried to get the children to be trained by him, but Sirotobi had ruined it by saying the Kashina being a former Jinchuriki was a better teacher than he ever could be. He plotted other ways to get some power and walked into his deep underground lair. A moment later Jiraiya turned to Hiruzen and glared at the man. You knew this would happen, didn't you? He asked and Hiruzen smirked and nodded. Of course I did, I have led the village through two wars and am called the professor for a reason. I know this game of politics better than those three could ever play. I knew Tsunade would slap a no on your face and rub it in their faces. They have gained too much power on the council and this will remind them of their place. I'll strip them of their newfound influence slowly and re-establish the village with the will of fire that it has always held. I am proud that Tsunade sniffed each of their ploys as I expected her to. He said and Jiraiya smiled slightly at his sensei. So that was his plan, he wanted to build the same amount of power he held before here he took the position to call Tsunade back in a safe village. Suddenly there was a knock on the door and both looked at each other perplexed as to who it could be at such a late hour in the night. Come in. Said Hiruzen and then walked Kashina with a smile and their smiles dropped and Jiraiya groaned inwardly seeing her happy face that was about to be destroyed. I am glad I found you here, I came to ask Hiruzen about you Tebing. She said happily and he smiled sadly at her enthusiasm. So when is Sanadi chan bringing back Naru-chan? She chirped happily and both the men averted their eyes and her smile dropped at seeing their reactions. What's wrong? She asked and Jiraiya took a deep breath and spoke up. Kashina things aren't the way you are imagining them to be. He said sadly and she frowned a bit confused. What do you mean? She asked not understanding the problem and he sighed. Well Kashina Tsunade has refused to return to the village or let you meet Naruto until she believes the time is right. He said and Kashina's eyes widened in shock. What but I am his mouth. She was interrupted as Hiruzen interjected. Was his mother. He said icily and her eyes watered. That was a mistake, I was drowned in sorrow and grief and I took it all out on Neruchan. But I am willing to make amends now. She said and both men shook their heads. It isn't that easy now Kashina, you evicted Naruto and Sanadi adopted him. She isn't some ordinary civilian that we could push around for you. She is the head of the Senju clan and Naruto is the current heir of her clan now. He is under her protection and we couldn't touch a hair on him without her permission or the whole fire capital will be rumbled. There is a reason the Senjus are so respected in the land of fire. Said Hiruzen she glared furiously at the man. She is trying to use her influence to keep me away from him. I am the clan head of the Uzumaki clan too, you know. She knows that Naruto will come to me and is purposely trying to keep me away from him. She said and here is inside knowing her stubbornness, but she needed to face the facts. And she has every right to do so. He is her son whether you want to admit it or not, and she loves him blindly at that. I cannot do anything in the matter since she doesn't belong to the shinobi forces and isn't under my command, neither does she come under the civilian council seeing her prestigious clan status. We cannot interfere in clan affairs anyways and as for you being the Yuzumaki clan head and challenge her. You could do so, but I am pretty sure we both know who the feudal lord will side against. He said calmly and a tear rolled down her eye. Kashina just waits, that is all you can do. Give her time and let her see that Naruto needs to meet you and she will do it. She doesn't hold any hatred for you personally, but she is really protective of Naruto and is afraid to hurt him. At least you have come to realize your mistakes and want to repent. You'll get your chance, don't worry. He said calmly in an attempt to calm her down. But I want to meet him, his childhood is slipping away from my fingers. What would Minato say that I abandoned our only son because of my stupidity? How will I face Uraya? I hate myself for abandoning my own son to hide from my pain and now I can't even meet him. She said as she cried in her hands and he hugged her with one arm and consoled the crying woman. Hiruzen smiled sadly knowing the decision lied with Tsunade. He also wanted her to come back and have Naruto live here but knew this wasn't the time for her or Naruto to return and they could only wait and watch what the future held in store for them. Chapter 4 Tsunade sat on the porch of the riverside in the compounds as she heard the splashing of water and the giggling by her little blonde bundle. Come on Kichi, let's go and beat the pervy sage. Come on pervy sage, let's see who reaches the shore near Kachan first. Shouted Naruto as he sat on a toad that was as tall as Tsunade's shoulders. She smiled as she saw the cheerful bundle of joy riding the orange toad happily. Whatever you say Naruto, we ain't gonna be beaten by the likes of that pervert. Said Gamakichi as Tsunade and Shizun giggled. Hey show me some respect you damn brats. 
I'll show you both, let's go Gamma we'll beat these brats and show them what the legendary Toad Sage Jiraiya can do. He said indignantly and Gamma, his personal samurai Toad, croaked in agreement as they both rode their rides and rushed from their sides of the shore towards Sanadi. Both raced at full speeds as Naruto laughed happily. Let's go Kichi. Don't you dare slow down. He said as his blonde hair flowed in the wind with the water splashing his face as both of them raced to the shores. Both were nearly at the same speed and were converging on the shore at full speed. Gureya made Gama slow down at the last moment for a safe stop, but Naruto urged Gamakichi to go on as they reached the shore, and Gamakichi stopped abruptly as Naruto flew forwards laughing. Ha-chan. He shouted happily as Tsunade stood up and caught the flying little boy in her arms and twirled him around making her kimono a bit wet as he giggled along with Tsunade. I won, see I told you pervy sage. He said laughing as Tsunade held him in her arms and Jiraiya glared at the little blonde. Hey you cheated, I don't have Tsunade to catch me if I stop that abruptly. The last time I tried your trick she punched me in the face. He shouted as Naruto laughed and gave him a victory sign. That's too bad pervy sage because I have an awesome Kachan and Shinobi always use everything they can and Kachan is my secret weapon. He said proudly and Tsunade giggled at the enthusiastic blonde in her arms and kissed his cheek. Well you always have to do something so reckless don't you Naruchan? She asked and he grinned foxily, making Tsunade's mock anger melt away. I knew you'd catch me Kachan, that's why the pervy sage will never beat me. He said and she smiled as she put him down, and he high-fived Gamakichi as both laughed at Jiraiya, who was grumbling about over smart blondes that were too smart for their own good. Yo Naruto where's my candy, we won after all. Now it's time to pay up. He said and Naruto smiled and pulled out some snacks from his pocket and handed them to the happy toad who saluted him and puffed out in smoke. Suddenly Tsunade wrapped his head up in a towel and ruffled his head to dry him off. Alright let's go inside and get you changed, it's time to study a bit. You had your fun with Jiraiya now. Come on, let's go. She said picking him up and he snuggled in her arms as Jiraiya and Shizune followed the two blondes back into the house. Naruto changed off his clothes and came into the traditional room that they used for his calligraphy practice, and Tsunade put him on her lap, and he picked up the brush and started drawing the kanji. Jiraiya sat there amazed at the skill the blonde was showing with the elegance he had in his strokes. Granted they weren't perfect, but the skill was noticeable, and that too from such a small child was astonishing. Jiraiya sat there for an hour, occasionally eating the snacks that Shizun brought him, and watched the little blonde go at calligraphy. As the hour finished Tsunade let the boy run off to get something to eat as she poured herself some tea and turned to Jiraiya. Wow, his skill in calligraphy is amazing for his age. How long have you been teaching him? He asked and she smiled proudly for her son. Well he has been at it for two years, I started teaching him how to write and coupled it with the calligraphy arts. He is better at writing with a brush than he is with a pen. She said with a giggle and Jiraiya saw the ingenious way of starting a child at the art of calligraphy and smiled. Wow that's ingenious, that saves you so much time if he decides to learn. He said and she nodded with a smile. So when are you going to start training him? Kashina started training her daughter a couple of months ago and most of the clan children start at this age too. He said and she smiled and nodded. Yes, tomorrow after his birthday is celebrated I'll tell him about the start of his training. He has been pestering me for the past month and I have been telling him to wait. I wanted to keep it as a surprise for his birthday. She said and Jureya nodded, smiling. He wanted to see who his godson was more like, from what he had observed with the Yuzumaki twins, they were completely like Kishina, headstrong and learning more by doing it. But it was their tempers that were the cause of their break in the flow of training. She had been training them from the past couple of months, and when he had visited her a couple of weeks ago, they were still having trouble unlocking their chakras due to their hyperactive natures and lack of patience at the amount of concentration it took, and he had helped her for a couple of days and had finally gotten them to unlock their chakra. Ashina hadn't started them on any of the basics of calligraphy yet and was starting with her basics of tojutsu with them first. So what styles of tojutsu are you going to teach him? He asked and she thought about it for a moment and then answered. Well Minato left him his own personal style and the senju style of tojutsu that I use will be really effective if he has enough strength. Since his body is so fragile for now but he is pretty quick and agile, I'll start him in Minato's style first, then when he is ready I'll start him in my clan style. She said and he nodded. Both were quite fearsome styles, and he had seen both of them in action firsthand. While the Senju style of Tejutsu was all about strength and was a lot more defensive with a few powerful blows to completely decapitate the opponent, Minato's own style, the Hummingbird style of Tejutsu, was all about speed, agility and precision. It was fearsome since it depended on the body's speed and agility and quick and precise blows, and was completely offensive as opposed to the Senju style. If the boy learned both of them then he would be almost unbeatable at hand-to-hand -hand combat. But to learn both his body had to be trained to the ground, but still it would take him a lot of time. 
but if Tsunade was sure then he would trust her. Well that is a wise choice Tsunade, both are fearsome styles in their own regards, but the body conditioning needed to be that quick for the hummingbird and that strong for the Senju style would be too hard. Are you sure he'll be able to do it? He asked and she just smiled and waved her hand dismissing his doubts. I've thought about that already, don't you worry. She said and he was confused with her answer, but nonetheless nodded. So does he have any particular preferences of fields that he wants to pursue? He asked and she smiled while sipping her tea and nodded. Yes he is interested in medical ninjutsu a lot, and I guess he will pursue sealing too. He is always asking me to teach him the awesome cool glowy hand thingy that heals people after all. She said with a giggle and Jiraiya laughed wholeheartedly. Well he adores you too much it is no surprise he wants to take after your field of specialization. He said and she nodded, smiling fondly thinking of her son as Jiraiya put a scroll in front of her, and she took it and looked at him questionably. That's from Kashina, she has invited you to the birthday party tomorrow at the Yuzumaki clan compounds. Almost all the clan heads and their families are going, and she told me to give you this too. He said and she nodded and put it aside and sipped her tea closing her eyes. So will you go? He asked a bit hopeful seeing her neutral response, and she put her cup down as she gazed into his eyes. No. She said simply and he sighed. He should have known and he didn't even bother to try to get her to go knowing she would just throw him out and ban him from coming in. So have you told him something about Minato yet? He asked and she shook her head in negative and he frowned. You should be telling him about his father you know. He said and she gave him an icy glare making him gulp. Don't tell me what to do and what not to do to my Nari-chan. I'll tell him when he's ready or if he asks first. I am not hiding anything from him, I am just waiting for the right time. She said coldly and he nodded seeing her tone of finality that left no room for arguments. Next morning, Tsunade woke up as she saw her little birthday boy cuddled up against her and smiled. She softly pulled his shirt up and ran her fingers on his stomach, smiling mischievously. Ahahaha. Kachan stop. It tickles. He said through tears as he laughed and Tsunade giggled as she let him go and hugged him warmly. Happy birthday Naruchan. She whispered softly and he buried his face in the crook of her neck and kissed her softly making her smile. Arigato Kachan, I love you. He said softly and she smiled as she ran her fingers through his hair. I love you too, Naruchan. Now my little boy is growing up too fast, five already. She teased and he buried himself in her embrace from the embarrassment and she giggled. All right now up you go, it's time to have some breakfast. She said and he smiled and nodded as she picked him up and walked into the kitchen as she saw a smiling Shizun coming in. Happy birthday Naruchan. She said taking him in her arms and kissed his cheek as he beamed happily. Arigato Nichan. He hugged her warmly and she took him to the kitchen and sat him on his chair as both Shizun and Sanadi went to work on the special breakfast for him. She started on the rice and put on the soup as she fried some pork cutlets and poured the soup in a bowl over the rice and served the steaming hot freshly fried pork cutlets on top and added a bit of mayonnaise on top. She would never understand his peculiar combination making skills, but she had to admit it tasted pretty damn good. She brought the tray with the three large bowls and put them on the table as Naruto beamed and hugged her, making her giggle at how much he loved his food. All of them broke their chopsticks and after a chorus of Idadakamasu they dug in and ate silently. She saw as he quickly tore through the food and giggled as she suddenly grabbed his bowl and pulled him onto her lap and grabbed his hands, putting her chin on his head. Nari-chan eat slowly like I told you alright. She said softly and he nodded as he started eating elegantly and she smiled as he put a bite for her and then took his own. Shizun too did the same with him and Sanadi did the same for Shizun as they all laughed happily. They finished their food and Sanadi picked Naruto up and went towards the riverside porch as she sat down with him on her lap and her front pressed against his back as both put their feet slightly in the water and Naruto hummed a tune happily making her smile. Nari-chan do you want to do something special today? She asked and he shook his head with a smile and spoke. No Ka-chan I just want to spend the day with you and Ni-chan. He said happily and she smiled and nodded. He kept humming and both watched as the fish came towards their feet and tickled their feet making them giggle. After some time Naruto suddenly stopped humming and started fiddling a bit making Tsunade confused as she brought him in closer to her. What's the matter with Naruchan? She asked and he sat silent for a moment before he turned around in her lap and faced her. Achan can I ask you something? He asked and she nodded with a smile. Of course my little angel you can ask me anything. She said softly and he smiled and nodded and fiddled a bit and spoke up. Can you tell me about Tusan? He asked timidly and she was shocked at first but then smiled and nodded. She was going to tell him tonight anyway so this was all the better. 
She pulled out a storage scroll from the sleeve of her kimono and unsealed the album that Jureya had brought her silently thanking the pervert as she turned him around with his back pressed against her front and brought her arms around him, opening it to the first page as she saw him in his Hokage robes and Naruto gazed very curiously as she saw a few drops fall on her hands and saw his body shaking a bit as he ran his fingers on the picture. This was too San. He looks just like me. He whispered in sobs, and she smiled and nodded as she held him closely as her little boy cried, and she cooed him and calmed him down. Achan, can you tell me something about him? He asked softly, and she nodded as she put her chin on his head then flipped a page to his academy picture. Irtu Sen was a very smart and intelligent man just like Yuneri Chan. He always excelled at everything and was called a genius in the village and at his time in the academy. He was really kind and caring too, but he held an air of authority that made everyone follow him wherever he said. He was born with those eyes of a leader, just like your eyes that showed off everything he felt. He was born in a time of war and didn't have any parents, but he didn't let that stop him. He created his own and was a once-in-a-generation genius at the art. He fought bravely in the war, and his greatest battle was at the Kanabi Bridge. His team was almost gone and all of them were injured. If the bridge was lost, then the village would have lost the war. So instead of retreating with the squad and running back to the village, your two cents stood up against 1000 ninjas all alone and used his signature and beat them all. He won the war all on his own and people were so scared of his power that they were said to run away if they even saw him anywhere. He was called the Yellow Flash because he was so fast and so good with his signature that all people saw was a flash and it was all over. She said as she flipped through the album during his younger days as a ninja and his days in the war. She was glad that it was only his ninja photo album and none of them had Kashina in it, so she didn't have to answer any of those questions yet. Naruto sat transfixed hearing her every word and burning it all up in his memory as he gazed at the album starstruck. Then what happened Kachan? He asked and she smiled as she sipped some water from the bottle and continued her story. Well when he came back from the war he was considered a hero in the village and after a few years his name was so feared and respected in the world that the village named him Hokage. The youngest ever at 24 years old. She said as he asked a question. Hachan what is a Hokage? He asked curiously, and she smiled sadly as this was the question she had once heard Nawaki ask her granduncle and remembered his speech that he spoke almost word for word. The Hokage is the leader of the village hidden in the leaves. He is the strongest ninja of the village and is the one who looks after everyone. The village is a tree, and the people are its leaves where the Hokage is the stem that holds it in firmly when the winds blow harshly. He is the shadow that looks upon the village and keeps it safe, which is why he is called the fire shadow. She said and he nodded as she continued, and her mind went down to memory lane, as she remembered her granduncle standing on the Hokage monument with her in his arms with her grandfather beside him as she quoted his words. Where the tree leaves dance. One shall find flames. The fire shadow will illuminate the village. And once again tree leaves shall bud anew. It doesn't matter what you do if you live and die as you like, however, no matter what road you end up taking, remember to protect the people that are precious to you. That is what it means to be Hokage. She quoted and Naruto turned around in her arms with a determined look in his eyes that made her capture his gaze. Then I'll become Hokage too, just like you Dan, and one day I'll surpass them all, even Tusan. To be Hokage, that's my dream. He said in a determined voice with brilliantly determined shining eyes that took her breath away as she saw an image of her brother, Dan and finally, Hashirama and Tabarama with smiles and their hands on his shoulders and Minato's hand on his head standing behind him with smiles and her eyes watered at his words. Her eyes streamed with tears as she brought him in a tight embrace, not wanting to let go. Naruto hugged her tightly and was worried if he had said something wrong. Oh my god he too has that accursed dream. I can't lose him, not him too he is the only one left for me. He is my lifeline, what should I do? She thought as she felt a hand on her shoulder and saw Hiruzen standing there with a grandfatherly smile on his face and gave her a nod of confidence, and she wiped her tears away and smiled as she gazed at the worried eyes of her son. Hiruzen had heard everything she said and couldn't be prouder of her words. She was nurturing him well, and he too had inherited the will of fire of his ancestors. This was the perfect advice on a birthday he mused and was proud to have raised such a brilliant student. Just one more time, I'll believe in him and help him forge his path to wherever he wants to. I promised myself I'd help him in whatever he wanted to do, and if he wants to follow this dream, then I'll help him achieve it. This time I'll watch him go through it. She thought as she removed the necklace from her neck and put it over him, as Naruto looked at it curiously and wondered why she had given her pretty necklace to him. She saw his curious eyes and smiled. That Niruchan is my grandfather and the first Hokage's necklace. Only those that will actually become Hokage wear it. It is a Senju family heirloom and my most precious possession besides you. This is a promise that'll help you achieve whatever you want to. She said and kissed his forehead and gave him a warm smile and hugged him tightly. 
She broke off the hug, and Naruto gazed at the old man behind her curiously and tilted his head to the side in confusion. He was in his usual robes without the Hokage attire. Who are you? He asked and he smiled at him warmly. I'm Hiruzen, Hiruzen Siratobi Naruto-kun. I am the Sandame Hokage of the Hidden Leaf Village and your mother's sensei. He said as Naruto's eyes widened and he looked at him startled. You're the Hokage? He asked and got a nod in return. And you taught Kachan too? He asked, getting another nod and a smile. Wow you must be strong. He said and Hiruzen smiled proudly and nodded again. Tsunade watched a back and forth conversation with amusement. But Kachan is stronger and besides you're pretty old. He said and Hiruzen's face faulted, and Tsunade laughed as she cuddled up with her son. Oh Neri-chan you're too cute he. She said laughing as Hiruzen fixed his clothes and looked embarrassed. Just you wait old man, I'll take that position of Hokage from you and kick you out of your office. Just you see. He said making Tsunade and Hiruzen laugh and Naruto pouted and puffed his cheeks, making him look adorable as Tsunade brought him into an embrace and he snuggled in her arms, making Hiruzen smile warmly. I have no doubt my boy. He said and Naruto smiled at the old man and thought he was a good man even if he was pretty old now. Alright Neri-chan now runs off to your knee-chan and lets your Ka-chan catch up with her sensei alright. She said softly and he shook his head and crossed his arms making her smile. She kissed his cheek and he let his arms drop but still shook his head. She kissed him on the other cheek and he pouted. You mean Ka-chan, you always do that. He said and she giggled as he ran off into the house and Hiruzen took a seat beside her and dipped his feet in the slowly flowing water of the stream. It's a surprise to see you here sensei, shouldn't you be in the village? She asked and he smiled. No, Jiraiya took care of the work for me today, letting me come and visit you. After all, I do have to spoil my grandson. I had to bribe him with my crystal ball letting him peek for 10 minutes. He said and she smiled as both sat in comfortable silence. I'm surprised you let him pursue that dream, I thought you hated the position of Hokage. He said and she nodded. I still do. She said and he looked at her with a raised eyebrow. But if he wants to pursue that dream, then I'll help him get there. I promised myself I let him do whatever he wanted, and this is the first time he has ever set a goal for himself, and I didn't have the heart to refuse him after seeing his eyes. He is the only one that I can't refuse anything to. I'll believe in him and give him whatever he wants. She said and he smiled and nodded as he gazed at the river. I'm proud of you Tsunade. Of all the three of my students you are the one that has made me the proudest. He said and she looked at him surprised and he put a hand on her head and smiled. She felt pride in her heart as she felt like she was back in her genuine days when she wanted to hear those words from his mouth. The will of fire burns brightly in that boy and I know you will nurture him to become a fine man. He said and she nodded. You must be happy huh sensei, to become Hokage he will have to become a shinobi under your command. She said and he nodded. Of course I am happy, I have great hopes for him and I see that Jurei was right. He loves you dearly. He said and she smiled and nodded. So not going to ask me to return to the village sensei. She asked and he shook his head making her confused. No Tsunade, the council wants to get their hands on Naruto especially those elders with Danzo being the primary threat. They have amassed quite a lot of power from me over the years and me and Jureya are working to re-establish the old ways. It is better that Naruto stays here with you than return to the village. I am no fool Tsunade, I know that Naruto isn't ready to learn of his burden or abandonment yet and Kashina's selfishness to get back into his life will only harm him now. Let him mature and nurture him to be the best that he could. Iwa is already hostile enough with us as it is, and after the Kumo Hayuga incident, the village is in turmoil. Naruto is much safer here. Our enemies won't attempt to kidnap the Yuzumaki twins, since they are and practically heroes of the village, and it will lead to instant declaration to war, but Naruto is another case altogether. They will try to abduct him and force him to be brainwashed and become loyal to the village or eliminate him altogether. Our spies have noted that they are looking for Naruto ever since they learned of your adoption and that he is outside the protection of the village. He is much safer here. Let the village get back up to strength and let me resolve these internal issues, then you can return and Naruto can lead a peaceful life and be strong enough to protect himself. He said and she nodded, trusting the professor completely. She knew he always wanted the best for her and Naruto along with the village and agreed with him on every point. Thank you sensei. She said and he nodded as they stood up and walked back to the house. They walked up to Naruto and Shizun and Hiruzen smiled as he took out a packed gift and handed it to the blonde who took it with a polite bow. Hiruzen was surprised at the politeness and sudden elegance that the boy held and smiled. He saw him waiting for his permission and he smiled and nodded as he opened it slowly and took out a packed set of custom-made shurikens and smiled happily and thanked him. Hiruzen just ruffled the boy's hair and smiled. All right now I have to get back to the village. I can't be gone too long or Jiraiya might make peeking legal in the village. He said making them all besides Naruto chuckle who was confused. Arigato Jiji. 
he thanked him again with a bow, and Hiruzen smiled and nodded as he went out of the compound and towards the village. They celebrated his birthday like every year, and Sanadi gave him some scrolls on the basic fundamentals of shinobi, and promised to start his training from the next day as his present, and they all celebrated until Naruto fell asleep from exhaustion. Meanwhile in Kanahagakur no Sato. Uzumaki clan compounds, Ishina was at the party as she half-heartedly entertained the guests and kept glancing at the entrance, if maybe Tsunade would come, though she knew the chances were really slim if at all none. She watched as Jiraiya and Kakashi were there with the twins happily, and Jiraiya had told her that he had given the invitation, but she had refused it completely. It made her quite furious that she couldn't even meet her own son, but knew that it was her own fault. She saw Hiruzen come in, and a smile graced her lips as she greeted the man. Both of them walked towards the twins, and Hiruzen smiled a grandfatherly smile at the two of them. Happy birthday Narumi and Mido. He said warmly and the both of them grinned as he handed them the same presents as Naruto, and they unconsciously noticed the difference between the sisters and their brother, at the way they handled each other, and saw that they were completely different from him. Thank you Hiruzen for coming to the party. She said and he nodded with a smile. It was no problem at all Kishina, and most of the council members too invited me to get together here. And I wouldn't miss the chance of meeting my granddaughters now would I? After all, I went to see Naruto too. He said and Kashina looked at him with curious eyes. Really? How is he? Is he happy? She asked and he nodded with a smile. He's fine Kashina and he is very happy. Tsunade loves him deeply and the same goes for young Naruto. Tsunade today told him about his father when he asked her and he decided on a new dream. He said and she looked at him with curious eyes making him smile. Really? What is his dream? She asked and he smiled fondly remembering the moment he saw earlier. After Tsunade told him about his father he was so starstruck with the stories that he set a new goal for himself. Apparently he wishes to surpass all the Hokages even his father and wants to become Hokage. He said and her heart ached. Her little boy shared a dream that she held in her heart and felt a pang of jealousy at hearing how happy he was with Tsunade. Hiruzen saw the flicker of emotions through her face and smiled sadly. So then will she be coming back to the village for Naruto to join the academy then? She asked and he sighed and shook his head making her more confused. No, she will most probably return by the time of their graduation time, and I'll let him take the graduation exam, then seeing as he would be trained by her personally all these years. He said and her eyes widened. She wasn't going to bring him to her all those years. She immediately turned furious as she glared at the man. How could she keep him away from me all these years, and why are you showing her favoritism by letting Naruto take the exams at the time he pleases? She asked and he matched her glare with his own making her flinch. Ashina I am not showing any favoritism. You can hold your daughters out too and can have them take the exams directly at any time they please. This has been a rule ever since the reign of the Nidane that students who have acquired the necessary skills can take the exams at any time they please so as to not hold back their developments. The Kashi and Itachi are two prime examples who graduated early with their skill. Please Kashina don't take out your anger and frustrations on everyone and wait for the time to come. You do regret your mistakes and that is what matters. He said calmly and she nodded, smiling sadly knowing he was right and she had to just wait for the right time to come. I know Hiruzen, it's just I want to hold my baby boy in my arms. I haven't even seen him in the past five years and have no idea how he is or if he is even happy. I just have your injurias and to some extent Kakashi's word on the matter and I feel like I am missing him too much. She said clenching her fists and biting her trembling lip as he put a hand on her shoulder and smiled. I understand Kashina and I'll get Jiraiya to get you some pictures of the boy and then you could see how happy he is. Tsunade even has some videos of him from his birthdays from the security cameras of her house that I could arrange for you, I'm sure Tsunade won't mind. And I assure you Kashina is one of the happiest kids I have seen and Tsunade cares and loves him deeply. He said calmly and she smiled a little and nodded as they went through the party and the night ended in both the compounds on a happy note for the time being. Chapter 5 It was early morning and Tsunade was sleeping peacefully as she felt a light tap on her cheek. She opened her eyes and saw her little sunshine wide awake and gazing at her curiously. He instantly buried his face in her neck and kissed her softly making her smile as she wrapped her arms around him and rubbed his back. So Neri-chan is excited about his training now isn't he? She asked softly and he nodded in her neck making her smile. She sat up and put him on her lap as she brushed his hair softly and he played with her blonde locks. So Ka-chan what will you teach me today? He asked and she smiled as she kept brushing his hair softly. Well we are going to try and unlock your chakra Neri chan She said and he nodded beaming happily. That's the thing that you used to do awesome with, isn't it ka -chan? He asked and she giggled and nodded at the cheerful boy. Hi, but today I'll tell you what chakra is and how to unlock and use it a bit. 
she said and he nodded as she picked him up and went towards the kitchen, and all of them had breakfast, and Sanadi took him to the clan grounds under a tree and made him sit down cross-legged and sat beside him. Shizun sat a bit far away watching Naruto take his first steps into the skill set of the shinobi arts. Alright Neru-chan now I'll explain to you the detailed theory of chakra, listen to everything carefully and ask me whatever you don't understand alright. She asked and he nodded giving her his full attention. Chakra is the primary source of energy used by shinobi to enhance their skills. It consists of two halves. She said opening two fingers and he nodded. The first is spiritual energy that consists of our yin chakra, which means the power of the mind and of one's essence. It is developed through amassing knowledge over the years and can be increased through studying, concentrating and meditating over the years and builds up with experience. She said and paused to see if he understood everything and got a nod in return and continued closing her second finger. The second is physical energy or the yang chakra that means the power of one's body and of the physical essence. It is developed through intense training of the body and can be increased with the increase in one's stamina and other physical traits. She said letting him take it all in and waited for a question, but got just a nod making her smile. When these two energies are molded together the chakra is formed. They can be used separately too, but the skill and control required to use even one of them separately is beyond what most shinobi can use. She said and he nodded taking everything in. She told him to reiterate everything, and he worded everything word for word surprising her, and then she got to the part of unlocking his chakra. Alright now we will try and unlock your chakra Neri chan she said and he grinned foxily in excitement making her smile. All right now relax your body and close your eyes. Keep your focus on yourself and nothing else and try to find a warm pull near your tummy all right. She said and he nodded as she said and sat like that for half an hour meditating but didn't find it. He opened his eyes and looked down as Tsunade patted his head. That's all right Neru-chan rarely anyone gets their chakra unlocked on their first try, try it again all right. She said and he nodded and she sat back as Shizun sat beside her. She knew it would take him some time, maybe a week or so before he unlocked it. So Tsunade sama, how is he doing? Asked Shizun and she smiled. He is doing great. He remembered the basics of chakra word for word after I explained it only once. He'll unlock it soon enough, the boy is smart just like his mother. She said proudly and Shizun smiled and nodded as they sat for an hour and were surprised to see a little boy stay so focused for such a long time. Naruto's breathing became light as his mind went blank and he started searching for the pull in the dark recesses of his mind and suddenly saw a blue light and instantly made a pull on it. Tsunade and Shizun were smiling and making small talk as suddenly a burst of purple chakra came out from Naruto's body, making their hair stand on their necks. The ground around Naruto cracked and the chakra swirled wildly around him as both women's eyes widened at the density and amount of chakra the boy held and how it flowed just wild and completely untamed. Naruto kept it up for 10 seconds after the chakra dissipated and he opened his eyes. He felt so powerful during the last moments and knew he had done it. He could feel the presence of his mother and sister and pinpoint where they were exactly. He guessed it came with the chakra and thought it was cool. He grinned at the stunned expressions of his mother and sister and tried to stand up and walk to his mother. He stood up with shaky legs and took a couple of steps as his legs wobbled and his vision blurred a bit as he started falling face first and Tsunade caught him in her arms before he fell and picked him up as he wrapped his arms around her neck and buried his face in her neck and chuckled tiredly. I did catch Anne. He whispered in a tired voice and she smiled and brushed his hair softly. Yes you did my little angel, I'm proud of you. She whispered, rubbing his back gently as he snuggled in her arms. I feel so sleepy Koch Ann. He said softly and she hugged him closer and kissed his head softly. You did great, Neru-chan. I'm proud of you. Now sleep you are tired with all the chakra you pushed out. You'll be better after a nap and some food alright. She said softly and he nodded and closed his eyes as his breathing became soft and he gave into exhaustion. Tsunade rubbed his back gently and his sleep deepened as he breathed on her neck, softly making her sure he was in a deep sleep and she went into the living room and laid him down on the couch with his head on her lap and Shizun put a blanket over him. She kept running her fingers through his hair and he snuggled into her stomach making her giggle as she rubbed his whiskers, making him purr and smile. She was broken out of her musings as Shizun spoke up. He unlocked it on his first day, Tsunade sama She said in a calm voice and Tsunade smiled and nodded smiling at the sleeping face of her son. Yes he did, he is showing signs of his skill already. It took me a week before I unlocked it. She said and Shizun nodded. It took her 10 days herself but to do it on his first was something else. And did you feel the density of his chakra? I haven't felt such potent chakra before. He cracked the ground and the color of his chakra was purple instead of the usual light blue that we see. She said and Sanadi nodded remembering the power that he unleashed, almost taking her breath away. I haven't felt such a potent chakra in years. 
she said as her mind went back some years, and Shizun looked at her curiously waiting for her to explain further. The last time I felt such a potent chakra was when I used to train with my grandfather and granduncle. They both had the most potent chakra I've ever felt, but today, Neri Chan's was almost as dense as my grandfather's, and he hasn't even had any control over it yet. She said fondly and Shizun's eyes widened as she understood what she meant. You don't mean. She said in disbelief and Sanadi nodded. He has strong Senju genes in him. My clan was known for its potent chakra that gave us one skill that was stronger than all the others, and if mastered, it became unstoppable when coupled with the various other skills we had, which was why we are known as the clan of a thousand skills. I don't know what he has awakened in him, but he will be something else alright. My chakra was potent enough in the use of medical chakra that gave me advanced healing skills. Maybe I can pass on all of my knowledge to him. He really is my son. She said fondly and Shizun sat there stunned. But how is it possible that Sanadi Sama is in Yuzumaki? She said and Sanadi cut her off. Yes and Yuzumakis are cousins of Senju that use their skills only in and mainly, not using their dense chakras for specialization in other fields, and it lay dormant in them. Maybe Neri Chan's activated the dormant potency with my feeding him all these years. That's the only possible explanation. She said and Shizun nodded, not finding words, and the point she made was the only possible explanation in her opinion. So what do you think he will awaken then? Shizun and Sanadi smiled as she cradled her son in her lap. I don't know but whatever he will, it will be strong seeing the density of chakra he has. She said and Shizun nodded smiling as she saw the love in Sanadi's eyes as she cradled Naruto and left to prepare some lunch. Naruto woke up three hours later and snuggled into the stomach of Sanadi and gave a slight yawn making her giggle. He gazed up as Sanadi placed a kiss on his forehead, making him smile as he rubbed his eyes and still felt tired. Achan why do I feel so tired? He asked and she smiled at his innocent question. Well Neri-chan that was the first time you unleash your chakra and being the reckless little angel you are you went overboard and pushed out a lot of it. She said softly and he grinned foxily, making her smile at the boy. So how did it feel to use your chakra for the first time? She asked and he smiled as he laid on her lap and she brushed her fingers through his hair. It felt amazing Kachan, I felt so powerful like never before. Like I could do anything and I could even sense where you and Nichan were even with my eyes closed clearly. He said and Sanadi's eyes widened. What did you say to Neri Chan, you could sense where me and Shizun were? Can you tell me what you felt? She asked curiously, and he thought for a moment and nodded. Hi, I could sense where you and Nichan were exactly. It was almost like some small beacons with different lights. Yours was brighter and bigger than Nichan's, and both had different colors, but I could only sense it when I had my chakra activated, I couldn't right now. He said and Sanadi smiled ear to ear and hugged him tightly. Oh my little Neri Chan is a sensor. She squealed, hugging him tightly, and he snuggled into her embrace and kissed her neck softly. Ah Chan, what's a sensor? He asked innocently after a moment and she smiled. A sensor is an ability that few people possess by birth. It is a very useful ability since a sensor could sense the presence of other shinobi even if they are hiding. Experienced and high-level ninja create their own sensory techniques through various means, but they still aren't anywhere near as powerful as a natural sensory ability. She explained and he nodded. Wow is it really that great? He asked and she nodded with a smile. Sensors are rare and very useful in the shinobi world and are really difficult to get an unexpected ambush since the sensor will already sense their presence when they are only trying to get close. It is a really rare and powerful ability and we'll develop it and train you in it properly alright. She asked and he nodded happily with a smile at having such a cool ability. She picked up the miso soup and rice on the tray that was beside her and put it on her side as Naruto tried holding the chopsticks, but his hands were shaking heavily and he dropped them. Sanadi smiled and grabbed his hands and stopped him from trying it as he looked at her confused. I'll feed you Neri-chan, your body is still adjusting to the newly unlocked chakra. So you try and do as little as possible until tomorrow alright. She asked and he nodded as she fed her little boy, and as he finished he yawned cutely, and Sanadi picked him up and walked into her room as she tucked him in and kissed his forehead and moved out as she started studying the scroll for Minato's Tejutsu style. She had been studying it for a year now to help Naruto learn that style. She had to admit it was a fearsome style when mastered. She had studied it in detail to help him work out whatever she could help him in and knew that she had to lay a good foundation for her boy to build on. Shizun saw her studying and smiled as she saw the determination on her face to teach Naruto. Ever since Naruto had come into her life she hadn't even thought about gambling and drinking, and it made her feel pride for her master. So Tsunade-sama, what are you going to teach him tomorrow? She asked and Tsunade smiled as she put the scroll down. Well I'll be starting him up in Minato's Tejutsu style and let him get used to it. Then I guess some simple chakra control exercises and his usual calligraphy lessons, along with the start of the basics, should suffice for now. This won't put too much pressure on him and will help him grow as well. 
So I guess from morning till noon we'll go through to Jutsu, then a couple of hours for chakra control and the basics of chakra theory and after lunch a couple of hours for. That was the basic schedule I have in my mind and then from evening till dinner time he could play and relax a little. She said and Shizu nodded. That was a pretty nice schedule in her opinion and would help him grow immensely with one-on-one -on -one training with Asan and she mused. They sat making small talk before Tsunade decided to call it a night and went to bed with her little blonde sunshine as he cuddled up against his mother. Next morning, Tsunade woke up to the rays of the sunshine falling on her face as she gazed at the little boy cuddled up beside her and smiled. She brought him close to her and he snuggled up against her as she laid a kiss on his head and he snuggled in further making her giggle. She started laying kisses all over him and he giggled and tried to get her off. Ah and stop it, you're tickling me. He said in between chuckles and she smiled as he yawned and hugged her clothes and closed his eyes. I'm on time to get up Neri-chan. She said softly brushing his hair and he whined and kept a hold on her. MHMM, five more minutes. He said with a yawn and she giggled and held him close to her letting him have his rest. He woke up after 10 minutes and was gazing at her with curious eyes as she smiled at the boy. So what are we going to do today Kachan? He asked and she smiled, already expecting the question. The day we are going to start you on some new things, but I'll tell you once we started. She said and he pouted. He gazed at her with innocent wide eyes and looked at her pleadingly. Please you love me, don't you Koch Ann, you can tell me. He said rubbing her cheek softly making her resolve melt away, and she smiled and shook her head. You are getting too smart, mister, but this time you won't be getting me with that look now let's go. She said and picked him up on her shoulder with one arm as he flapped his leg and punched her back trying to get off, and she laughed. Let me go Koch Ann, I'll get back to you for this. He said struggling half-heartedly and she giggled. Oh you're a hundred years too early to get me mister. She giggled and Shizun laughed as she saw the two coming into the dining room that way. All of them had breakfast and finished eating it in comfortable silence. Alright Neru-chan let's go outside and get you started with the first part of your schedule alright. She said and he nodded pulling her with him happily running making her giggle and follow the enthusiastic blonde outside. She led him to a small clearing and stood in front of him as he looked at her with those wide curious eyes, making her smile at the little blonde. Alright Neru-chan today we'll be starting you with the first main branch of the shinobi arts tojutsu or hand-to-hand -hand combat. Most people learn a single tojutsu style that contains both defensive and offensive katas, but we are going to go with a different approach in your case. She said and he tilted his head to the side cutely. Why is that Kachan? He asked innocently and she smiled. Well you see Neru-chan the tojutsu style your Kachan uses is a defensive style with very little offensive strikes, but I have customized it to my own needs with my own techniques. So to not make you too forced on those if you don't manage to make it and learn my techniques, we will start you with your father's style that is completely offensive and then let you master my style and see if you can learn the technique your Kachan uses to overcome its limitations. She said and Naruto nodded happily, way too excited at the prospect of learning the two styles of his parents. Kachan you said that you use a technique to perfect your style, what is that technique? He asked innocently and she smiled at his attentiveness. That's very sharp of you Neru-chan, but I will show you when I deem you are ready for it and maybe even teach it to you. You will be the first one ever to learn this technique other than me. She said and he looked at her with glimmering eyes. Just wait Kachan, you'll be teaching me that special technique in no time. He said and she giggled. I have no doubt Neru-chan about Neru-chan. She said with a genuine smile showing the faith she had in the boy and he grinned foxily. Alright Neru-chan here is the scroll for the Tejutsu style, now we will go through the first two katas for today, that should give you enough to cover the basics of the style for today. I'll help you fix your mistakes and make corrections to your stances so now go on. She said and he nodded while unrolling the scroll and tried to copy the katas in the scroll, making many mistakes that Tsunade was constantly pointing out and fixing for him. At noon Naruto was huffing and puffing from the strain the katas were putting on him as he plopped down and his muscles ached from the newfound exhaustion that they had. He had to admit his two san must have been a speed freak to go through and master the katas of such a style. Tsunade smiled as she saw the plop down blonde bundle in front of her. She walked up and sat beside him putting his head on her lap as she rubbed his head and his breathing calmed down. And here I thought you were going to master it all in one day. She said playfully and he glared at her tiredly. Hey it's not my fault that two san was a speed freak. Just you see I'll master it. He said heatedly and she giggled and kissed his forehead, gently giving him a heartwarming smile. I have no doubt that you'll surpass me and your father one day. I believe in you completely. She said warmly and his eyes widened as he looked at her with watering eyes. Really? He whispered and she nodded with a smile as he threw himself in her arms making her giggle and cried. Their nary chance strong boys don't cry. She whispered, rubbing his back, and he sniffed as he kissed her neck softly. I love you Kachan. 
he said, making her heart warm and a wide smile spread on her face. I know my little sunshine and I love you the most. She said softly and he smiled. No, I love you the most. He said and she giggled. The most is Neru chan She asked in a giggle. Hi. He said, making her chuckle. All right then I love you the mostest too. You're too cute my little angel. She said with a giggle as he snuggled in her arms. I'm not cute, I'm dangerous. He said puffing his cheeks, and she laughed as she got a mischievous tint in her eyes. Dangerous huh? She asked slyly, and he gulped as she took a position like a pouncing tiger and pounced on him. Roar. She said as she started tickling him, and he laughed trying to get her away, but to no avail. Ah chan stop. It tickles alright I'm cute please stop. He pleaded and giggles as she stopped and picked him up in her arms as he snuggled in her embrace. Shizun watched it all from afar and was smiling at the two playing blondes. Alright Neru chan now we are going to learn how to control your chakra. You remember how you pulled it out yesterday right? She asked and he nodded. Hi, but it makes me feel fuzzy. He said and she giggled making him pout. Neru chan you unlocked your chakra yesterday but don't know how to control it. You pulled almost all of it out yesterday at once and released it into the air which made you feel fuzzy. She teased and he puffed his cheeks. Hey, that's not funny. He said and she laughed as he huffed and sat down turning his head the other way and crossed his arms. She got behind him and put him on her lap as she put her head on his shoulder and saw his eyes were closed and was angry. Alright I'm sorry Neru chan you can forgive your ka chan can't you? She asked gently and he snorted and looked away. She got an idea as she sniffed and put her face in her hands faking crying. As soon as heard it and saw her his face saddened and he hugged her. I'm sorry don't cry. He whispered kissing her cheek as his own eyes watered and he sniffed and she smiled and grinned mischievously and his eyes widened at being outdone. See you are a hundred years too early to outdo me mister. She said and he huffed but didn't say anything instead blushing in embarrassment making her giggle. Alright so let's move on. Now to learn how to control your chakra the first chakra control exercise and the simplest of them all is the leaf balancing exercise. Like yesterday, find a warm pull in your tummy and try to concentrate on putting it to the leaf you will put on your forehead and try to stick it there with chakra. She said handing him a leaf and he nodded putting it on his forehead and closed his eyes in concentration. He found the warm pull from the previous day and did as she told him, concentrating it on his forehead as he pushed the chakra on his forehead and suddenly felt his forehead get wet. He opened his eyes and saw that the leaf was dripping wet and sticking to his forehead as he gazed above to see if it was raining, but the sky was pretty clear and was confused at the wet leaf in his hands. Um Kach and I think it's going to rain. Let's go inside and practice. He said innocently not understanding what he had done just now and turned to Tsunade whose eyes were as wide as saucers and had an expression of disbelief. He grew nervous and looked around, getting uncomfortable at her stare. Um Kach and did I do something wrong? He asked timidly, and she broke out of her stupor as she saw Naruto getting nervous and fiddling with his shirt with his bottom lip trembling, thinking he had disappointed her by not meeting her expectations. I'm sorry I tried, but I'll do it, don't worry Sniff I'm sorry. He said, wiping his eyes off the unshed tears, and stood up to get a leaf as she scooped the boy up in her arms. As soon as she saw his hurt and pained expression and his cute sniffs her heart tore away at his innocent voice and eyes as she held him close to her softly rubbing his back. Neri chan you did really well. I was so surprised at how good you did that I was shocked and I'm so proud of you. She said softly as he sniffed in her neck and she felt her neck getting wet. Really I did good, you're not upset or disappointed. He asked shyly with a sniff and she cupped his face in her hands and kissed his tears away softly giving him a gentle smile. My little Neru chan can never disappoint because you never cease to amaze me. She said softly and he smiled kissing her neck and snuggled in her arms and she held her little boy in her arms happily. Yes you did really well, now let's go and start your calligraphy practice alright. She said and he tilted his head to the side cutely. But what about chakra control ka -chan? He asked and she smiled ruffling his hair making him giggle. We'll get to that tomorrow, there is something I will have to change for it to be more effective for you, and then we'll start. So go and get started with your calligraphy arts, and I'll join you in a moment alright. She asked softly, and he smiled and nodded as he ran off, and she walked into the house and took a glass of water and drank it halfway in a gulp and sat down on the dining table, staring at the water intently. Shizun came in and saw her master sitting there staring at the glass of water lost in thought and sat in front of her. Tsunade sama what's the matter? She asked and Tsunade looked up surprised that she had spaced out and smiled fondly. Looks like Neru-chan really is my son. She said in a far-off voice making Shizun confused as Tauntin too looked at her confused and oinked in confusion. What do you mean Tsunade-sama of course I know he is your son. She asked and Tsunade shook her head with a face-splitting smile, making her all the more curious. No, I mean he is closely related to the Senju blood somehow and has awakened the dormant Senju special ability today that I told you about. 
I have figured out what he has awakened and I couldn't be prouder. She said and now Shizun was dying of curiosity and the suspense that had built up. What has he awakened? What is his dormant ability, tell me Tsunade-sama. She asked pleadingly and Tsunade's smile didn't falter as she giggled at her tone and the reaction she knew would come. Our little bundle of sunshine is more closely related to my grand uncle than we could ever imagine. He has inherited the special skill of one of the two most powerful senjus in history. She said and Shizun's eyes widened and her jaw dropped to the ground. Why you don't am mean? She stuttered and Sanadi nodded with a grin. He has inherited Tabarama Senju's absolute control over the water element. The same thing that my grand uncle once told me had happened in his childhood to show his strong affinity to the water element happened today. She said and Shizun's eyes were glued to her as she watched her with an amused smirk and how she hung on to her every word. Belief exercise never worked for my grand uncle. She said, making her confused. Why is that Sanadi sama she asked and Sanadi smiled as she remembered her grand uncle and the time she had spent with him. Because of Shizun his affinity to water was so high that as soon as he concentrated his potent chakra to the leaf, instead of floating on his forehead, it would become dripping wet. And the exact same thing happened today with Nirichan. She said and her eyes widened as she came to realize. That's great Sanadi sama He'll be really strong one day. She said happily and Sanadi nodded but had a worried face making her confused as suddenly she stared at Shizun intently making her nervous. Shizun we will keep this to ourselves, don't even tell Jiraiya about this for the time being. I don't want him treating Nari-chan differently or forcing him to master his ability and pressuring him too much, and the less people know, the better it is as it would create a huge target on him, since many have tried to gain such mastery over their element, but have failed, since it can only be inherited genetically. My feeding my little boy and his distant relation to the Senju clan has made it good and given him an ace in the hole against any dangers. She said and Shizun nodded, agreeing completely with her. So how will this change his training, Sanadi sama She asked and Sanadi thought for a few moments and answered. Well not much for now, but we'll have to change the leaf exercise somehow to suit him better, and I'll start going through my grand uncle's scrolls that he left in the Senju archives for anyone in our clan who may have inherited this ability in the future. We will have to get his control up to par. He will have an easier time at elemental manipulation of water than anyone else, but he still will need the control over his chakra to use it effectively, plus his affinity will aid him better in medical ninjutsu, and I'll get his chakra control on par with me one day. She said determined fully and Shizu nodded happily offering her help in any way she could. She really wanted to pass on her skills to her son. She mused happily and wished that her little brother would learn all her skills and carry on her legacy with him. Chapter 6, Shizun went through the dishes in the sink, washing and wiping them up before placing them neatly on the shelves. She hummed happily, enjoying the calm and quiet house while going through her chores. She loved how the past years had been so stagnant and stable in their lives ever since her master had adopted Naruto into her life. Now no longer did she gamble or drink her sorrows and fortunes away. Instead her whole attention was on raising and training her baby boy so that he was able to protect himself as soon as possible when she wasn't there to shield him from the dangers lurking outside the safe walls within their estates. Nerichan. She heard Sanadi's voice ringing through the house. Her gaze turned back when sounds of footsteps became louder and louder before Tsunade appeared through the entrance with a small frown marrying her face. Shizun. She mumbled, half questioning and half stating the fact as if she wasn't too keen on finding her here. What's the matter, Lady Tsunadi? She asked, clearly seeing the worry and concern etched all over her face. Tsunadi's worried hazelnut eyes focused on her female apprentice with a stern look, startling her a bit at the guarded gaze she held. Where's Naruto Shizun? For the life of me, I couldn't find my boy anywhere. She spoke in irritation and a little annoyance making the raven-haired girl giggle. She could see the woman had just woken up from a nap, seeing her flowing and disheveled blonde hair along with her puffy eyes, and she was no doubt annoyed at not finding her son in her arms when she woke up. Naruto went out into the forests an hour ago my lady, he looked quite reserved and thoughtful, as if he was trying to find something important. She trailed off when Sanadi pinched her eyebrows in realization of where he had gone off to. Probably went to search for the herbs I was teaching him about before I fell for a nap, that boy is just too curious for his own good sometimes. She mumbled, no doubt not in a good mood at not being able to find her joyful blonde to coddle with. Shizun giggled and shook her head when Sanadi plopped down on the dining table with her forehead resting on the hardwood, letting out a tired sigh. Naruto always seemed to do this over the past few weeks, ever since Sanadi had started to teach him about some basic herbs. As soon as she finished her lesson, the boy would be off into the widespread clearing of the estate to find one, no matter if it could be found in these regions or not. And it annoyed Sanadi to no end when after arguing with him to keep him with herself in her arms, he would run off saying she would find it. And almost every time he would return with the herb that even the best medic nins would be hard pressed to find in these regions. 
the boy had luck made of gold and was a walking rabbit's foot in her mother's eyes, who had even suggested getting him a job at the casinos as a luck expert. He'll be back my lady, why don't you have some coffee till then? Shizun handed her the cup which the blonde woman took tiredly. Shizun couldn't help but giggle, take away Naruto from her, and it would be as if she had been drained completely of her energy. It was the same way the other way around, except Naruto would become restless and worried that his mother wasn't with him before he was off expanding his senses and finding his mother. The two were almost inseparable from each other, and Shizun loved the special bond the two shared with each other. Not that Shizun wasn't jealous, she too wanted the blonde to adore her as much, but knew she was just being silly, knowing how much the boy loved her too. Even if she knew his heart belonged with his mother completely. Ha-chan. A soft voice rang in the kitchen making Tsunade purr cup in an instant and whip her head around. Shizun too whipped her gaze back and both ladies let out gasps at the same time. Naruto stood there, barely recognizable with all the mud covering his whole appearance, except for the rare lock or two of his shiny golden hair that were still making him a bit recognizable. Tsunade instantly was off the table and on her knees, in front of her boy with worried and concerned eyes, cupping his muddy cheeks in her palms softly. Nari-chan what happened to you baby? She asked and was checking him all over to see if she was hurt or anything. But she was surprised when the boy pulled out his hands from behind his back to show them the flower he had extracted from the ground carefully so as to not hurt his roots and allow it to be potted in a pot again. See I found the violet calendula you told me about in the morning, isn't it pretty? He asked, making both ladies have their eyes widened in shock. It was an extremely rare herb used to heal poisons from the most venomous of spiders, found in the eastern regions of the land of fire, and was expensive as hell at that. Though when her honey-brown eyes looked at those innocently curious baby blue eyes along with his muddy smile, she couldn't help but giggle in her hand. Shizun too was stifling her giggles in her sleeve, making him quite confused, which he showed by tilting his head cutely to the side. Did I find the wrong one? He asked in a small voice, making their laugh cease, only to see his nervous eyes staring down at the floor. Both realized he was thinking they were laughing at him to make fun of his failure and smiled at the innocent boy lovingly. Tsunade caught his chin in her fingers and started wiping his face to bring out the fair skin and whiskers that were hiding underneath all the mud before planting a soft kiss on them, making him smile. You never cease to surprise me Nari-chan. You found the right one yet again. I swear you'll take my title of the Queen of Elixirs pretty soon and become a Prince of Elixirs. Yourself. She said bashfully, making the blonde smile a joyful smile, and his eyes sparkled in excitement. Really? He asked happily and she nodded with a smile, working on cleaning off his face with her kimono sleeves. Her expensive kimono lay ruined, but she couldn't care less about the article of clothing, his smiles and ticklish giggles were all worth it in her eyes. Now you have to take a bath to clean up. Was all she could say before the boy slipped out of her fingers expertly and her eyes widened when he ran out with a joyful laugh. Shizun giggled, already knowing what would happen now, for it had become quite a common occurrence in the estate. Naruto, no, don't you dare. Sanadi shouted and gave chase to the boy as their laughs and shouts rang in the halls. Shizun wiped her hands clean off the towel and ran out behind her blonde master to witness the moment she loved so much. Her hands now slipped a camera on her way out unknown to the two of them. She wasn't letting this moment go like this without capturing it for life. Naruto. Tsunade exclaimed her arms outstretched to catch the boy who ducked under her grasp at the last point with a laugh, and she growled. The ha ha, you won't catch me Kachan. He shouted proudly, making her smile knowingly how she always let him do what he wanted, even if she could have caught the boy in a moment had she wanted to. But his happiness was precious to her, and she was saving his innocence with her shadow completely hidden from the world outside. Naruto looked back when he jumped out the porch and towards the lake to see his mother hot on his trails and ran quickly. He bit his thumb and smeared the little drop of blood on his palm, making her eyes widen, and now she was going to catch him quickly. Ainu. Seru. Tori. Hitsuji. Ninja art, summoning Jutsu. His voice rang in the clearing when he jumped into the air and flipped midair to land his palm first on the ground, before letting out a short burst of chakra to throw him up and complete his acrobatic flip. Hanji covered a circle on the ground where he had touched the ground, and a puff of smoke revealed quite a confused and orange human-sized toad looking around for his summoner. Boy Kichi. Let's go. He heard a shout only to see his little favorite blonde going towards the lake, and he grinned, jumping off with a dust cloud in his wake straight in front of the blonde who hopped on his back, and the toad let out another mighty jump straight to the center of the lake. Cannonball. Both shouted with laughter and Sanadi stopped near the shore to cover her eyes with her sleeves. Splash. Naruto came out of the rippling water of the lake and shook his head clean off the water with the toad under him doing the same. Both laughed seeing the half-drenched Sanadi standing there, glaring at them angrily. Naruto. She whispered in a low voice, but the blonde heard it clearly, and his laughing stopped. Slap slap slap, boy. That hurts. 
the orange toad exclaimed, rubbing his head where the blonde boy was slapping it harshly. Run you idiot. Naruto hissed, making the toad raise an eyebrow. But his eyes widened when he saw Tsunade take a step on the water, and he turned around with a nod. On it bro. The toad exclaimed and started swimming away from the angry mother who was running on the water after them. But it was all for naught when Gamakichi crashed into something as soon as he turned around, and both shrunk comically to see Tsunade standing there intimidatingly with her hands on her hips. They knew what was coming next. How many times have I told you to? No cannonballs, they can hurt you. The next time I see that pervert who made you sign the contract and teach you summoning so soon without my permission, I swear he'll beg for death when I'm done with him. She scolded the two who looked down on the water surface to not aggravate her anymore. Naruto knew his mother only got angry when he tried to do something that would hurt himself, and he stretched out his arms to his mother who was standing in front of him. Her eyes softened, and she caught his armpits in her palms and scooped the boy who hid his face in her neck and planted a soft kiss on her cheek, making all her anger wash away. I'm sorry. She heard his small whisper, and Sanadi let out a smile and ran her finger through his now completely clean and silky hair. She knew he always manipulated her like that with his adorable cuteness, but she couldn't help but fall for it every time. I'm worried about you Naruto, why do you always have to do it each time? She asked softly, making him curl up in her embrace all the more. Oz it's fun to see you chase me, and then you hug me. He said as if it was a world known fact, making her laugh wholeheartedly. Is that right? She asked playfully and giggled when he let out a cute high. In her neck. Her fist bonked the toad's head gently making him rub his head childishly. And you should at least not play along. She scolded the toad who nodded mumbling about unfair and scary mothers destroying their fun plans. What did you say? She asked with narrowed eyes and growled when the toad dispelled itself with a laugh. Chizun put down her camera having exhausted her new reel just now, but she caught each moment perfectly. Oh she had a new section for her scrapbook now when she got them developed. Tsunade walked in with Naruto still in her arms to get changed out from their drenched clothes. She walked into her bedroom and put him down as he rummaged through his drawer to pick out dry clothes for himself, and Tsunade walked behind the dressing plank kept in the corner and started to put on her new kimono. Naruto, how do you always find the herbs you're looking for? She asked to slip out of her clothes while Naruto changed in the bathroom. Oh no. His muffled voice from the bathroom came, making her smile at his innocent answer. She knew he was lucky, but the last couple of herbs had been one of the rare ones that even seasoned medics had problems searching for. But he could find them as if he had already marked in his mind where they were to be found and came back with the one she would have taught him about to start making an elixir out of them. But this was too lucky to be a simple coincidence now. I can tell where I could most probably find the plant I'm looking for most of the time, and then I go there and look for it until I've found one. He answered, making her hum in thought while she tied her obi to the kimono. He can tell where he'll probably find them. An interesting answer, but it really is a great sense for a medic to have along with his lucky guesses. She mused coming out, tying her now dry hair in a simple loose bun, and saw Naruto coming out in a small red t-shirt and black pants with the Senju clan symbol donned on his right bicep sleeve. He was going to be a ladies' man for sure when he grew up, but she would be putting them out with a stick if they turned out to be her son's innocence. She was the arm wrappings on his left forearm in the form of an arm warmer outstretched with a fingerless glove stitched to its end, completely white, making it look more like an accessory to the boy's clothes. Naruto you don't have to wear it in the estate you know. She admonished him and he nodded with a smile. But I like it. He said happily, making her giggle and nod. She raised an eyebrow when Shizu knocked and came into their room with the plant from earlier now resting in a pot safely. Lady Tsunade I potted this plant, should I keep it with the other? She asked and Tsunade nodded with a smile. Shizun hurried out to the small herb garden they had and kept it on the shelves, having the rare species of herbs in pots, so as not to get any pests ruining them if buried in the grounds, since they were already too hard to find. The collection had become quite large now, with Naruto adding a couple more to the already large collection that Tsunade had bought of some basic herbs from their nearby village to teach him the true art of poisons and elixirs. Wow it is getting quite a large collection isn't it Tsunade asked, the hint of pride in her voice not lost to her apprentice who nodded happily. After all being a medic herself, she knew how precious such a large collection of herbs could be in time of need. Indeed, Naruto takes after you even more so than me, Lady Tsunade. Especially in the arts of poisons and elixirs. She said, making Tsunade beams with pride. Her adorable ball of sunshine really did absorb everything she taught like a sponge to water. She had no doubt he would surpass her soon enough when she had no more to teach him, and he began building up his own batches of poisons and elixirs. But he does. She said and Shizun smiled hearing the pure adoration in her voice. Hachan should I take this? A happy voice came from their side to see Naruto holding up a scissor and a petal of another flower in his hand. 
Sanadi nodded and smiled, showing him which ones to pick to counter a poison found in the most common of reptilians, which they could now make with the addition of their latest plant. Alright Neri-chan now I'll let you prepare the elixir this time, some hands-on experience will come in handy to learn from now on. She said and giggled when he beamed and nodded joyfully. She crouched down on the ground nearby and placed her palm on a small patch of grassy land. Her wrist twisted, manipulating the earth with some dotan chakra to twist the earth and form a small pit there. She watched Naruto's pouting face and giggled. He had been pestering her to teach him that, but she wouldn't give in just yet and have him do training all the time instead of enjoying like he should at his age. No, I'm not teaching it to you yet, Neri-chan. First you'll complete water manipulation before you move on to earth. Not even a simple until then, and no more of those doe puppy dog eyes. She admonished him before he could protest making him sulk and pull out some grass sullenly. But you don't let me take any plants in my room, and now you don't teach me this. He whispered sadly, making her heart tear away at the innocence and sadness laced in his voice. She knew he was sad when she had stopped him from taking any plants in his room like he wanted to in the past few weeks. The boy loved them like his own pets, but she couldn't have him turn the house into a forest, which could have been harmful mind you, with all the various oxidants the plants released at night, which she was sure he would turn the house into with all the plants he was always scouring out that he loved. Her heart tore away seeing his shimmering eyes, and she had half a mind to let him grow a damn tree in her bedroom rather than see him cry like that. Neri Chan. She called out making him look at her with a soft sniffle that made him look all the more adorable in her eyes. I'll teach you how to heal cuts and scrapes with the basic stages of my mystical palm if you listen to me alright. She asked and giggled when he blurred into her chest and squeezed her for dear life. You're the best ka -chan. He exclaimed happily, and she let out a small laugh kissing his head gently and smiled when he turned back to his lesson. She watched him put all the petals and roots in the pit as she told him to in the concrete hard pit. She snapped her fingers under the petals of the violet calendula to spark them alight gently with a precision only an experienced medic like her could have. She put out the small fire in her fingers as soon as they turned to pick ash before she ruined the process and precious herb as well. Her eyes turned up to her baby boy to instruct him on the next step when she saw his shimmering wide doe looking puppy dog eyes looking at her pleadingly with a small sniffle. She slapped her hand on her forehead and sighed tiredly. There was only one thing that the boy found more interesting than the little dotan manipulation she did for the pit. And that was the little Katen manipulation exercise she used for her elixirs. But she couldn't have him light the house on fire if she started teaching him how he would practice it even in his room until he had mastered it. But she had to give him something, else he would be sad and even more with all the chakra control exercises she had been putting him through the past year. Alright Neru-chan if you complete the water walking exercise this week, I let you have a small suetan ninjutsu along with my mystical palm jutsu's first stage, deal. She asked and laughed when the boy brightened up and his tears lay forgotten. The boy was too curious for her own good was what she told herself like always. She watched how her son manipulated the water around his hand straight out of the vapors in the air and turned them into a small glob of water hovering above his palms. She watched mystified as he played with it as if it was a toy, not knowing he was manipulating the element to a degree most would give their arms for, as if it was a plaything to him. Is this enough Kachan? He asked, breaking her out of her thoughts and she nodded. Most medics taught to make elixirs in sterilized porcelain bowls, but she was teaching him this way so he could be ready to make anything anywhere if the situation called for it and not be bounded by the lack of equipment found in hospitals, like some of the lesser accomplished but respected and non-field medics out there. The blonde boy put the small glob in the pit, and Sanadi handed him a small cylindrical stone she had manipulated out of the ground out his eye shot so as to not arouse any more of his curiosity, and smiled seeing him knead the thick and pinkish blue elixir to its final stages. She held out a test tube and watched with pride as he manipulated the liquid of the thick elixir expertly with his palms and didn't even waste a drop of it before pouring it down in the glassed vessel. She put a cork over it and smiled in pride. And that my baby is your finalized elixir for most of the mid-reptilian poisons found in the eastern parts of the land of fire. She said waving the test tube and watching his fascinated face with that adorable smile on his face. She kept the tube in her sleeve to store it in her cryogenic storage in her basement for reservation for future use where she would put it later on and walked into the house for dinner as Shizun had called them in and pulled the boy's head in her stomach as they walked in. I'm proud of you baby, you're growing so much in such little time. She whispered, making him smile at making his mother proud. But Sanadi wasn't mincing words. It took years of research and hard studying before medics even started on preparation of elixirs, but the boy crammed them up as if they were bread and butter to him, and she couldn't be prouder of his growth. Most medics never even delved into these sciences and just learned to extract the poisons from their patients and try and stabilize their patients with medical chakra until his immune system kicked in which led to many fatal casualties in their field.
If only everyone took their fields as seriously as herself, Shizun and her baby boy so many lives could be saved. Ha-chan what are we going to do tomorrow? Came the soft voice of her boy who was looking up at her spaced out face innocently, and she ruffled his hair getting some cute giggles from the boy. I'll start you up on the conversion of your normal chakra towards the medical one. It's great that you have such a strong water affinity, it is the best thing a medic could possibly dream of, since it makes many advanced branches of our fields open up to you instantly, without the need of putting up with numerous months of mastering the element before you move to the real thing. She spoke to him in a wise tone, making him nod and smile. Then maybe we can start working with you on real people in the nearby village's small clinic. You could learn hands-on with real patients as well as help the villagers at the same time. Me and Shizun could take the serious cases too, since it has been quite some time and we need to keep ourselves sharp too. She told him and watched him perk up at the mention of going out. She knew keeping him to herself wasn't the best thing, but she wanted to keep him as safe as possible from any and all dangers. But she was realizing he needed to see a little of the outside world too, if he had to grow out of his childlike innocence and shell he had around him. Not that she wanted him to anyways, but it had to be done, and some social interaction with others was necessary too. They sat and had dinner in comfortable silence that is until there was a puff of smoke by their side, along with sounds of clanking wooden sandals. Both ladies sighed tiredly, but Naruto perked up with a smile. Ladies hold your horses because the manly charm of the gallant toad sage Jiraiya has arrived. Came the boastful exclamation of the toad sage who waved his hair proudly and did a kabuki pose. Naruto clapped happily at his performance that he liked very much, and each time the man prepared a new dance form just for him. Hervey Sage. The blonde boy exclaimed, making the man face fault from the embarrassed samurai toad underneath him, while the ladies in the room chuckled loudly at his expense. Don't call me that you damn brat. He scolded him half-heartedly while the boy just grinned his foxy grin. Sanadi told him to keep that nickname for his godfather, and the man cried in I'm tears at the lack of respect they had for him. Men kissed his toes for the classic literature he wrote, but his own family members had no respect for him, he cried out comically. Naruto hopped onto Tsunade's lap and snuggled in her arms with a yawn making her smile. He had the most energy of them all, but would always curl up in her arms to fall asleep. Ureya watched on in jealousy as the boy was snuggled in her chest and drooled at the thought of him being there, how lucky the boy really was to enjoy those Melanie jugs he mused. Shizun glared at the man in disgust before a plate met his face, and he fell down back from his chair and twitched on the ground. You damned pervert, get your thoughts about my boy out of the gutter before I sock you halfway through the elemental nations. Sanadi fired in her usual way, and Shizun giggled as the man mumbled something with a dazed look, clearly out of his senses. She tucked him into his bed, planting a kiss on his head, and smiled at his soundly sleeping face that looked so cute. She wanted to sleep with him herself, but the pervert must have come for something important that much she knew. She took her chair back and saw his face now completely serious and without any signs of joy in them, and her own face mirrored his. I'm, many people are looking for the boy now. Especially Kumo and Iwa now that their forces are back up to strength. Kumo wants the Uzumaki blood in their mists now that someone is out of the eyes of the village, and Iwa wants the Yandame's heir to themselves or be eliminated altogether before he rises up to the strengths of his father. He said, making her heart drop. She had half a mind to drop his outing straight out for his safety, but her eyes narrowed before stealing themselves. Be careful, and especially don't take him outside for now. The most dangerous thing is that some people, dangerous people, are banding together for some cause, and Naruto along with the twins is on their list that they are gathering information on. I don't know what for, but I do know they are looking quite intently on Naruto which means. He warned her and she nodded understanding his point completely. They are looking for his tenant. She surmised, making Shizun's eyes widen in horror. Who could want such an uncontrollable force of nature for themselves? So be careful alright. He asked again and she nodded pursing her lips. She had to take him out, he had been asking her if he could, and it won't be long before he tried some stunt himself in recklessness, before he ran out to see the world for himself and did something stupid. So it was better if he did it when he was with her. I'll keep that in mind, thanks Jiraiya. She said curtly making the man smile obviously satisfied with her answer. What is this group that is banding together? She asked him, already dreading the answer seeing his solemn face. I haven't been able to scour much since they keep quite close tabs and are a relatively small group of a handful of people, but the group consists of all criminals at least S rank. He answered her, making her eyes widen in horror. It was relatively unheard of since there weren't many S rank missing men to begin with, but to be able to put their differences aside and work along with each other. Shizun knew what S rank criminals were capable of. A shinobi was only given an S rank rating if he was able to harm at least a battalion of shinobi all on their own and still come out breathing. So a group could possibly take down even some minor shinobi villages, if not major ones. And these people were looking for Naruto, both thought dreadfully at the same time. 
Jiraiya sipped his water letting the females take it all in before he spoke up on the topic he needed to raise with her. Haim. He called out softly and saw her eyes on guard almost instantly. It hurt him to see it, but he knew she was the one who possibly knew him the best after all these years. Sanadi knew whenever he called her he would demand something she would obviously refuse. And this most probably involved her baby boy if she knew him like she did. We have two up Naruto's training, medic training is fine and all but he must be trained in. He trailed off when she stood up abruptly and turned around. Be as fine as he is, this matter is finished. You may take the guest room if you wish to stay the night. She was cut off when Jurea stood up, a stern expression on his face that showed he wasn't backing down no matter what. Sanadi. He said with such seriousness it made Shizun shiver seeing the tension in the room rise when the two San and flared up their tempers at the same time and glared at each other dangerously. There are dangerous people after him. Healing won't stop them no matter how great a medic he is. He needs combat. He was cut off when her glare intensified. If healing won't then my fists will. She snarled back and he glared right back heatedly. And how long will you protect him and keep him under your arms, coddling him like a baby? He hissed angrily at her stubborn disposition. As long as I breathe, that long. She hissed right back both of their palms now on the tables, and Shizun gulped and sweated when they unknowingly raised their killing intents and flared their chakras. Sanadi thinks about what you're saying, he needs the training and combat experience to protect himself and become a fine leaf shinobi in the future. He is my godson. That was the wrong thing to say since as soon as he said leaf shinobi and godson her temper flared to insurmountable levels. And he is my son. She shouted back at him with humongous amounts of killing intent, making even him flinch as she raised her fist and tore apart the dining table in half cleanly with her super strength punch. You bastards want to take his childhood away and push him into training like a weapon so that he could be the man Minato was 20 years his superior in under 5 years. He will do as he wants and as I want. She said firmly, making him scowl. Even Kashina agreed to double up their training. He said and she was barely holding back punching him through straight into the Hokage's office now. She can do whatever the hell she wants. He is my son and I will do what is. Their banter stopped when they heard a small sob and even Shizun who had jumped back after the breaking of the table looked at the doorway to see a quivering Naruto with his knees to his chest, crying his heart out. Both adults realized their chakra levels and killing intent and instantly suppressed them. Naruto had woken up after the blasting voice of a table and went to look for his mother when he had seen the two and suddenly visions of his death were flashing in his eyes. He hadn't felt so scared in his life. Tsunade picked the boy up on her lap and cooted him, rocking him and whispering sweet nothings into his ear for her lack of control on her temper. The pure killing intent of a Sanin would scare any child no matter who he was. I'm sorry, I'm so so sorry. She whispered, kissing his face with little butterfly kisses to calm the hysterically crying boy down. Jiraiya himself felt ashamed to let loose his killing intent so easily and scaring his own godson at that. Tsunade I'm. He tried to apologize when he saw her shimmering eyes with unshed tears and the pure fury behind them leave. She whispered coldly, making words dry down in his throat. The toad sage said nothing and walked out, disappearing in a smokeless shunshun. Tsunade hugged the boy who had fallen unconscious from the pure fear he must have felt and rubbed his head softly. No matter what he said, she knew he was right. But his way of just training him into the ground wasn't what she was going to do, though she did know what the boy needed now and how it had been brought closer for what she wanted to train him in the future. There was no training that could prepare him to take on S-rank criminals without years of training and pure field combat experience, but she could give him a small ace in the hole that would keep her fears for his safety at bay for now. Chapter 7 Our favorite blonde hero sat on the cold tiled floor of the basements in the house that were only used for storage purposes by the current small residents of the house. But today it had a different purpose to fulfill for the family. A much more important one. Ha-chan, ha-ha-ha. It tickles. Naruto said in giggles, feeling his mother's hands working their way all over his body. Sanadi dipped her index and middle finger in ink before going back to her half-naked boy and started scribbling strange kanji all over his body. Her face showed one of immense concentration as she began scribbling the seal on someone's body for the second time in her life. The first time had been for Shizun, but the girl was never able to truly embrace the thing it was meant for. Tsunade walked up front and scribbled her way up his shoulders and onto his cheeks, before finally scribbling a small rhombus over his forehead as the final connecting point of the slick pattern of kanji all over the boy. Alright Nerichan I'm done, now stay absolutely still okay. She asked and got a nervous nod from the boy who still had no idea what she was doing to him, but he trusted her with his life. She ruffled his hair playfully to ease up his nerves and got a slight giggle out of him. This won't even feel like anything and will be over before you know it. Just that you'll feel weak and most probably feel sleepy after I'm done, so nothing to worry about Kay. She asked him in her gentle motherly voice and instantly got a happy nod from the blonde. 
alright let's go. She whispered to herself and clapped her palms together. Naruto watched on in amazement when she started going through hand seals, slowly and carefully. He knew how fast she could do them, he couldn't even see her hands in a blur the last time she showed him her full speed, but she wanted to do it right and make sure it was done absolutely perfectly in the end. Naruto sat there for 10 minutes, watching her go through hundreds of hand seals, her eyebrows furrowed in concentration, with her reserves draining considerably by the moment. A bead of sweat rolled down her forehead before she stopped on her 176th hand seal. Her hazelnut eyes snapped open, and her palm glowed a bright purple with the kanji for yin now emblazoned over it. She placed it on the center of the boy's forehead, straight over the diamond-shaped mark, and Naruto felt something funny all over his body. It was like a surge of chakra before it started going all through his body into the small mark on his forehead. His eyes widened when all the kanji except the diamond mark disappeared, and he felt his chakra reserves getting drained like water getting sapped into a dry sponge. Achan, my chakra. I'm so sleepy. He trailed off sleepily, before his eyes rolled back and he started falling forward, face first to the ground. Sanadi caught him in her arms and scooped the boy up in a warm embrace. Her eyes still concentrated on the mark that was glowing brightly on his forehead. She felt nervous since it shouldn't have taken that long to stabilize when it suddenly glowed brilliantly and vanished from his skin altogether, making her sigh in relief. Perfect, thank Kami. She whispered to herself and brushed his golden locks, kissing his head to take him up to his room. He would probably be out like a light till at least tomorrow morning from severe chakra exhaustion before she would start to fill up his reserves slowly with her own and feed him something to recover quickly. She walked past the living room and came across Shizun who raised an eyebrow seeing the sleeping boy in her arms. It was still early morning, so it was quite surprising that the usually energetic and giggling blonde was still sleeping. Tsunade walked past her and tucked the boy into his bed, planting a kiss on his head like usual, and turned her eyes to a confused Shizun staring at her and the boy, and then at her again in pure confusion, with a hint of concern shining in her eyes for baby brother. He's fine Shizun, nothing to worry about. He'll just sleep throughout the day. She said making her face show more of her concern for her little brother. Nothing to worry about. He'll be up and about tomorrow like a happy customer for sure. She calmed the girl down who nodded but was still confused as to why he was going to sleep so much in the first place. Both sat on the couch, the blonde woman already knowing her apprentice would want some answers, so she decided to explain it to her completely now. Remember Shizun, when eight years ago I placed a seal on you and you slept throughout a couple of days. She asked her to get a nod from the girl. Yeah I do Lady Tsunadi, but what does? Shizun trailed off and her eyes widened to those resembling saucers. Realization dawned on her, and she turned as pale as a sheet, realizing the consequences of what her master had done. You placed the yin seal on him? She asked her incredulously and got a simple nod from the Senju clan head who closed her eyes, as if it was a run-of-the-mill action on her part. Have you gone insane? He's only six years old. Shizun couldn't help but shout at her master. Tsunade though raised an eyebrow at her apprentice, who breathed a deep breath realizing who she was talking to in the first place. But Tsunade let it slide knowing how much she cared for her boy and why she was shouting in the first place. Yes I placed it on him Shizun. She said and as the raven-haired girl was about to protest to have it removed when she raised her hand to stop her rant from even beginning. I know what I'm doing Shizun, I have given it a lot of thought over the past week. She said in her serious and steels voice making the girl purse her lips curtly. Clearly, she wasn't happy with the way her master had rushed things so much. Tsunade-sama, this was reckless. Even if he can amass the required amount of chakra with his large reserves, they are still quite small, and his coils aren't developed to the point he would need to control the surge his seal would provide him. Not to mention his control is nowhere near the level required to handle the seal's power, should he ever be able to release it, and that is a big if since I myself wasn't able to get it to life after years of work I put into it. Shizun said curtly, making Tsunade sit silently and hear the aggravated girl out and let her vent out her frustrations before she answered her queries. I won't be teaching him how to release it just yet, Shizun. She spoke calmly, getting a nod from the girl. It was the only thing she had heard until now that made sense anyways. Then why did you place it now Tsunade-sama? She trailed off seeing her crestfallen expression on Tsunade's face, and her heart melted at seeing the vulnerable side of her master coming out now. Because I'm scared of Shizun. She said honestly, placing her face in her palms to control herself, and Shizun sat by her side to give her a reassuring hug. Now she understood why she had done it, the talk with Yurei a week earlier must have triggered her decision. I can't lose him Shizun, he's everything I have. And now the world is after my baby's life. She whispered with a choked sob, making the raven girl sigh and nod sadly. Though she was surprised when Tsunade looked at her with determined eyes. So I have placed a small trigger over the basic yin seal that serves two purposes now. She said, making her apprentice raise an eyebrow. 
Now this was news to her, the Yin seal hadn't been experimented on since Mito Uzumaki's reign and creation of it until Tsunade had tinkered with it to the point she wore today. She was quite curious with this development, knowing almost all the seal's functions anyways. Firstly, for now it will drain his chakra reserves on its own, leaving only the barest minimum to trigger the functioning of the seal. She explained, making the girl nod. It was a needed step to jumpstart the powerful seal in the first place, with a huge burst of chakra coming from its bearer or the one who places it. Tsunade must have used the boy since she would have liked to keep an eye on his condition herself to see if she did anything wrong and fix it before it becomes fatal. It was only logical. Secondly, whenever he is completely drained of chakra or has received a fatal wound that is threatening his life, the seal would be triggered all on its own. She said, making Shizun's eyes turn wider than ever at the implications. Sanadi decided to cut her musings short before she had another burst of frustrations. But. It is only a one-time thing, I reserved my own chunk of medical chakra in it as a small reservoir, so that even if someone made a direct hit to his heart, the seal has enough juice in it to make him recover completely. But it will only work once. She explained, and now Shizun realized why she had done what she had done. It was a guaranteed fail-safe for the boy's safety and not her innate desire to make her skills be passed on to her son that had made her rush up things so much. She couldn't help but smile proudly at the concern the woman held for her baby boy. It was unlike anything she had ever seen before. But a small question still played on her mind now that the deed had been done by Tsunade. Do you think you'll be able to master it? Shizun asked, making Tsunade tilt her head in innocent confusion. Shizun sighed, these mother and son sometimes had the same expressions on their faces. The Yin Si Lai mean, not even I could get it to work. Will he be able to? She trailed off at seeing the grinning face of Tsunade. Oh he'll master it all right. Tsunade said with all the confidence of the world shining through her eyes. Shizun couldn't understand how she was so damn confident when Tsunade stood up, it was time for a warm cup of sake today. She needed it, Shizun too didn't stop her now. He is my son after all. She whispered to herself before squinting her eyes when she downed the cup in one go. Shizun couldn't help but laugh when the queen of liquor coughed violently, feeling the new sensation of alcohol burning her throat after a pretty long time. God cough I'm so out of shape. Tsunade said much to the amusement of Shizun who was snickering happily seeing Tsunade pat her chest after downing another cup down. Her eyes widened in horror when Tsunade took the cork out with her mouth and started downing the whole bottle in one go. Tsunade-sama. Shizun shrieked, but the damage had already been done. She held the bottle upside down, but not even a drop fell from it making her sigh. She glared at the salmon whose cheeks were now a faint pink as the alcohol began to take effect. All right Shizun Hick, I'll go and sleep with my baby. You get something heavy for him to eat Hick when he wakes up. A little for me too. She said the last part as an afterthought while Shizun watched her go into Naruto's room with a sigh. Some things just never changed, her master's little childish antics being one of them. But even still, her care for her son's safety was unparalleled, that much no one could argue. And this is some fine sake. A third boy said from behind Shizun making her stiffen before doing the only thing she could. She shrieked and launched a barrage at the voice. She sighed in relief at seeing the mane of hair now covering Kanoha's legendary toad sage for protection from her attack, who was chugging down the contents of the new bottle quite happily without a care in the world. Shizun couldn't help but wonder if she and Naruto were the only normal ones left around here now. How long have you been here, Jureya-sama? She asked tiredly, to gauge what all he had heard. The man leaned on the wall with his back and wiped off his face with a smile that was quite too serious for Shizun's liking. Long enough. He answered cryptically, making her sigh yet again at his unclear reply. She didn't even bother to ask how come they hadn't felt his presence, after all the man was a master at espionage and held a spy network greater than Kanoha's own at his personal disposal. Gureya was happy that Tsunade was taking his words and warnings to heart and not lacking in the boy's safety. But it still wasn't enough in his eyes, he had to do something. What do you think of Jureya-sama? He heard Shizun's voice and broke off from his thoughts with a warm smile, shaking his head. Shizun couldn't help but be nervous, the man was rarely serious, if ever, and it was scaring her to be honest. Oh nothing for a fine beauty like you to worry about Shizun. He said with a lecherous grin making the girl face palm and leave while shaking her head, muttering something akin to hopeless perverts. Boy. He yelped indignantly hearing her remarks, but she had already left making him sweat drop. He chugged down another gulp of sake and racked his brain to do something to make the boy have an ace up his sleeve while keeping his mother seemingly oblivious to all his efforts. A moment later he let out a mischievous giggle before disappearing in a smokeless shunshun. Otsunade was going to flip when she heard about his own hands-on with the boy, but it would be worth it in the end. Next morning. Tsunade's head was pierced with a headache, and she cursed herself for going all out with her bottle of sake like the old days. But she needed to let all her fears rest and have a little sleep with her baby, after a week's worth of restless nights. 
She held a half ram hand seal, her medical chakra coursing throughout her body. Her liver's metabolism increased exponentially for a few moments with its extra dose of chakra, and all the side effects of alcohol were drained out in a matter of seconds. Her honey brown eyes blinked innocently, staring into the curious wide baby blues that were staring at her intently, while a small hand had her cheek cupped. Her face lit up with a small smile, leaning down into the small hand with a fond smile. Ah Chan, you smell funny. He whispered, making her giggle and pull him close to her in a hug. He must have smelled the strong essence of liquor on her. How are you feeling? She asked, instantly her mind regaining its bearings to let all her worries wash over, her maternal instincts kicking in automatically. Tired? He whispered in a raspy voice, snuggling in her neck with a cute yawn. She could feel his shaky arms, most probably from chakra exhaustion. She, unknown to him, placed her palms on his back which glowed green to let her medical chakra fill up some of his reserves. Naruto felt something re-energizing him and broke off the hug to look at his mother in innocent confusion. Ah Chan what did you do? He asked curiously, making her grin. She flicked his nose playfully, getting a cute giggle out of the blonde. That was one of Kachan's magical hugs, you like it? She asked playfully, getting a small squeak of high from him. She hugged the adorable thing to death who was more than happy to return her hug. Both their noses twitched in unison, and they grinned at each other with a knowing grin. Shizun had prepared one of Naruto's special fried rice, with tempura fried chicken and a mayonnaise topping for him, which, as weird as it sounded, had become one of Tsunade's favorites too. She walked in with Naruto scooped up over her shoulder playfully, both seeing the knowing smile on Shizun's smile, making them smile sheepishly, while both their stomach rumbled in unison, making the girl laugh at their embarrassed faces. The plates were wiped clean after their share of fourth helpings, when the glass door leading to their open field slid itself open, making them all look towards it quickly. Yo! A lazy eye smile along with a trademark lazy wave was pointed to them making the two women quite surprised at seeing the legendary copy ninja strolling in like it was a park for him. Akashi Nai Chan. Naruto beamed and barreled into the man's stomach who chuckled and patted his head a couple of times while the boy clutched his beloved elder brother for life. Akashi, it's a surprise to see you here. Tsunade spoke up, a little surprised but nonetheless happy to see the man on her doorstep. Oh think nothing of it, Sandame Sama had been pestering me to take a break from Anbu for a long time now. So I finally caved in and was completely bored. Then I thought. He said, adding a mysterious air in his voice, quite enjoying the mystified and adoring look he got from the blonde. What better way to spend it than with my favorite little blonde ball of sunshine, ne? He asked, giving the boy one of his traditional eye smiles when the two bumped fists. Tsunade just couldn't help but smile, the boy looked up to the silver-haired man as his elder brother and a seemingly life-sized role model, straight after his father and herself. Even more so than his favorite pervy sage, the man was too cool in the blonde's eyes. Did you get me something? The boy asked, instantly making the man look sheepish and shake his head. Sorry Naruto, I forgot in a hurry. He trailed off seeing the crestfallen expression on the blonde's face. Oh come on who am I kidding, of course I did. He said, pulling out a dog pattern wrapped package from his pocket, making the blonde beam happy. He unwrapped it and watched the thing in his hands with wide eyes and an incredibly surprised look. Tsunade was getting curious as to what had gotten her baby so shocked and hoped for his life, it wasn't one of his books. Though when Naruto turned around to show her the gift her eyes widened before her palm met her face in a slap. Shizun laughed, holding her sides when Tsunade let out a groan at the two identical-looking, face-mask-wearing males standing in front of them. Isn't it awesome Kachan? Chirped up the blonde making her smile. He could get so happy at the smallest of things, but it made her cherish his innocent happiness all the more. Yes it is Neru-chan, but you won't be wearing it in my home when you're with me. She said firmly, laying out the ground rules quickly and his shoulders slumped in defeat. Oh. Well. Please. He pleaded, making her eyes soften and shake her head. Not this time, he won't get her this time with those doe eyes. No young man, I won't have you hiding your face when you're with me in the house. She said and sighed seeing his puppy dog eyes now shimmering, making her walls of emotions crumble down quickly. But you can wear it when outside. She said, making the boy perk up and nod happily. He could live with that. Nai-chan, will you teach me something? He asked quickly, making the nod instantly. He had no qualms with that, plus it served as a little time off from his stressful life back in the village. Akashi, just something simple alright. Tsunade spoke up in a stern tone making him nod obediently as if he was a child and she was the teacher. The last time Tsunade had given free rein to her pervert of a teammate, her boy had been filling up the house with little toads, all the while giggling and running away from her. Needless to say, she was going to be a little cautious this time. Of course Tsunade-sama, nothing much. Just a couple of little harmless chakra control exercises. He said, making the woman nod. Chakra control exercises were quite simple and harmless, she could live with that. 
Plus, the boy enjoyed his time with the lone-eyed ninja quite a lot, so she had seemingly no qualms with it. Alright Neru-chan, go and have fun with Kakashi. Was all she could say before the blonde boy in question had pulled the boy out by his hand. Neru-chan be back by evening. She called out getting a high in return. She slumped in defeat when he was out of her sight and disappeared into the trees. So much for spending some quality downtime with her son, she sulked childishly. Oh come now Tsunade-sama, let's talk some more. We rarely do that these days. Shizun consoled the sulking mother who smiled in agreement and both got into their girly mode to chat their hearts out about seemingly nothing in particular. In the forests. The Kashi stopped the boy, currently looking too high on sugar halfway, and dusted himself off the twigs that had been stuck to him while he was being dragged like a dead sag through trees. Alright Nai-chan, what will you teach me? The happy blonde chirped up. Kakashi's eyes smiled and ruffled his hair playfully. I already told you kiddo, only chakra control today. I still wish to live less die by your mother's hands. He trailed off seeing the boy's pleading eyes. Oh come on, I already completed water walking two days back. At least teach me something simple. He pleaded childishly, making the man sigh. Naruto, the number of techniques don't make a shinobi, it's how you use them in the heat of the moment that determines how great a shinobi you can be. He said sagely making the boy pout cutely. Says the man who knows more than a thousand techniques. He said pointedly making the low night ambu sweat drop at his reasoning. It had its merit of reason in this discussion as much as he wanted to deny it. But he knew of a way to goad the boy on and do the thing that he had come to do in the first place. Trust me Naruto, you love the results you'll get when you're done with my exercises. He trailed off seeing the suspicious look from the blonde. As much as he didn't want to do it, the bribe his employer had given him was way too much to pass on, even with the looming threat of a deadly tsunade chasing him for his life like a shinigami out for a soul. Your father created it. Was all he could say before Naruto's eyes were two inches away from him with a determined look in them. Teach me. He whispered with a steel-like voice Kakashi had never heard before from the boy. He could see how much the boy adored his father, and it made him remember the great man his sensei really was. Alright but only on two conditions. He said, picking up two fingers with a serious look in his eye. First, you are not to tell your mother about this until it is fully completed, and I have told you to do so. He said making Naruto hesitate at first. But it was something his father created, he couldn't pass it up so he nodded, promising himself to apologize and make up to his mother for it. Second, you are never to teach this to anyone until you really know the potential it holds. And always use its power to protect yourself from danger or your precious people. Deal? He asked, putting his hand out for a shake that Naruto took with a grin and nodded, agreeing with his conditions instantly. Naruto was quite confused when Kakashi took out a water-filled jiggling balloon from his hip pouch with a serious eye. Alright Naruto, for the first step all you have to do is pop this balloon. Op. Splash. Kakashi stared at his wet hand and then at the blonde who was holding a small twig that he had used to poke the balloon quite blankly. There, done. He said happily, making the sweat drop at his innocent reasoning. He sighed, wiping his hands off and took out another one from his pouch. As I was saying, all you have to do is pop this balloon. He caught the offending twig before he could pop it and continued on. With your chakra. He completed his sentence calmly and sighed seeing the boy nod in realization while well, he handed him the balloon and took another one in his hands for demonstration. Naruto watched on with a calculative gaze as the balloon convulsed in on itself wildly, seemingly disforming from many ends before the rubber finally caved into the extreme pressure. So what do you think? Kakashi asked for his word before going on to explain its intricacies himself. Not like a child like him could figure it out. You rotate the chakra from your palm in opposite directions from multiple directions. Increasing the swirls to make the pressure in the water increase until it becomes too much for the rubber to handle, and it finally. Well pops. He finished his statement cutely making the Jounin's eye turn as wide as a saucer and looking at the blonde as if he were an alien. The six, almost seven in a week, boy had explained the first step of the seemingly most powerful in his father, the Yandame Hokage's arsenal, as if he was on a field trip. How? He asked stupidly, making the boy shrug carelessly, making him sweat. He was reminding him quite a lot about him now that he thought about it, not the genius part, but the lazy and careless one mind you. It's quite simple, Kachan always says try and look for details in even the smallest of things. She's taught me how to analyze the workings of chakra and how to pick up even the most minute of details so that it may help my medical career in the future. So it's quite simple. He pointed out to them, who now could see where he was going with this. Needless to say, he was quite impressed. The Senju clan head was laying an iron wall foundation on his basics and once he would polish them up completely and move on to the advanced things. It would be child's play for him. Alright then Naruto, that is the first step. Now here. He said handing him two small scrolls which Naruto took with a little confusion. 
those contain the following two steps to complete the exercise. Open them up only when you've mastered the previous one completely. He explained making the boy nod. But why three steps Nai-san? He asked innocently, and Kakashi remembered no matter how smart he was, he was still a kid and ruffled his hair playfully. Because my little ball of sunshine, your father had a habit of making a lot of complex things in life. This being one of them. So for non-genius people like us. He said ignoring the snort from the boy who knew how big of a genius his big brother really was. We divided the exercise into three steps. He said, getting an understanding nod from the boy. But it still didn't make sense to him. But what do I get after I finish the three steps? He asked again, now making the calm quite nervous who patted his head softly, making his innocent eyes look at him in confusion. It will improve your chakra control quite a lot. Let's just leave it at that, alright. He said, making the boy nod who got onto it and sat cross-legged staring at the balloon as if it was a demon from hell and trying to burn a hole in it with his azure eyes. The Kashi chuckled lazily, much to the annoyance of the blonde who couldn't get the damn thing to even convulse even after an hour. Don't worry kiddo, it took your father three years to complete it and another to master it. Six months for me, even after I knew this shortcut, so don't expect it to be quite that easy one. He said playfully but saw the boy's frown still fixated on the balloon, as if it were his enemy. He was about to say something when he heard the boy's words. I'll do it, I'll do it in a month then. I'll make him proud of me, believe it. He whispered the last part to himself, but Kakashi could hear it all too well in the silent clearing. He couldn't help but see an image of his father's proud visage standing behind him with crossed arms, those steel-like azure eyes both father and son possessed watching his boy in obvious pride, shining in those firm eyes. You already have kiddo, you just don't know it yet. Chapter 8 Thank you, thank you so much. An elderly man thanked Naruto for healing up the large cut on his arm, and the blonde nodded, a bit embarrassed by the furiously thanking man in front of him. Please take this each night for a week to avoid any infections. I have tried to take out all possibilities, but it doesn't hurt to be sure as a medic. He spoke to the man, who looked at the medicine a bit fearfully, since it came from a family of unknown shinobi. Don't worry sir, it's just an elixir. I made it myself from the herbs I collected, it's all natural. He reassured the man who smiled and hugged the adorable seven-year-old boy tightly. Tommy has blessed you with the power to heal people and save lives soon, may your hand save a thousand lives and many more. The man blessed the little boy, patting his head only to make the boy blush and nod shyly. He smiled and waved back happily, and Naruto looked ahead for his next patient. He raised an eyebrow seeing so many girls his age with small cuts on their fingers or arms, and was a little peeved by it. Wow Koch and girls here sure do get hurt a lot. He spoke in deep thought, and Shizun giggled seeing Tsunade's eye twitch dangerously. And I thought that the face mask that Scarecrow gave my boy will make them fly away from him like house flies, but they are getting attracted to him like moths to honey. I swear, those sluts are going to hound my boy once he grows up if this is anything to go by, and that Kakashi is so dead the next time I see him. She thought, glowering at the little girls who were giggling happily at seeing the magical medic boy that had come to help their village every day for a month now. Naruto patched up a small cut on a girl's finger with bandages, it didn't even need a healing technique for it. Though he was quite confused when she kept the finger in front of his face and looked at her with a lost look, not knowing what to do. This it okay. She mumbled with a cute pout, Shizun stumbled while carrying her box of supplies, and Sanadi had nearly plucked off the man's nail from his injured hand in shock. Both stared at the scene, one wondering what to do while the other was devising plans of how to hide a small girl's body without anyone suspecting her for saving her boy's innocence. Oh. He mumbled innocently, pressing his lips on her bandaged finger gently, and the girl smiled widely and hopped off her stool happily. Ergato. She mumbled, pressing her lips on his whiskered cheek for an innocent kiss, and Naruto turned a bit red in embarrassment and rubbed his cheek with a lost look, not understanding why she had done that. But Tsunade did, and Shizun was barely holding the struggling mother from fatally wounding the girl dot slut in Tsunade's eyes that was corrupting her son so much. An hour went by, with Naruto bandaging and healing small cuts and wounds with his little medical knowledge, along with prescribing elixirs to the sick and poisoned people, while sending the cases above his skill level to his mother and sister, modestly telling them it was above his head for now. I'm sorry miss, but I can't put on stitches for now, and this deep wound needs the third level of the mystical palm jutsu that I don't know. My sister can take care of this, but here this elixir will relieve the pain for now and increase the amount of blood you've lost to make up for it. He spoke in his soft voice and handed the small vial to the young woman, in her late teens who smiled and nodded while taking it off his hands. Aren't you the cutest thing? She cooed teasingly, taking his chin in her fingers and pressing her lips on his adorable whiskers for a soft kiss, after pulling his face mask back up. Once more Naruto rubbed his cheek with a lost look when the girl left with a giggle to line up in front of his sister's desk before shrugging and moving on. 
Sonati's eye twitched even more dangerously seeing the small eye he was having, consisting completely of females who were no doubt there to steal kisses from her son. Naruto. She called out, smiling when he blinked innocently at her. Send all the female patients to me, I'll take care of them since I am a woman myself, so I could help them better. You take care of the men and the elderly okay? She asked and he nodded seeing her point and spoke her point to his lined up patients who awed in unison, much to the protective Senju mother's ire. You know what, I'm not that hurt to waste such an experienced medic's time on such a small matter. Yeah me neither. I feel quite alright now. Yeah me too, let's go home. The tick mark dawned on Sanadi's forehead, seeing almost all the women bar the seriously sick or injured ones, empty their small medical camp. Why those sluts? She growled inwardly, while her apprentice was barely stifling her laughs in her sleeve at seeing the fired up and irate mother holding in a tantrum in herself. Naruto blinked when they all crowded and started hogging and thanking him for his time by kisses and hugs. A few moments later, he was covered in lipstick, and a completely baffled look on his face was cemented at seeing them all go well giggling to each other happily, as if they weren't even sick in the first place. Ha-chan. He whispered nervously seeing her fuming red cheeks and steam was almost about to sprout out from her ears. Not even leaving did they go without hugging her baby boy. Naruto wiped his face off and pulled up his mask with a careless shrug off his shoulders to resume on the elderly sick patients who were blessing him so much, he was getting quite embarrassed from their words. But it felt nice to help someone, he loved seeing their smiles and reassured faces that they were now fine to go on with their lives as they saw fit. Naruto packed up their things, helping his sister while Tsunade sat on her chair in exhaustion. The concentration to heal serious patients for so long and remember their details was taking a toll on her, and she rubbed her temples tiredly. A small weight sat atop her lap, and soft breaths tickled her neck, making her wrap her arms around her boy with a soft sigh. Are you tired? She asked him and got a shake of his head quickly. But you are. He mumbled sadly, making her smile and kiss his head gently and utter an honest hi to him. She picked him up over her shoulder getting a joyful squeal from his lips while she walked with him and sat atop her shoulders happily. Boy he shouted, waving at a tree in front of them, and much to Tsunade's amusement, a baboon waved back at him as if they were long-time buddies and threw a banana back at him that Naruto caught expertly off the air. She giggled hearing her boy thanking the monkey who hooted his welcome back to the blonde and hit his chest excitedly. You want it? He asked and she took half of it, giving him back the other half which he shared with Shizun much to the girl's happiness. They walked through the forest and Tsunade heard all the animal voices die down. Even Shizun glanced around seeing the forest between their house and village go suddenly silent and become all but devoid of life. Tsunade stopped, with Shizun following suit, and both looked around with narrowed eyes with the young girl putting down their supply boxes and getting ready for anything now. A thick mist started enveloping the clearing, a mist too thick for parts of this region, and now both women knew they were surrounded by enemy ninja. Tsunade put the boy down and hid him behind her legs who got the signal and was now covered between the two ladies' safe protection from both sides. Swish. 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 The voice rang in their ears, and Tsunade had stepped a little to the side, catching the handle of the large blade thrown for Shizun's neck in her palm, before putting it over her shoulder easily, as if it were light as a feather. You may as well come out now Zabuza. Tsunade called out, getting a round of deep sinister chuckles coming from all around her. Well well well, you know me Tsunade of the Sanin, one of the three legendary shinobi of the leaf. I must say this is an honor. The voice drew out evilly. The clearing was washed all over with killing intent, Naruto shivered, but gulped down his fright still quivering but in his senses. He had felt a much thicker one than this from his mother and pervy sage before too, so he could take this one a little. Who is he? He whispered, clutching his mother's shirt from behind her, and she threw the fake blade away from her that splashed in a puddle of water upon making contact with the ground. No one for you to worry about the baby. Just stay back and let Kachan and Nichan take care of this okay. She asked him in a whisper and got a nod from said boy who knew this was no time to argue. What do you want from Mamachi? Money, supplies, my healing skills. Name it. She called out, looking around to sense the master of the silent killing out, but to no avail. Oh. Sorry to disappoint you my lady, but I'm here for something far more precious than such puny items. He drew out the two women on guard who knew what he was talking about and protected Naruto from any and all harm. Yandame's legacy. He whispered, and both women stiffened in surprise before putting themselves on guard. Give me the boy and I let you two walk away. He drawled out with a chuckle making Tsunade growl at herself. You have some nerve to be threatening a Sanin's abusa, I never took you for an idiot in all my years. Weren't you supposed to be the head of Kiri's assassination unit? Tsunade asked to get him to give out his location and buy herself some time. That is why I can take you send you, this is my mist, my silence, my turf of kills. He boomed with a chuckle that made Naruto shiver, and Shizun launched a hail off to cancel out the incoming hail for herself in midair. There's two. 
Shizu whispered while Tsunade nodded at her assessment. No, there are four Ni-chan. Naruto whispered, and both ladies cursed themselves for forgetting they had a sensor amongst themselves right now. The large blade came to cleave Tsunade and Shizu next clean off, and Zabuza grinned. His grin vanished when Tsunade caught his blade in her fingers, her legendary strength pushing him back like a rag doll. Such brute strength to stop my blade with your mere fingers. The rumors of your strengths weren't exaggerated I see. His voice drew out and she said nothing but kept on her guard. Only her honed instincts and Naruto's sensory abilities were what were keeping them alive. Suddenly the mist all around them started shedding before Tsunade could let out a pulse of chakra, and both women looked down to see Naruto standing with his hands clapped together and his eyes closed in concentration. A small sheen of purple chakra coating his body and the mist vanished completely, leaving a baffled Zabuza, a masked hunter Nin and the demonic brothers hop out from their trees. The water he had gathered from the mist swirled all around Naruto before he let it go, and it splashed onto the ground harmlessly. That boy manipulated the water from thin air? Zabuza asked incredulously. Even Haku did not have such skill in his arsenal to control such purity of an element by himself through pure elemental manipulation. Naruto stepped behind Shizun who pulled him back behind her, and Tsunade smirked. Well the hidden mist is certainly a fluke now. She taunted the man who growled loudly before smirking. Yes, that boy would fetch quite a sum before I sell him to Iwerakumo. His children will surely be quite valuable to him. He licked his lips, and Tsunade glowered at his greedy eyes murderously. You won't even touch my boy you bastard. She growled out and he chuckled seeing how the odds were now stacked against her. Two on four while well, they had a kid to protect as well. Back Shizun hacked out feeling the blunt edge of the sword make contact with her stomach before the demon brother's gauntlets had knocked her out completely with a slam in midair. Haku rained down at her vitals to keep her knocked out until they fulfilled her task, and Tsunade's eyes widened in horror at seeing Shizun getting taken out in the blink of an eye like that. Shizun she shouted in worry, only to turn back to see Zabuza's mirth-filled eyes while he brought his blade down towards her waist. She jumped back with a hop, taking Naruto with her, and couldn't help but let the gash she made on her stomach when she got on one knee while holding her stomach and coughed out blood. Eye style, demonic crystal mirrors a voice called out while Tsunade glared at the dome of ice mirrors, now covering her angrily. Alright that does it, no more holding back. These bastards are her thoughts died down, and her eyes snapped to her side to see Naruto's horrified eyes staring at Shizun's unmoving form and her deep gash with teary eyes. Why are you crying boy? This is what shinobi are, we are tools of destruction wielded by our cage as they see fit. We kill and be killed on orders from our cages, the only difference is that in the mist, we aren't subtle about it like you people here. Zabuza chuckled and Sanadi started healing the gash on her stomach quickly. What? But why would you hurt Nichan? She only helps people. Naruto whispered in a trance, not understanding this man's words who snorted seeing the innocent boy who hadn't seen the real face of the world right now. But he was more than willing to accommodate him. Tell me boy, what do you dream of? He asked, while Tsunade growled and told Naruto to not answer anything or listen to his words even for a little bit. I want to be one someday. Naruto whispered honestly, and Zabuza chuckled maniacally. They are the biggest killers, they send their own kin to be slaughtered like cattle as they see fit. To use us like the tools we are and kill and steal, or do anything in the name of keeping the village and their nation safe. This is the truth of the shinobi village's system. Zabuza chuckled, enjoying the horrified eyes of the boy who soaked his words up and looked around him with terrified eyes. No Hokage are good people, my father was a he whispered in a pleading voice, not believing his words at all about his dreams, when the man cackled again. This was too amusing a moment to miss for him, to snatch an innocent boy's innocence. There was never a better thing in life for him. A killer, a mass murderer. How do you think he got the name Yellow Flash Zabuza asked, and Sanadi still couldn't believe how cruel yet true his words were. She wanted to say he was lying, but his acidic words were indeed true, and she didn't want her son to join a shinobi village either if she had to say the truth out loud. Look at it from Iwa's side. To you he stood in front of a thousand men bravely right. He asked and got a tearful nod from the blonde. But look at it from their side, he killed a thousand of their own. Father's brother's families all destroyed. To them there was never a bigger villain than the Yellow Flash himself. They would slaughter you on sight just because you look like him. That's how deep the hate runs. He explained in a bloodthirsty voice while Haku was preparing his and Tsunade was preparing to release her seal if need be. Hatred isn't good, Pervy Sage told me that hate creates more hate and war creates more war. Forgiveness and mercy shall be the true salvation of a shinobi he stopped when Zabuza snorted at his idiotic words. All ideologies kid, I used to be that way too once he spoke, a hint of nostalgia in his voice and Naruto let a tear drop from his eyes while he looked on at the blunt man pleadingly for answers to questions he had never asked before. Then what happened? He sobbed out, and Zabuza looked at him in the slightest bit of pity before grinning maniacally. 
Then my village told me to kill my comrades to become a true Kiri ninja. And it felt, oh Kami it felt he whispered, enjoying his curious eyes before grinning. So good. He whispered and Naruto's eyes turned wide in horror when came towards him from all around. He tried to gather some water to make a wall, but he knew he didn't have the time or concentration right now to do so. Atsunade grunted, her form hovering over her son protectively, while a small trail of blood leaked down her smiling lips. Hachan. He whispered in horror, realizing that she had taken all those weapons onto her back to protect him. All the flashes of his life's moments, each moment he spent with her flashed in front of his eyes that became dull blue for a moment. Duck duck. A small pulse of chakra ran throughout the forest as he saw his mother's smiling face, and the fear that he may lose her flashed across his heart. Duck duck. Another pulse ran through the forests, the greenery suddenly budding to life, as if life itself started responding to his whim around him. You heard Koch and he whispered in her ear, and Sanadi watched with wide eyes when he let all the chakra burst in his body and got soaked up by the ground below him. It can't be she thought in disbelief and thick tendrils of wood sprouted out all around the dome and started piercing the mirrors as if they were mere annoyances. Stop hurting my mother he screamed out forcefully and the wooden spike started bending to his will and wrapped up all around the four opponents they had held ever so tightly. Naruto stops the baby, it's enough. I'm fine. She tried to calm the extremely furious boy down, but he was having none of it. His hair flailed around and his mind went blank in pure and unadulterated fury. No one hurts her and gets away with it he shouted again, and the wooden confines on his prisoners started constricting themselves around his captives for their lives. Naruto stopped she tried to stop him. Squelch. A shower of blood sprayed down upon the clearing's ground to paint it scarlet as his enemies were squeezed out of existence, and Naruto fell down sideways from exhaustion before getting caught by Tsunade. He tried to look what became of them, but she hid his face in her chest tightly and shook her head while placing a kiss on him. Sleep now, no need to look. They ran away from your power baby, you are so strong. She choked back a sob at her lie and he smiled. They did huh, I'm glad no one will hurt you now Kachan. I love you. He spoke softly before letting exhaustion claim him and she hugged him to death. I love you too baby, I love you so much. She whispered to thin air as she absorbed in that her boy had already made his first kills unknowingly and had awakened yet another thing that the world will hunt him down for if it got out. She was glad the four were dead, she would have let them leave alive anyways after seeing this had he stopped a moment earlier. She picked Shizun up and walked out of the clearing, putting it on fire with a small fire to remove all traces of his chakra and the bodies. This was going to be her secret to keep since she knew that Naruto wouldn't remember this when he woke up and Shizun was unconscious during it all. It was her burden to bear for now. They didn't send you clan compounds. Tsunade sat on her bed, her boy's head resting on her lap, while he breathed softly in an obviously deep sleep. She just kept running her fingers through his silky locks, going over through what she had seen earlier today again and again. Ami had to have that accursed bloodline. She sighed softly, kissing his head with a small sad smile. Even with a gift such as this, it couldn't very well be said that it was a positive one. Her grandfather's strength was still unparalleled, but the thing the world feared most about him was the one thing that had seemingly died out with him all those years ago with his death. That is until today. Mokuten. The name itself would cause fear in the hearts of almost everyone outside as well as within the leaf. The way it was coveted was almost as big as having the power of a god in your palms, which was true if one went further enough to be able to tame Biduous acting as mere pets in his palms, like her grandfather had showcased decades ago. I'll tell him to keep this between us only for now, but it is a blessing as well as a curse in disguise. But with the already large target of being Minato's son that had possessed his life's knowledge, having the Mokuten was like having a kill on side order now. But it could help him too, Aji-san always said that it had the power to calm down even the most violent of storms, if wielded by a true heir of the Senju. Maybe it could help him with his Bijuu and sleeping problems now. She traced the necklace on his neck with her finger, now wondering if she was doing the right thing by keeping it all from him and the world. She gulped down a choke, how many secrets will she have to hide? Will her boy ever see her with mistrust because of this? The thought alone scared her to no end, but she would endure it for now. It was for his own good even if it would come back to bite her later on. Mm -hmm. Naruto moaned sleepily upon her lap, her lips twitching upwards, while she kept brushing those golden locks with her fingers. His eyes squinted before flickering open, and he buried his face in his mother's stomach with a soft sigh. Upside AC. She whispered, kissing his head. He looked up and blinked, instantly shooting up to catch her in a warm hug. Hey. She asked worriedly, cradling his head when he snuggled tightly in her arms, as if she would slip off any moment. You're alright. I'm glad. Her ears picked up his soft voice, and she understood why he was like this. Your Kachan isn't one to be taken down by the likes of them. She whispered playfully when he looked at her happy smile and giggled when she flicked his nose with her own. But what happened to those people who attacked us Kachan? 
he asked curiously, making her smile threatening to go down into a frown, but she kept it up and shook her head. Nothing for you to worry about, I chased them away. She spoke and saw him open his lips to further the topic, but she was having none of it right now. Don't you want to see Shizun now? She asked and his eyes widened upon remembering his sister, and he nodded furiously. Of course, where is she? He asked hurriedly and ran off when she told him she was in her room and sleeping. What happened out there? A new voice called from behind her when he was out of the room. She closed her eyes and sighed tiredly, rubbing her forehead that was now aching like hell. Nothing for you to worry about Ureya, some wannabe shinobis decided to take me on and grab Naruto while they were at it. I incinerated their bodies before taking off. She spoke and the man behind her said nothing, though he did narrow his eyes on her. He could see she wasn't telling the whole truth, but he nodded silently, deciding to let it be for now. After all, the threat had now come and passed. Tsunade took my advice just this once. He spoke seriously, and she said nothing to let the man speak his thoughts. Tell him everything about Kishina now. Each day he grows up, the more you complicate things for him. Secrets let out at the last moment will not be healthy for his young mind. Let him process these things now. You don't have to tell him everything, just a little bit about her and her relationship with him. He chimed in, and she clenched her fists and jaw tightly but said nothing. Tsunade. He kept a hand on her shoulder seeing her rigid posture which slumped a moment later with a tired sigh. You're right Jiraiya. She spoke, making him shake his head. Be reasonable Tsunade, USH wait I'm what? He asked incredulously, and she nodded to confirm he had heard her right. You're right, I'll tell him about it soon enough and let him make his own decisions. He is growing up now, seven already. He can do what he wants. She trailed off uncertainty when he squeezed her shoulder seeing where her thoughts were headed to. Tsunade listened to me. He spoke firmly, crouching down in front of her to gaze directly into her eyes with his own. You're his mother. He spoke firmly, making her look down and nod hesitantly. Nothing you tell him will change that, I know that boy all too well now. He will jump off a cliff without a thought if you were to say it was the right thing without even a moment's thought. That is how much he adores you. The bond you two share goes further than anything that can be proven by blood, but telling him everything and coming clean is a smart way to keep things clear between you two. I don't want to see the boy trouble when you tell him at the last moment, and even then if do so he will love you more than anything else in the world, that is a fact. He spoke firmly and she let out a soft sigh, followed by a tired but serene smile to her old friend. When did you get so wise you pervert? She asked in a playful manner, and he grinned cheekily. Oh I am a sage he boasted proudly, and she couldn't help but laugh at his antics. So now as payment for my truthful and wise advice, can I expect a payment of some sorts? He asked suggestively, wiggling his eyebrows and she sighed. What do you want? She asked, letting him be just this once since he seemed so wise right now. Oh you know. He giggled lecherously, putting his hands in front of him and making a squeezing motion while wiggling his eyebrows. Tsunade's eye twitched dangerously, and a tick mark appeared over her head. Boom. Naruto was walking down the hallway back to his mother when his godfather suddenly flew straight through the wall, passing by a human-shaped hole in said wall, and fell down in a heap while smoke rose from his twitching form. He blinked and then blinked again before crouching down and putting his palms over the down form of a barely recognizable toad sage. I'm alright. He heard a groan and Naruto let his hands glow with a basic healing technique and sighed at the man. Why do you always do something like this pervy sage? He asked tiredly, and the man grinned a painful smile when Naruto healed his little wounds thoroughly as best as he could. It's so worth it, you'll get it one day when you meet a feisty one yourself. The man mumbled, getting another soft sigh and shake of the head from his godson who healed him while plopping down on his butt. Only you pervy sage, only you. He muttered and both had their little moment of alone time. As strange as it was. Chapter 9 Tsunade sat on her bed, her back being supported by its headboard with a troubled expression marrying her face. Her fingers ran through the sunshine blonde hair of her son who slept peacefully upon her lap without a care in the world. She had given him the day off today, well more like giving herself a day off to calm down her nerves that felt like they would explode any moment from the anxiety she was experiencing. The day was the day she came clean with him on the topics relating to Kashina. And it made her get scared all the more, unconsciously she clutched him closer in her embrace like a lifeline. What if he didn't take it well? What if he asked her to let her see Kashina? What if Kashina somehow made her way into his heart? She pushed down those thoughts, shaking her head and looking down at the wide baby blue eyes staring up at her fondly. A graceful smile lit up her face when he sat up while fisting his eyes off their sleep with a little yawn. Enjoy your nap? She asked in a soft whisper and got a small sleepy nod from the boy who rested atop her shoulder with a little smile. Her hand cradled his hand on instinct like she always did for him and brushed his silky hair with her fingers. Naruto, Kachan has to tell you something baby. She whispered, her stomach felt as if it were made of lead when he nodded innocently. I have been hiding some things from you baby. 
she started, feeling even worse when she felt him perk up in her arms and merely squeezed him tightly for reassurance. Naruto could see it in her eyes she was troubled, her darting eyes were trying to look at anything but him. His small hand cupped her cheek, instantly her gaze locked onto his own wide eyes. It's alright, I trust you. His innocent reply was laced with a firm smile that made her feel relief was over her, he could always see straight through her without even meaning to. This time was no different. She chewed on her lip nervously, seeing his wide curious eyes awaiting her words, and gulped down a choke. Naruto. Her heart ached for what she was about to say next, and she clenched her eyes shut for a moment. I'm not your mother. She finally let the truth slip past her lips. Her eyes opened up, only to see innocent confusion and a lot of fear in those nervous orbs she adored so much. W what? You shouldn't joke like that. He mumbled nervously with a small laugh, but saw her sad smile, and his laugh ceased. His hand fisted her kimono tightly like a lifeline. Ah chan stop joking please. He pleaded in a soft voice, tears prickling in the corner of his eyes, when he saw her same sad smile not even twitching in the slightest. You're scaring me, please stop. He said in such a small voice, she would have missed it had it not been for their close proximity. The held back droplets now streamed down his cheeks freely, and he looked at her with scared eyes. Naruto, listen to me. She spoke, but he shook his head and hugged her for dear life. No, you're my mother. He sobbed out, crying hysterically. Her arms instantly snaked around his waist to pull him in a soothing embrace. Her heart ached at his loud wails, but she knew she had to go through with it completely. Naruto, your mother who gave birth to you couldn't care for you when you were a little baby. Her tone getting even more gentle by the second, and she could still feel his quivering form in her arms, but knew he was listening to her each and every word. Naruto felt as if his world was crashing around him, he could feel his heart shattering in pieces as her words pierced the very soul of his being. Please stop. He sobbed out in a choke, his arms tightening around her neck as if she would slip any moment. Don't send me away please. He sniffled out, Sanadi's eyes widening upon his words. She tried to pull his face in front of her, but he wouldn't budge in the slightest to let her go. Naruto you're not. She tried explaining, but he shook his head furiously. I won't ask for any toys, me and Kichi won't do any more pranks. I'll never make trouble for you, I won't even ask you for any training. Please don't take me away from you. He sobbed as if his life was ending at any moment. Tsunade clutched him for life, not understanding what had gotten into the boy for saying such things, not even realizing her own tears leaking down her eyes. Naruto calmed down. She whispered, kissing his head from the side only to feel him leaning into her touch, as if it were an ointment for his pain. She took his hands from the back of her neck and gently pulled them off, only to see his completely bloodshot eyes and puffy cheeks. The tears still not stopping or looking like they would at any moment, she wiped his nose and cheeks with her sleeve and pulled up his chin. His eyes looked so dead, his form so defeated as if all the life had been sapped out of him. Her heart gave way seeing his condition, while she had only yet told him a couple of sentences of the truth. She cupped his cheeks in her palms, forcing him to look at her. You're not going anywhere. She spoke gently and smiled softly when his eyes sparkled with a bit of hope. I'm always here for you. She assured him, kissing his forehead when he leapt up into her arms with a thick sob and curled up in her embrace. I just have to tell you. She was cut off when he shook his head much to her confusion. I don't want to know, you're my mother. He sniffled, feeling his energy completely drained of him. That's it. Please. He sobbed out, and she shushed his plea up and started rocking him gently when she felt his weakened form lulling up into a tired sleep again. Her heart fluttered at his words, and she let it be for the time being. It had been even worse than she could have imagined, he hadn't taken it lightly at all. She could feel his broken voice, cracking up with a thick sob in each whisper he spoke. Each whisper that said she was his only mother. Her eyes glanced up when the door opened slightly, the face of Shizun and Jurei appearing in to see if they could come in. She nodded her affirmative and both stepped in, softly clicking the door behind her. Shizun walked up, wiping her cheeks with her sleeve and making her realize she had been crying too. He didn't take it well huh? Jurei spoke in a whisper, getting a defeated shake from Sanadi, and both let out long breaths in defeat. How much did you tell him? Asked a toad sage, taking a seat by her and rubbing the back of the sleeping boy in soothing circles, who was still letting out little hiccups sleepily. But I'm not his real mother. She spoke in a tired voice, and the man looked at her expectantly when he realized she was done. Just that. He asked in an incredulous tone, and shivered from the murderous glare she sent his way. He broke down, saying not to send him away. He looked so scared. She hugged him tightly, making the man nod too in understanding. Well, the hardest part was out of the way at the very least, and Sanadi now no longer felt scared of losing him, but more about hurting him if he learned any more truths right now. Well, we can tell him the rest when he wakes Jurea's words were cut off by Tsunadi in an instant. No. She spoke firmly, a tone of finality lacing her words. He looked at her with a lost look, not quite understanding what she meant by that. 
That's enough, he isn't ready. He knows what he needs to and the rest can come later. Her words surprised the two. Even Shizun was surprised but decided to do the intelligent thing and stayed silent when she saw how desperately both were holding each other. Gareya pursed his lips and said nothing. He wanted to argue, Kami knew he did, but he knew it was futile to argue with her right now. Especially when she got protective of the thing she cherished the most in this world. Her son. Alright, do as you see fit. Take care of him alright. I'll bring us something to eat from the outside. Jure replied, getting a grateful nod from Tsunade when he gave her shoulder an assuring squeeze and got up while making his way to the door. Both ladies were grateful for it, neither feeling up to make something as the solemn mood had settled all over the compounds. Next morning. In there had been a quiet affair the previous night. No one felt anything to talk about, not even Jurea had a thought to poke the already troubled blondes anymore and had left quietly with a simple goodbye. Tsunade sat on the porch to her gardens, her eyes watching the form of her son sitting on the lakeshore, sadness shining within her eyes. She had been surprised when she hadn't found him in her arms in the morning, but had found him sitting there. Now it had been a couple of hours since she had woken up, but she hadn't found the nerve to go up to him. Maybe he wanted to be alone. Hell, it wasn't a surprising thought. Even though she would need time after that, it did no good to her nervous eyes and nerves while she watched her son sitting there with his knees pulled up to his chest tightly. Her ears picked up the sound of footsteps and she turned her glance to the side only to see the last person she had expected to see standing there. The Sandame Hokage. Saratobi sensei Her voice showed her confusion to the man who smiled warmly and sat by her side, no longer in his robes, he looked like a simple aged man instead of the most powerful leader in the elemental nations. Gureya told me. He spoke in his ever calm tone and Sanadi didn't need to be told twice what he was talking about. She sat silently, her eyes back upon the unmoving form of her son, when her companion's voice broke her stupor. Do you wish for me to talk to him? He asked, she looked surprised but could see the merit in this idea. He was the best person in this situation to make her troubled child feel alright. He was a walking talking form of experience after all. It would be helpful if you could. She spoke in an uncertain tone only to garner another of those heartwarming grandfatherly smiles from her teacher who got up and walked to the boy silently. May I? He asked but got not as much as a twitch of his whiskers from the boy who sat staring upon the shining water, as if it were the most interesting thing to man. Hiruzen sat by him and felt the breeze hit his withered old skin. What's the matter with Naruto? He broke the silence that had befallen them and saw his eyes dulling even more so than before. She told me she's not my mother. The boy whispered, his voice so defeated it made Hiruzen have concern wash all over him for the boy. He put his hand on the boy's head, making his sad eyes turn into his own old and wise ones. What do you feel about her? He asked the boy, who merely turned his eyes back to the water of the lake. I love her. He spoke as if it were a world-known fact, and Hiruzen smiled at the boy, patting his head to make the boy look at him again. What's the problem then? He asked the boy, who felt silent and looked down again. What if she decides to push me away from her? I am not her son he was stopped when Hiruzen gave his shoulder a hard squeeze and looked at him sternly. Your fears are unfounded my boy. He spoke in a firm tone that held no hesitation whatsoever and pointed a finger to his back, making the boy look back to the pointed place. Just look at her, I know she hasn't moved a muscle since morning while she sits there, worried out of her wits for you. He spoke in a wise and grandfatherly tone, making the boy feel bad for worrying his mother so much. Her tea lays forgotten by her side while she just looks on in worry for her son. The only reason she doesn't come here and pull you in a hug is because she feels you want the space to sort out your mind and as wise an approach as that maybe you both need each other right now. If that isn't love, then what is my boy? He spoke wisely, making the boy nod nervously, he still couldn't feel at peace with this truth. Gigi? The boy whispered, making the fire shadow raise a curious eye at his nervous demeanor. Why did she leave me? He finally asked the thing that had been bugging him since he regained his senses this morning. It burned him up from the inside if something was wrong with him. Hiruzen let out a weary breath and felt the need for the pipe he left back at his office a lot right now. It's not my place to say Naruto. He finally got out and looked sadly at the boy's lumped shoulders who threw a pebble in the water. Is something wrong with me? He whispered, making Hiruzen glance at him sharply. Had he figured it out, it wasn't surprising the boy was quite sharp for his age and with Tsunade's fine nurturing, he wouldn't be surprised if he had. There's a seal on my stomach, Kachan always checks on it whenever I have a nightmare. The boy whispered, lodging another little stone in the rippling water, not seeing Hiruzen's wide eyes and the pit of dread that was forming in his stomach. The nightmare is always about a fox, a nine-tailed fox. I asked her if she knew anything about it, but she always changes the topic and gets nervous, so I looked in Tabarama Oji-san's library for it. It is the nine-tailed fox, the same one that Tu-san defeated all those years ago and has always been seen in the land of fire. 
The boy got out in a soft tone, not seeing Harrison's wide eyes and completely baffled eyes. He figured out that much all on his own. He couldn't help but be shocked at the boy's keen insight. Though it wasn't quite as surprising seeing who his father was and the man's power of keen deduction and insight was second to none. Digi, am I the nine-tailed fox? He asked in a small voice, making Harrison's eyes go even wider in shock. Now he clearly understood why the boy was so troubled when he saw him clutch his legs even more closer to him in agony, while tears threatened to spill from his eyes. No my adorable thing, you're my cute son. Nothing more, nothing less. A soft voice whispered in his ears when he was picked up from behind by a slender pair of arms. I don't want to hurt you. Please tell me. He sobbed in her neck, and she cradled him as if he were made of glass with a soft giggle. She picked his nose within a pinch of her fingers and shook it playfully. The Nine Tails was said to be a walking mass of destruction silly. Wherever he went, mountains were cleaved, a mere flick of his tails was enough to cause tsunamis. If you were the demon himself, then I'd guess everyone would want one in their homes. She whispered, smiling when he clutched her neck and cried softly. She spoke sweet nothing into his whisper while hushing up the crying mess in her arms. Harrison couldn't help but smile from the side. Amazing, to think he was only troubled so as to not hurt his mother. The bond you share with him is truly special Tsunadi. The elder man couldn't help but be happy when he heard the soft sniffled words of the boy who had started to calm down now. I love you Kachan. The boy spoke softly, much to the joy of his blonde mother who perked up with a bright smile and kissed his head tightly. And I love you too, my sweet munchkin. She spoke equally softly and saw him look at her with a teary smile and placed a sloppy kiss upon her cheek, causing her to giggle at the obviously embarrassed boy. Hachan please. He mumbled with a sniff, causing her smile to slip before she held it firm and placed a kiss upon each of his eyes. No you have done nothing bad to anyone, ever. She put her finger upon his lips when he tried to speak up. I'll tell you everything when I think you're ready. You're much too innocent right now Naruto and I want to keep you that way for a while longer. She spoke with a flick of his nose to get a giggle from the tear-cheeked boy. Trust me all right, I only keep it from you because I care for you. All will come in due time. She spoke in her own motherly wise tone, getting a shy nod from the boy who rested his cheek upon her shoulder like always and smiled. Hey I trust you. He whispered honestly and she walked back, signaling her sensei to walk with her which he did so with a silent smile. He knew it wasn't his moment to intrude and Sanadi was glad for the man's presence today. He had gotten her boy to open up his heart and unknowingly tell her everything in the process. His sharp and keen mind wasn't one to be trifled with, that was for sure to her today. Naruto ushered in the warmth his mother emitted in her embrace and curled up in a little ball in her arms. In that moment he knew she was his mother no matter what anyone said and no one could ever change that. Tsunade sat in her personal study, her sensei taking a seat in front of her when he slid out a small scroll from his sleeve and she raised an eyebrow while swiping it off his hands. The official seal of the fire daimyo was one that she recognized all too well and opened it up to scan its contents. It's a summons from the daimyo himself Tsunade. He has called all clan heads to his palace for a gathering along with the rest of the council. He spoke, surprising her to read it herself. She was about to refuse said invitation when he cut her musings short. And he has placed special emphasis that he wishes to meet the Senju clan heir himself. He spoke, sipping upon his team and she merely frowned, rolling back the scroll and putting it aside now that she had read it. Now she remembered what this was, it was the special gathering the fire capital had each decade, and now that she thought about it, it had been a decade since the last time she had visited the capital, Naruto was eight years old himself now. When you say all clan heads, you mean. She spoke uncertainty when he nodded. Yes Kashina shall be attending too, in fact she seems quite adamant to be there. He spoke in a sly suggestive tone that made her outright scowl. Now she knew why Jiraiya had been so pushy over the past few days to have Naruto aware of the truths. He must have known the meeting was upon them and it would lead to this, he wanted her boy to be ready for what came and she cursed herself for not realizing this little fact sooner. Hiruzen knew she wasn't a fan of the redeated Uzumaki clan head and if he had any say about it then he wouldn't have let her near the blonde boy either. But this matter was out of even his hands. The Senju clan held a lot of prestige within the capital, even if their numbers had dwindled down, the respect its predecessors had garnered still stood strong through the tide of time. He didn't know how the daimyo had gotten a sniff that Tsunade now had an heir, which meant the Senju lineage stood strong, since the man didn't ever bother with the affairs of his military village unless absolutely necessary. But now that he did, it was out of his hands. I see, then I think we'll have to attend. She spoke in a bitter tone, not at all fond of the boy, and he merely nodded with a tired sigh himself. The smile and spark of light he had seen in Kashina's eyes when he had handed her the summons had told him there would be no stopping her from searching for the boy and interacting with him at the gathering, no matter how much Tsunade outright despised the thought of her meeting her son. It has suddenly become a precarious situation now. 
but there was another reason why he had come here in the first place. Tsunade, there is a special guest that the daimyo has called for improvement of relations this time. He spoke in his Hokage tone that made her squirm a bit nervously. And who might this be? She asked, as much as she didn't want to. The Sandain Tsuchikage himself is going to be there for peace talks amongst us with his own delegation. He answered tiredly and Tsunade's blood ran cold and her eyes turned wide. What? She whispered in disbelief, but he nodded grimly assuring her she had heard him right. She took a calming breath, pushing down her nerves. It was a small situation right now. His name was no longer a secret and she had no doubt that Kutsuchikage knew of her boy's existence as well. But as much as they might hate his very existence, he would have to be downright suicidal to try something within the fire capital when he was there for delegatory talks. Hell, if she didn't know any better he would be providing a man or two to look after the boy himself. As much as a scratch on him and all fingers would be pointed to Iwa and the might of the whole fire nation and its allies as wrath shall be upon them. Or would ensue within hours, a day at most. She let out a weary sigh in realization. Her boy was going to be the most high-profile guest at the gathering, it was no surprise now that Daimyo had asked for him, though his real intention still lay in a thick mystery to her. She rubbed her temples and thought about the situation at hand. Finally, she had an idea that made a bit of relief wash over her. She stood up, much to hear in surprise, and opened up her drawer to take out her withdrawal slips, with the Fire Nation seals laid upon them. Sensei, what is the cost of an air rank assignment these days? She asked, much to the confusion of Hiruzen who merely decided to answer her question for now. The same as you remembered Tsunade, why is it that you ask? He couldn't help but voice out his confusion which was promptly ignored by the blonde mother whose brush swiftly worked upon the paper, and she finished it off with her signature at the bottom and tore out the check, handing it to the Hokage who took the slip while looking at her questionably. I request an Anbu escort for my son in civilian clothing so as to not look suspicious. She spoke, the slight tone in her voice not lost to the Hokage, who took a moment to realize her words, before his eyes widened in realization, and he smirked. The check slipped into his sleeve and he nodded silently, now seeing her intentions and who it was she wanted to escort the boy with. It shall be done Sanadi, don't you worry. I'll see you at the fire capital then. He said and stood up, getting quite late to get to his office and walked out leaving Sanadi alone, whose smile slipped and concern washed all over her being. Why was the whole world after her son's hide she would never understand. A few weeks later. Within the Senju clan compounds in the fire capital. Tsunade sat upon her dressing table, putting on the final after taking it off her lips in her hair to tie a small loose bun that let her long hair fall gracefully up to her shoulders. Her white kimono, now tied on completely with small blue floral patterns upon the helm of it, that came gracefully down her feet and covered her white heel sandals with leather straps up to her calves that one may say were for looks, but they were more for grip and stability if she needed to do anything rather strenuous. The kimono itself had been tied in a way Kinoichi wore to give her free movement should anything come up. Tsunade sama, I'm ready too. Came the voice of her apprentice, and she let out a smile seeing the girl in a dark green kimono herself. Shizun blushed in embarrassment seeing the sly smile upon her master's lips when she put her cheek upon her palm coyly. Why if I didn't know any better I'd say you were going to manhunt. Was all she could say when Shizun turned beet red and muttered out incoherent denials to her words. She laughed seeing her nervous disposition before her mind picked up on another point. Shizun where's Naruto, he's ready isn't he? She asked her apprentice who blinked and her eyes widened when she realized she had forgotten to check up on the boy while getting too engrossed in her own dress. Sanadi sighed, she could be such a child when it came to these girly things, not that she could blame her. Don't worry Sanadi sama I took care of it. A lazy voice drawled out from the doorway, making her perk up and look at the copy ninja, leaning with his back to the door in a simple white formal shirt and black anbu pants, with his signature face mask upon his face finished with an elegant set of shinobi sandals, good for both looks and utility on his feet. She raised an eyebrow when a mop of blonde hair and baby blue eyes peeked in shyly, as if he were the girl in the room. Kakashi chuckled seeing the boy's nervous eyes and the way he was hiding himself with the door. Um now Naruto, you don't think twice about sparring with me and Jiraiya of the Sanin, but you get afraid of showing your dress to your mother. Kakashi drawled out lazily, surprising the two ladies who merely smiled softly, releasing this was his first formal event, so he was bound to be nervous. What did you get from the stuff we got from him, Kakashi? Sanadi asked in curiosity, remembering the piles upon piles of clothes Shizun and herself had bought and went a bit overboard in excitement, letting him have quite a nice selection to choose from with each color he could think of. Oh. Kakashi rubbed his chin in amusement, his half-lidded eyes looking on in amusement, which did anything but help the boy's nerves. I kept it simple yet elegant as you wanted to Tsunade-sama. Trust me, the ladies will be swooning all over him at the party. He spoke pointedly, making Tsunade's eyes twitch, while Shizun let out a squeal of delight. She couldn't wait to see how her baby brother looked. 
Larry Chan come now, show your knee Chan how you look. She cooed him, embarrassing him even more and slumped when he shook his head and hid himself cutely. Sanadi couldn't help but giggle, these were the moments that never made her wish she was her daughter. The shy mess he was like this at times more than made up for it. Naruto. She called out softly, smiling when she saw him perk up and motioned for him to come to him with her hand. He came out and rubbed his neck while gazing at his feet in embarrassment, these clothes felt nice, but weren't making him any less nervous for the large gathering he was supposed to attend. Shizune and Sanadi's eyes widened while Kakashi merely eye smiled and ruffled the blonde's hair, playfully making them a silky mess coming upon his eyes, while he whined childishly to get him off. He had picked out the silk white kimono shirt tied cleanly and came up to his waist with loose sleeves to go along with the matching anbu black pants that he had no doubt decided to wear after his brother's figure. She couldn't help but giggle seeing his fingerless leather that were no doubt given to him by Kakashi and matching sandals as his brother. The top off all her doubts that his outfit bearing the shirt with the senju symbol embossed on his back was inspired by the copycat beside him was the face mask hanging on his neck that was gifted to him by Kakashi. Hami isn't he adorable? Shizun squealed and Sanadi wiped the tear off the corner of her eyes and nodded. He was indeed adorable in her eyes. My lord, we have two Kakashis. Chuckled the joyful voice of Jiraiya and Naruto turned around with a foxy grin. Hervey Sage. He shouted instantly much to the ire of the man who had him in an one-armed manly hug while he looked at him pointedly. Listen here, there will be a lot of pretty ladies out there. You better not call me that in front of them. He spoke pointedly with a serious gaze much to the confusion of said boy. Call you up Hervey Sage. He asked in a lost voice, making the man in question cry and I'm tears. No respect absolutely for his manly charm he cried with a dark cloud looming over his head in the corner of his room. Tsunade laughed wholeheartedly when he and Kakashi fist bumped at a plan well done, while Kakashi gave him a thumbs up with a wink at finding another apprentice for his cool and hip attitude. You're going to wear that today too Naruchan. Tsunade couldn't help but ask while pointing to his face mask, and he nodded simply pointing to the mask his brother was wearing, making her sigh and nod. She couldn't argue with his point, neither could she deny him anything if he really wanted it. He would melt her instantly with those accursed doe eyes of his she resented and adored so much. Alright then let's go. She spoke finally, getting nods from everyone while she smiled when her little bundle of joy hopped on joyfully by her side, and she took his little hand in her own much to his happiness, it calmed down his nervousness while he was with her. Both walked on ahead towards the fireplace, unknowing of the soft smiles of the three walking behind the pair of blondes, at seeing them whisper small talk to each other, and lost in their own little world. Chapter 10, My Lord, Times Do These Eyes No Justice. Spoke the man, who was, quite arguably, the most influential nobleman among the entirety of Fire Nation. How in the heavens did you manage to retain your beauty, Tsunadi? He asked, rattled by her radiant beauty. Laughing, you don't look that bad yourself, she bashfully commented. Her hand roaming by her waist, she kept a firm hold over a crown of golden hair that was, try as he might, attempting to meld itself behind her legs. Crouching down, the daimyo knitted together his wrinkled eyebrows in deep contemplation, trying to peek behind her and get a good look at the object of her affection, and who do we have here? He questioned, curiosity evident in his voice. His question served to do nothing more than pushing the boy even further behind his mother's legs. Sanadi, seeing his nervousness, couldn't help but blame herself for his shyness, even though she found it utterly adorable. He hadn't seen a play so grandiose in his life, nor had he ever laid eyes on such a large gathering of people, all of whom were eyeing like a piece of meat. She laid the blame partly to herself for his isolated childhood, but more so on those fools who were trying to gauge her child's worth in their minds, by contrast, effectively scaring him out of his wits. Naruto, it isn't polite to ignore a greeting. She scolded him in a soft voice. Nodding, uh, hi. Naruto greeted back equally softly. Blinking, the fire daimyo had to take a moment to realize that was all he was going to get out of the boy for the time being. It's nice too was all the daimyo could before getting interrupted. It was quite annoying to be honest. Yo. Naruto. Blue eyes going wide, Kakashi Nai. Naruto gave a squeal of delight, momentarily foregoing his nervousness in favor of the excitement that stemmed from the depths of his heart. Tsunade had to stumble a bit to keep her balance when he all but bolted right through her grip and her legs. Seeing him rally up to the copy ninja in the blink of an eye, she couldn't help but envy that mask pervert a little. Her boy saw him as God's gift to Earth, Kami knew why, and it didn't help her case any that Kakashi never seemed to push him away like he did for the rest of the underage population back in the Hidden Leaf. But more importantly, for the life of her, she didn't understand why he would willingly shout out to the child he was supposed to protect from afar, when through the corner of her vision, she saw a flash of red pass right through the doors. Golden eyes met a lone smiling one in gratitude, Kakashi gave her a knowing look before taking the bouncing boy by his hand and melting in the sea of people, as if he were never there in the first place. She mentally noted to hand him an extra roll of bills when all was said and done. 
the Sheena quite arguably the bane of her existence had arrived too. Just in the nick of time too, and she also knew she was right because there was not a single other person in this entire world that had that particular shade of red hair like her clan did. Tsunade had inwardly prayed that the Yuzumaki matriarch would miss this gathering through some twist of fate, like she had for the previous eight years or so, due to some urgent business coming in between her trip. Something, a boulder perhaps, falling on her accidentally while she came here wasn't too much to ask from the heavens, either or was it? Time, deep breaths. Shoulders sagging, she did just that to vent out the killing intent she had let loose without thinking. In and out, just like that. Jiraiya told her comfortingly. Well he definitely did favor the redeed a lot more than he did for Tsunade, today he had willed himself to be neutral. No point getting two powerful women with nasty tempers to match, mothers to top it off, getting in a quarrel while he had to somehow get the situation under control, Jiraiya was definitely trying to avoid that. Let it be known people, an angry Tsunade, was a bad Tsunade. A scar on his chest was the undisputed proof to that very claim. His eyes too caught a look at something of note, fine ladies to be exact, and he started tugging her along with him inside to hit on them like the shameless pervert he was, you are hopeless, you know that right. Grumbled Sanadi, knowing full well what he was up to. Looking appalled, what's that supposed to mean, I was just going to get something to eat. Get it, something too. His voice drifted off with a giggle that creeped Sanadi out to no end. You finish that sentence, and I swear to God I'll snap the thing that makes you a man, right off. She commented testily. Gareya visibly shivered at the thought, his hand covering his crotch with a wince, of course. Seeing the fury still present in her eyes, I I'll be good. He supplied meekly. Staring at him for a moment, she nodded and made her way inside to the middle of the gathering, where a lot of people none of which she bothered to remember, were waving and calling her to have a chat with them. Breaking their quarrel in half, should we go inside? The daimyo apprehensively reminded them that he was present as well. Both San and turned sheepish, realizing they had all but ignored the wealthiest man in the lands, their host to boot, completely. Of course. Both supplied in unison. Walking inside, ice formed in Sanadi's chest as to how she would keep the claws of that red-haired demon away from her son from the memory, as to how her little thing had taken to the news of his adoption, the encounter would be nothing short of a disaster. Thoughtful fingers placed on his lips, Naruto looked at the table in front of him and nothing short of a dilemma, what should I pick? He mumbled. Everything served in those plates, be it the various kinds of salads, meats, seafood or the desserts, looked breathtakingly tasty. Had he not been taught the strict mannerisms of eating by his mother, the blonde little thing knew he would have all but devoured this table by now. But that clearly wasn't an option, all eyes were on him, effectively on his mother, and his failures would translate into tarnishing her name. That. Wasn't. Going. To. Happen. Sighing, he went to pick a skewer of lobster when a hand suddenly snatched it away from his sight. Blinking, Naruto nervously smiled at the new person he hadn't noticed up until now standing by side. Hello. He greeted me politely. HN. Well, she's rude. He inwardly surmised. Indeed, the pink-eyed girl by his side, looking to be no more than a couple years older than him, wasn't at all shameful enough at hiding the fact that she hated his guts for some odd reason her furious glare told him that much. Not looking for any trouble or unneeded attention to himself than he already had on him, Naruto went ahead to pick a slice of pork from the table when it too vanished to the plate in the girl's hand. His eyebrows knitted together in utter annoyance, dessert it is. He grumbled. Making his way to the other end of the rather large table, Naruto went ahead to pick up a cup of pudding when that friend of a girl following him snatched that away too. Frown lopsided into a complete scowl, Naruto eyed her in utter disdain. He furiously served a bowl of rice on his plate, since she couldn't take that large of a bowl away in an instant anyway on his plate, before lathering it up with a huge squeeze of mayonnaise on top and making his way to the dining table. Naruto all but slapped down his plate on the table when another plate slapped itself down equally loudly. Groaning, aw oh, come on. He pleaded to the gods above. Do you have some sort of problem with me? He finally asked the million dollar question. The girl actually looked surprised by his outburst for a moment before retaining her obvious scowl, deepening even further now at his rebuttal, maybe. She retorted tightly. Sighing quietly, look, whatever it I've done I'm sorry, okay? He apologized, for Kami knew what. If it got this annoying fiend off his back, let that be that. Picking his spoon up to eat, Naruto stopped midway when she voiced her thoughts out loud, what's your name? She asked coldly. Naruto hadn't expected her to initiate a conversation, as unwanted as it was. It's rude to ask for someone's name before giving your own. He told her in a sing-song voice. The girl looked ready to breathe fire from her nostrils, answered the damn question. She hissed. Naruto lifted his hands up in defense, it's Naruto, okay. No need to make a scene, geez. He sighed. The boy clearly had no idea as to what he had done to revoke her ire on him, maybe this was what his brother figure said was a girl's time of the month whatever that meant. Cheeks flushed, full name. 
she demanded with a slap of her palm. By this moment Naruto had pushed his plate away as his hunger all but subsided, I've had enough of this. He bitterly commented before forcing his hands into his pockets and trying to walk away. The girl clearly wasn't pleased by his dismissal, as was evident when she caught his wrist in a tight grip and forced him back down, don't walk away from me. She replied hotly. Ah oh, come on. She pulled her lips into a thin line, huffing in annoyance. It's Kuritsuchi. She mumbled childishly. What? She pointed the full brunt of her glare down on him. My name, Kuritsuchi, is alright. She told him. Eyes twinkling with mischief, full name. Demanded Naruto. He had to force back a laugh when the girl blanched in fury. I'm Naruto, send you Naruto. He gave her a charming smile while putting out his hand as a gesture of friendship. The girl eyed the hand as if it were poisoned, but shook it nonetheless. Pleasure. She supplied weakly, looking a tad bit embarrassed. No, the pleasure's all mine. This time, the heir to the forests made no attempt to force back his laugh when she glared at him heatedly. It wasn't her furious gaze that choked it out of his throat, oh no, that was quite intimidating. He would dare argue every woman's stare was the same his mother going on top of that list, it was the way her cheeks ripened up like a tomato that did the job. Smiling tentatively, friends. Naruto asked, his head cocking aside while her eyes followed the slight flail his golden locks made with the eyes of a hawk. Friends it is. She told him apprehensively. Poking her food absentmindedly, her pink eyes glanced at him every now and then, while he worked the rice into his mouth without a care in the world. Here. She emptied half the contents on her plate onto his own. Surprised, thanks. Naruto thanked her nonetheless. Her face lit up like a Christmas tree when he started munching down on his plate. I'm the granddaughter of the Tsuchikage. She stated proudly, nose high in the air. Good for you. She almost fell flat on her face when he said that so carelessly, the Tsuchikage. As in the leader of the Hidden Stone Village. She told him, waving her hands to show him the importance of his title. Great. His offhand remark made her eyes twitch, he looked way too busy with his food for her liking. Huffing, she started choking down the delicacies down her throat with a new fervor. Glaring at him sideways, you know, I may she remarked with a mouthful of salad. Must be great, huh? Slapping down her spoon and doing the same for him, she ignored his protests while snatching away the plate from his hands. Stop eating for a second and listen to me, damn it. She hated being ignored. No one ever had the gall to ignore her, especially after she had told them who she really was. This damned blonde thing was ignoring her in favor of slowly stuffing down on his food without a care in the world. Can't we do this after we've eaten? Guritsuchi gave him a look, borderlining on a deadpan, no. She told him dryly. Staring down in nervousness and giving her whole attention to the half-eaten plates in her hand, don't you even care who I am? She asked him, a bit on the softer side. Naruto didn't even realize the need for thinking, not really, no. He stated in a matter-of-fact tone. Not even bothering to look up, she pushed his plate back and went back to her routine of poking her food absentmindedly. Idiot. Her whisper was all but ignored by the boy, who went back to stuffing his food as soon as it was handed back to him. He was an enigma to her, even the highest of nobles from an enemy nation here, had made way for her, as soon as her familial ties were made known. Most, especially the ones who didn't have the courage, had pulled back from her like the plague. All those who did try to keep her on a pedestal so as to earn an unasked favor from her side. She wasn't stupid, she knew her family was powerful, and being powerful was everything back home. But a small little talk without that would be nice, more so at a place where she knew no one, and no one knew her. She might even make a friend that she could forget as soon as she had left. This airhead is too engrossed in his food to even notice me. She raged inwardly. Still, talking to someone who saw her as a person wasn't harming her, right, so, are you a ninja? She asked, curiosity evident in her voice. Nope. Her shoulders deflated considerably, great. Another noble civilian. She muttered. No wonder he was such an airhead, she mused with a quirk of her lips. How old are you? She asked, attempting to make a conversation that didn't end with him saying two or three words before ending it. I'm eight. Naruto confessed briefly. She visibly perked up hearing that, they were only two years apart in age, that wasn't much in the ninja world, I'm ten. She told him. You're old. I'm not old. She rebutted, appalled by his insinuation. If anything, you're little. She retorted hotly. Naruto stopped eating as soon as the words had flown off her lips, I'm not little. He replied, anger evident in his voice. His height had always been a touchy subject, every child back in the village near their estate was taller than him too. It didn't help that his mother always called him her little troublemaker too. He wasn't tall, that was all. Chibi she teased him with a giggle, poking playfully at his whiskers. Don't call me that. Chibi, chibi, chibi. Naruto couldn't help but puff his cheeks up in annoyance, being the child that he was, Bob cut. He said the first thing that came to his mind. Though he smiled in triumph when her annoying jingle ended prematurely, what did you just call me? She asked dangerously. 
Not being one to shy away from a challenge, Bob cut. Naruto egged her on. Why you? A third voice cut their banter in half, would you be kind enough to offer a seat to this old man, oh my back. The new voice shrieked. Naruto winced when he heard the audible noise of spine clacks coming from the old man. Getting up and being the medical apprentice he was, here, let me help you sir. He offered kindly. No, that isn't. Placing his palm on the small of his back, Naruto had to thank this weird old man's really small height that made this all the more easier, sir, I'll count to three before pulling you up. So bear with me, alright. He asked the old man who was on the verge of rolling on his knees. Huffing, whatever. The old man grumbled. Naruto smiled, he had seen far too many senior citizens as his patients, most of them being grumpy at first before they warmed up to him. The same ones that his mother kept throwing at him in exchange for all the young female patients back home. Now that he thought about it, he had yet to ask her the reason as to why she did that, he reminded himself to ask her that soon, one, Naruto started to count. I don't need any help getting up. Two, taking a deep breath, the old man waited for the last number to arrive when Naruto's palm forced a burst of warmth in his back. Kami. The man shrieked, clearly not expecting this new development. Grandpa. Naruto blinked at the weird girl he had met moments ago, before his mind clicked and he realized that they were related. He's your grandfather. Naruto asked, oblivious to all the horrified stares being pointed his way. What have you done to my, hey? Anoki whispered, moving his waist in circles with a newfound ardor. It doesn't hurt anymore. He whispered in amazement, bouncing up and down like a beach ball. Say what? Kuritsuchi shrieked in shock, reclining at Naruto with all her nefariousness. Did you mess with his mind too? Who are you, kid? Sighing, Naruto had to choke down on the fact that everyone here was awfully rude. No one ever bothered to greet each other nicely, they more or less always demanded his name, Naruto. He's Naruto old man, what was your last name again? Kuritsuchi answered on his behalf. Sighing again, Senju. Naruto muttered offhandedly and started dusting off his clothes. The man he had treated had a lot of dirt on him for some odd reason, what name did you just say? Anoki whispered, his face white as a ghost. Hey, old man. Kuritsuchi asked in a worried tone. Anoki had turned ghastly white for some odd reason. What's wrong, does it hurt? She softly consoled him, rubbing soothing circles on his back. So you are the Senju kid, eh? Shrugging off his granddaughter, Anoki stood eye level with him and only now paid full attention to this intriguing child. You certainly have her hair and looks, I'll give you that. He contemplated, rubbing his chin pensively. Naruto fiddled when he saw all the states being leveled over him, as soon as that man had spoken his name out loud, everyone had turned their eyes on him. So much for trying to stay under the radar, he thought tiredly. Naruto had to squirm a bit when the weird man he had treated started walking circles around him, looking to be deep in thought, mom. The words flew off his mouth involuntarily. His throat sounded hoarse and for some odd reason, his vision was misty. Feeling some wetness trailing down his cheeks, am I, crying. He mumbled to himself, swiping off the tears with the back of his hands. His heart was screaming danger at him. Forcing his way through the crowd, Kakashi came to the scene of his charge standing at the center of all the commotion with the last person he should have been face to face with, standing right by his side. To top things off with a cherry on top, his little brother in all but blood was trembling like a dry leaf. Mom. Warm arms embracing him from behind, Naruto let himself be collected in the familiar softness he had become accustomed to as a child. Almost every woman in the crowd, save for one, squealed in delight at the scene unfolding before their eyes. Hush, I'm here. Soft cops doing their tricks, Sanadi rocked her baby back and forth to try and calm him down. He was nigh on the verge of hyperventilating, she knew she shouldn't have brought him here in the first place. Mom. He cried. Those voices were everywhere, those vile and ugly, let's go home. People here were funny for some reason, Naruto could feel the animosity rolling off of them in waves, vividly clear. They all pointed at him too, unlike back home, these people weren't nice at all. His gut was telling him, take me home, mom. He all but begged her. Placing a comforting peck on the side of his head, okay. She agreed instantly. She could surmise what had happened, it was what she had been afraid of. Her boy's senses were too damn sharp, these bastards weren't hiding their intentions to help her case. My lady. Turning around, Sanadi acknowledged her apprentice with a simple nod of her head. We are leaving Shizun. She told her. W what Shizun sputtered, now. She shrilled. Eyes turning into slits, now. Sanadi told her, voice cold and firm. Her heels clicked audibly while she made her way out, the nobles and shinobi alike, giving the ferocious-looking woman all the space she needed. On her way out, she did have the luck of running into just the person she wanted to see. Tsunade-chan. Hiruzen entered with his envoy in tow, you're leaving already. He recoiled when he saw the hatred with which he was glared at. I told you. She poked his chest with her finger, her lip trembling. Each poke felt like a dagger when combined with her legendary strength, what has happened? He demanded. 
to make her night on the verge of crying, the fire shadow wasn't in any mood for mercy to whoever it was who had made her this way. Be it Kashina or otherwise, it was his word that his lone female student had trusted and placed her faith in to come here. Had the culprit been anyone, especially someone he had no connection to, he gave the signal to his own envoy to take up their arms. Heads would roll today. Rubbing the sleeping boy's head calmly and looking on sadly when Sanadi pulled him away as if his touch itself was poisonous for her child, who was it? He asked, voice as kind and wise as it always was. Everyone. She whispered. His eyes widened in realization, did he read them? Intentions. She completed his sentence for him, yes, he did. She told him. I'm sorry. Sanadi said nothing more, rushing past him as if he wasn't even important to her anymore which he actually wasn't. A voice called out from behind her, a voice that made steps quicken their pace even more considerably than before. For, there was no other person that possessed that irritating way of talking apart from one woman, Sanadi, wait Tebane. Said woman had half a mind to just snap her neck in half and be done with it. Get the fuck out of my way, damn it. Snarled Aridid, her hair splitting up into nine equal parts behind her back. Kashina, please understand. Reason Jiraiya. Uffing, understand what? She snapped. Rubbing his aching temples, I can't let you meet Sanadi, don't you get that? She eyed him as if he was the one who was being ridiculous here. Why the hell not? Because she doesn't want to see you. Deadpan Jiraiya. I'm not here to see her either. She retorted right back. Raising an eyebrow in utter amusement, oh. Sang Jiraiya, crossing his arms tightly. Then who might you be here to see? He innocently inquired. You know damn well who, now get out of my way. As soon as she went to push him aside, what's with all the commotion here? Ask a new voice. Yurea's eyes went wide, Tsunadi. He muttered, shocked to the core. In all the years he had seen her, she had never once left her son's side when he was sick or in some way troubled, this was clearly not expected. His hopes of seeing Kashina off without an argument were looking bleak at best. How's Naruto? He asked, worry etched clearly on his face. He's asleep. Tsunadi answered tightly, eyeing Kashina the whole time. What happened to him? Asked a repeat in question. Tsunadi's eyes would have shamed a lioness, that's none of your concern she said dismissively. Seeing her getting riled up, he's my son, I can take care of him thank you very much. She nailed the final nail in the coffin. The look of utter despair on Kashina's heart made Jiraiya look away, but he didn't say a word, it just wasn't his place. This meeting had been a long time coming. The Yuzumaki era sputtered, flustered beyond belief. You don't have to be so mean, Tsunadi. She rambled on. Cocking an eyebrow, mean. She sounded incredulous, what are we, five? You know damn well what I mean. Ladies, Jiraiya interrupted, though the reaction had been anything but friendly. What? Both women snapped equally angrily. Raising his hands up as a sign of peace, it seems you haven't noticed, but we are making a scene. He pointed to the states being leveled at them by the other residents in the hotel. Let's take this somewhere more private, shall we? He suggested kindly. No need, Sanadi ended that equally kindly, I was just going to see my son. She all but hissed the last part. Kashina's flinch was reciprocated by the toad sage, make yourself home. Sanadi said, pointing to the door exiting the lobby. Kashina was anything but pleased, she was seen red, listen here you, I've had enough of your attitude. I came here to negotiate, but all you've been doing, negotiate. Sanadi interrupted, sounding interested all of a sudden. Kashina calmed down considerably seeing her listen to reason, uh, yeah. She mumbled. Alright, let's go down to the restaurant. Gureya blinked, even Kashina had to pinch her arm to believe the sudden change of demeanor the blonde woman had gone through. Come on, let's make haste. Sanadi clapped chirpily. Not being one to look up a gift in a horse's mouth, Kishino obliged happily. Gureya, though, had a feeling of foreboding. Stay nearby, will you? He said to no one in particular. Of course, came Kakashi's instant reply from behind, the man giving his classic one-fingered salute. So, Sanadi started the conversation, plopping her elbow on the table and her cheek in her palm. You were willing to negotiate, weren't you? She asked. Uh, yeah. Kashina replied apprehensively, still not used to the soft and kind tone she was being offered out of the blue. What is it you want? Sanadi asked, money, jewels. Property perhaps. She offered, taking a small sip of water from her glass. W what? For negotiations, of course. Sanadi sang in a matter-of-fact tone. Kashina couldn't utter a word, so baffled was she with her confusing words, is it my family's techniques then? Sanadi pressed on, listen, just name the price. She stated. Price, Kashina mumbled, tucking a stray lock behind her ear. She was confused beyond belief as was evident by her lost face. Jiraiya, who was sitting on the sidelines, didn't like where this was heading one bit. He had an inkling of suspicion as to what Sanadi was negotiating, more or less. Sanadi, what are you saying? And yet, he dared to ask in place of Kashina whose words weren't forming a coherent sentence. 
Tsunade eyed him as if he was stupid. To leave Naruto alone, what else? She flatly said. I'm willing to negotiate whatever taking her collar in her hand. Why you? Kishina snarled as soon as her words made sense, who the hell do you take me for? Don't let all that money and influence get to your head, Tsunade. I'm not willing to negotiate with my son. She hissed. Your son slapping her hand aside, I thought all you had were two daughters. Looking as if struck by acid, tears trickled the corner of Kishina's eyes. H he's my son. I carried him for ten months, give him back to me, you wench. She hiccuped. Tsunade's eyes narrowed, carried for ten months, and abandoned in ten minutes. She retorted icily. He is my son now, in heart and soul don't you dare assume otherwise, you bitch. She bit right back. I've had enough of this charade. Kishina shouted, leaking the full brunt of her killing intent that made Jiraiya's hair perk up. Uzumaki ceiling style, Kishina don't you do it. Shouted Jiraiya. Adamantine chains. Glowing chains of pure chakra construct flew out the sleeves of her blouse, going straight ahead to pierce Tsunade and be done with it. Tsunade slammed her heel on the edge of the table and bounced back with a burst of chakra at the last possible minute. Ashina, stop this already. Jirei all but begged, pumping up his chakra and readying himself to restrain her if necessary. Kakashi raised the cloth to his hidden Sharingan just in time to see Tsunade's foot lodge itself in the foot of a table that made her go off balance for a moment and caused her to trip on her floor. Ashina's relentless chains destroyed all furniture in their path and made their way for the fallen Senju matriarch. Damn it. I've gone soft over the years. Tsunade mentally raged. Honestly, it was almost shameful to trip over something of all things for Shinobi, but her years as a mother and doctor hadn't been kind to her fighting senses at all. The only combat she had seen was the little spar she and Naruto had every now and then. Speaking of which, wide baby blue eyes watched Kashina's relentless assault make its way towards his mother in pure horror. On instincts alone, he pushed Chakra to the soles of his feet and launched himself right in between the chains and his defenseless mother. Tsunade readied herself to take the full brunt of Kishina's attack head on and returned to the fight after healing herself knowing full well she was built like a tank that way. What she hadn't expected was a golden blur to blind her momentarily and take a protective guard in front of her. Naruto spread his legs apart and clasped his hands in a bird seal, erecting a water wall out of thin air to stop those chains. Kishina's chains all but annihilated his still imperfect defense and resumed on their path with an added fervor. Naruto stumbled back seeing he hadn't so much as slowed down that attack. Naruto, what are you doing? Get out of the way. Tsunade shouted. Clenching his eyes shut, the boy cursed himself for not even being able to help his mother a little in her time of need. Naruto could feel his blood pumping, as much as he wanted to run and hide, some words rang clear as a bell in his mind. Only use its power to protect someone yourself from danger or someone you hold precious. He knew he hadn't perfected it, it could very well blow up and backfire instead. But, if I can't do it now, when the hell will I do it? Holding out his left hand, a swirling noise, one that hadn't been heard in more than eight years, filled the momentarily silent halls completely. Blue energy came to life and started closing in on itself within the palm of its hand. Tsunade, Jiraiya, Kakashi even Kashina's eyes went wide, seeing the familiar blue ball of death slowly forming in the boy's palm. Kashina tried to stop her assault, but her realizations came too late, she knew she would hit him head on. The chains circled together and formed a spear, Naruto's calm and calculating eyes held naught but a hint of fear and were the same ones they had all seen countless times before. Humping his arm back, Naruto readied his attack and pushed it straight ahead at the last possible moment, Rasengan. He howled in agony as the imperfect technique pushed and fought back with Kishina's chain in a battle of strengths. Just as it looked as if Naruto was winning and pushing her attack back, the blue ball of chakra closed in on itself and exploded, throwing Naruto back, crashing into a wall. The whole restaurant and its four residents stood still, unbelieving of the twist of unexpected events that had rolled out in mere moments, right before their eyes. The silence itself was deafening, and just as the dust settled, Naruto's bloodied and torn form came into view from the crater he had created in the wall. Golden eyes leaking silent tears, only one shout broke the unnerving silence with a scream of agony. Naruto. Chapter 11. Tsunade shook off the cobwebs from her mind and all but crawled like an infant towards her downed boy with all her accumulated haste. Seeing him within arm's length, however, made her mind go blank. Barely even breathing, in all her years of seeing him grow up, she had never seen him look so frail so quiet. As if afraid her mere touch might hurt him, she hesitantly caressed his whiskers and Naruto. Her whisper served to break Jirei off his trance, who himself all but stumbled down by Naruto's side. Kami, he breathlessly spoke. Swirling burns encased Naruto's arm like a web, as if they were a part of him. For a moment, and just for a moment, Jiraiya blamed himself for having played any part in teaching the boy of eight an air ank assault technique. Just as he was about to touch Naruto's arm to inspect it, his hand was harshly slapped away with a strength that caused his skin to redden. Don't touch him. Tsunade all but hissed in fury. 
Carefully, as softly as one might pluck a feather, she collected her son's torn form in her arms and nuzzled her nose in his hair. My baby. She sobbed thickly. A mom. Eyes napping open, Naruto. She couldn't believe her eyes. His eyes, hazy and dazed, were trying as they might to focus on her. I'm here. She told him. Are you ugh, coughing weakly, and much to Tsunade's displeasure, all right. He whispered. Tears she had been holding back broke free, she laughed lifelessly, how can I be all right, silly. She choked. How can I be fine when my life is right here, barely even conscious. Even in his near unconscious state, Naruto couldn't help but laugh out a pain giggle, I think I'm gonna sleep, mom. He told her, his own vision darkening. Kissing his eyes clean off their tears from the pain he had endured, you go do that. I'll be here until you wake up, all right. She softly cooed him, glad he was all right. He said nothing more, merely nuzzling himself in her ample bosoms and drifting into blissful unconsciousness. Ureya, she called out to him. Do me a favor, will you? What is it? Take Naruto to his room, she told him, carefully placing him in his arms. Jiraiya hesitated, dreading what she was about to do. Sanadi. He tried to argue. Take him upstairs, now. Seeing she was in no mood to argue, he did just that and signaled Kakashi to do the same. The masked man was shocked, but knew when not to argue and followed him wordlessly. Both dared to look back, only to flinch on seeing Tsunade's hawk-like eyes still trained on them, warning them to walk away and never look back. Both were smart enough to do just that, it was beyond their hands now. One way or another, there was going to be a fallout they would have to clear up later. Better it would be, if they weren't with broken bones and ruptured arteries, when the time came to clean up the mess that was, no doubt, about to be made. Getting up from her knees with a heaved sigh, Tsunade leveled a look on the frozen redeed that would have repulsed the reaper himself, you. She snarled, looking ready to breathe fire from her nostrils. Kashina blinked, her own eyes widening. I, I didn't mean T2, it was an accident. Kashina nearly got beaten to the punch by Tsunade, literally, when Tsunade's fist passed harmlessly by her ear and created a push of air that drilled a hole in the opposite wall. I swear Tsunade, I would never hurt him intentionally. Tears were already leaking down her cheeks by this time. The thought of hurting the very boy she was trying to win over was flashing through her mind like venom. The seal on her forehead breaking free, Tsunade tore off her kimono from the knee down and threw it aside, cracking her neck and knuckles in preparation for her onslaught. Does it look like I care? Before Kashina could so much as think of a retort, Tsunade was already in front of her, one heel pivoting on the ground with the other making its way to the Ritid's jaw. Kashina wasn't stupid enough to try and block that brute force of nature Tsunade called a kick and was right in her thoughts when that very kick created yet another shockwave that blew off some furniture by their sides. What she wasn't prepared for, however, was a chakra-infused palm to meet her face with an audible smack, square on her cheek. Flung aside like a rag doll, Kashina just had enough time to collect her bearings and, he's my son, I want, that had clearly been the wrong thing to say, since as soon as the third word flew off her lips, Sanadi saw red. Flying through hand seals, lightning style, she muttered, making Kashina's eyes go wide in horror. She hadn't even heard of the female San and ever using elemental ninjutsu before. Opening her palms at the front of her chest, Sanadi lamented for a moment before whispering, electromagnetic murder. Waves over waves of electricity cackled out from her palms, engulfing the entire hall within it with a deafening silence, before a huge blast shook the entire fire capital awake. Everything, be it wooden, steel, or otherwise was thrown out the other end of the restaurant like paper balls. Many gasps of shock went around her as Tsunade walked out from the non-existent wall of the hotel into the streets of town. She knew that wasn't nearly enough to take a Kinoichi of Kashina's caliber out of battle, and rightly so, mere moments later, chains upon chains of chakra broke her free off the rubble and hurled it straight at Tsunade. It was all your damn fault, everything is your fault. Kashina's wail of agony didn't even serve to phase Tsunade, the annoyed mother who was looking up at the sky and the humongous amounts of rubble coming down from above with nothing short of amusement. Yin seal, release. She dropped her fist, her head tilted down to stare at the ground and shadowed her eyes from Kashina's point of view. The people around her screamed and begged for Tsunade to move away, thinking she was frozen out of sheer fright and rooted helplessly in place. Tsunade was anything but helpless though, without ever looking up, she let her fist go up and unleashed the full brunt of her chakra, effectively creating a shockwave that turned all the falling rubble to dust in midair. Looks of awe and admiration ignored, Tsunade glared at Kashina with the intensity of magma. Both Kanoichi glared each other down in a battle of stares and intimidation, upping their chakra for the battle that was about to go down. When all of a sudden, that's enough. The abrupt bark made them break free of their reveries, both women turning their heads to glare at the source of that annoyance and sheer trite. Kashina almost flinched when she saw just who it was, and the unbound hatred he was leveling her with for the first time, stand down, the both of you. Barked Hirazan, looking to be in no mood for pleasantries. 
retreating back her chains when Sanadi pursed her lips into a thin line and let her molded chakra die down with a throb of air circling around her, the Yuzumaki heiress fell down on her knees from sheer exhaustion mental and emotional being the most prominent. Do you two have any idea what you have done? Hiraz embarked angrily, how has it made us, the ones people here were supposed to look up to, seem like? He questioned in fury. You had better have had a damn good explanation. Naruto's arm nearly got torn off. Silence befell the area, the look Hiruzen gave Tsunade was almost comical. Essay what? He asked, perturbed. She gave him the same look of hatred she had leveled Kishina with mere moments ago, your esteemed guest from the leaf, attacked my child in broad daylight. You had better be ready to compensate, Hiruzen Saratobi, for I am in no mood for apologies. Tsunade bit right back. Hiruzen couldn't believe his ears, as far as he knew, there was no way she could. Hey Kishina, tell me this is all just a misunderstanding. He begged. Seeing shimmering drops dripping down her nose, his heart sank. It was an accident, I didn't mean to. Cried Kishina. Pinching the bridge of my nose, I'm getting too old for this, Hiruzen muttered tiredly, sighing near the end. Tsunade-chan, called a new voice, one that made said woman cock an eyebrow. Go tend to your air, you have my word anyone won't bother you again for the remainder of your stay. The steel in his voice didn't surprise her as much as to who it was who had said that. Daimyo-sama, I can't just let her. Such little faith in your host, you wound me Tsunade-chan. Pressing her lips in a tight line, Tsunade knew she had lost in his battle of words the moment he had said that. It wasn't his jokingly made promise that made her back down, it was the thought of reaching her fallen angel that made her turn around and run right back to her room. But right before going out of sight, Tsunade rummaged through her sleeve and took out a booklet. Biting her thumb, she signed the paper with her bloodied nail and tore off the slip, all but throwing in the direction of the daimyo's face, without a thought of fear, for the damages and repercussions, fill the amount yourself. She told him icily and walked away. The daimyo watched her trudge back with a saddened gaze, he kept quiet for her demeaning tone, for her anger wasn't unfounded today. This event had taken place on his soil, when she was his guest no less. Turning around with the click of his fan, bring her with us, I'd like to have tea with the Yuzumaki. He spoke in a tone that left no room for arguments. The trio of fire guardians behind him went on to carry out their orders, and Hiruzen let out a sigh of relief. The fallout had been contained to a much smaller degree than it would have been had his or the daimyo's interference been mere minutes later. Just as he was about to thank the heavens for his luck, you come to Hokage, this concerns you just as much as it does her. The daimyo told him in an all-too-knowing tone. Hiruzen cursed his luck, just when he thought everything was going smoothly, he was the one who would have to clean up this mess. He really was getting too old for this shit. Now Kashina-chan, I won't ask for an explanation as to what occurred back there. He but, it wasn't. Raising his hand up to quiet in her desperate pleas, he shook his head wearily. Whatever it was that has happened, happened on my soil. She was an esteemed guest of mine, just as you are, or any other person here is. He told her with the wizened tone of an owl. His tone alone made her bow down her head while he took a sip of tea from his cup. She was the one who taunted me, I wasn't in the wrong this time. She told him in a small voice, sounding hesitant herself. Be that as it may, it was her air that was harmed not yours. Her flinch made his face soften before it hardened considerably more. You will go to see her again and apologize for your actions. Her eyes widening, she almost scoffed when he continued and in no way would you try to go near her son. Today or for the remainder of your time at the capital. Am I making myself clear? That's completely unreasonable. Vishina, here is in warned her, quieting down her appeals at once. You will not meet Naruto, he told her, and seeing the fury in his eyes, unless he wants to meet you himself. Words dying down in her throat, she gave him an odd look. Even Daimyo himself looked interested. Why would he wish to meet her after this little fiasco? Daimyo was the one who asked the million dollar question. Here is inside, his wrinkles deepening. He will meet her, trust me on this. He knew the boy and the father whose blood ran strong in him, enough to know that he would demand closure for this with a reteed. Face to face, no less. Will he meet me? Kashina demanded hopefully, her voice tender and caring. Seeing her desperate eyes clinging on to her last hopes, Hiruzen didn't have the heart to dash them and make them turn lifeless. Yes, he will. But unless he approaches you himself, you will not force yourself on the Senju family any more than what is necessary for a simple apology, do you understand? I, I understand. The daimyo clapped joyfully, marvelous. He laughed. Now that this fiasco is done and over with, there is the matter of some reparations I wish to make on behalf of Tsunade Chan Hiruzen shot him a dirty look. Tsunade would rather die than even take a penny worth of change from the village, be it any reason whatsoever. She loathed the village with a passion. Civilians were scum when it came to money-related affairs, Hiruzen cursed his luck for the second time that day. Time came and went, two days passed in what seemed to be mere hours. 
the usually lively annual gathering at the capital, had turned into a quiet affair, as soon as word of those violent events taking place between the oldest of allied families had reached various ears. How is he doing? Jurea asked, for what seemed like the millionth time. Sanadi had all but locked him and herself up in his room like a princess in those old tales. Right after kicking him out of that room no less. Needless to say, it was disgraceful for the toad sage to be treated that way if he were to be honest. Though, after years of being manhandled by nearly half the female population of this world, he was, quite honestly, used to it. He is doing rather well, Shizun told him. Lady Tsunadi is still keeping him in an induced coma though. She told the man, easing his worries a little. They ease his pain, I guess. Shizun nodded sadly, yes, his wounds were rather severe. Being the bouncy bundle of joy he is, he might have reopened his. Shizun trailed off. Yeah, I get the gist. Jiraiya waved her off. Inside the room though, was an entirely different matter altogether. Tsunadi's eyes fluttered, blinking off the tears she willed back forcefully for the tenth time. Placing her fingers on his forehead, she forced in a pinch of lightning chakra to jolt his senses awake. It would have been better to let him sleep for a day or two more, but her heart was demanding that she see his shining eyes and twinkling smile once more. Wake up. She cooed, brushing the hair off his eyes that were clenching themselves awake. Tiny arms gathering around her neck, she collected him in her arms, being extra careful for his bandaged arm. Ma. He whispered, his voice raspy. She ran soothing circles down his back, forcing more and more medical chakra down his coils than what was necessary to dull his pain. Breaking free off the hug, she saw his lidded eyes barren with confusion. When his little palm swiped the wetness off her cheeks, only then did she realize her silent tears were confusing him to no end. I'm just happy, silly. She told him. Seeing him regaining his senses completely as his eyes widened themselves awake, she nuzzled her nose on his own, eliciting those soft giggles from his mouth. Mom, stop it. Laughing herself, she cupped his cheek with a smile and took in his features. You shouldn't have done that, Naruto. I could take care of myself, you know. Her voice lacked any energy behind her words, and Naruto felt bad for making her feel that way. He still didn't know why he had done what he had, but it felt right at the moment. Why did you jump in front of me like that, Naruto? She asked tearfully. Looking ashamed, Naruto averted his eyes, I I don't know. I knew I wasn't no match for that woman or that you needed any help. But when I saw her attacking you like that, I was scared of mom. He told her shakily. Scared of what, munchkin? I don't want to lose you, mom. He whimpered, hugging her for dear life. Hey, she kissed his side, why would you do that if you were so scared? Naruto's eyes went hazy, his mind replaying those horrifying events again, I don't really know mom. At that moment, blood started pumping into my head. When I was in front of you, trying to block that attack I was scared, but I wasn't arg he scratched his head, knowing how stupid he sounded. I couldn't run away mom, not when you were right behind me. She had no words to put her thoughts into, Sanadi had never been so proud in her life. Though, Kuzo. Naruto shrieked as proceeded to pinch his butt with her legendary strength. It was stupid, and you are grounded for three months, young man. Naruto broke the embrace, looking horrified, WHAT he wailed. Sanadi huffed and looked away, faking annoyance. You'll be eating green vegetables for the whole period of time, training twice as hard. Her words died down when Naruto's little fingers covered her lips like a veil, Mom, he choked, looking troubled beyond belief. I I have a favor to ask. He whispered. The look on his face made Tsunade's heartache, she all but melted in a pile of goo. Her anger dying down, what's the matter, sweetie? She questioned him tenderly, stroking his puffed up cheek out of the force of habit. Drain me. Tsunadi blinked, and she blinked again before repeating it several times to comprehend she had actually heard him correctly. But I am training you, no. Tsunadi had never heard him raise his voice before, and the way he was gnawing away at his lip, she had a dreading idea as to where this was heading. I was so weak, I felt so pathetic. She tried to hush him up, to tell him the difference between him and a seasoned ninja like Ishina was only natural to do anything to stop her bundle of joy from breaking down right before her eyes. What good am I, when I can't even protect the ones I hold precious? That was all he said, before breaking down in a fit of thick sobs, the bed she clenched tightly in his fists while he started bawling his eyes out. Sanadi flailed her arms around, trying to make funny faces to make him stop his painful cries, doing so to the point of looking hysterical. But it served to do nothing more than making his wails grow even louder than before. WHA. Reaching forward, she tried to hold him in a hug when he started fighting back with all his might. Surprised, nonetheless she shook away his arms and forcefully clutched him in her chest. Hush up, you. She whispered, holding him in her arms while the fight slowly left his body. Whether it was exhaustion, pain, or even hopelessness, Sanadi didn't know. Her eyes roamed around to see the floor around them cracked, no doubt from the burst of chakra he must have let loose unknowingly. Drain me, mom. 
This sentence, coupled with a hiccup, served to make her heart give way, and she knew she was way too mushy right now to make a coherent decision. Curse him and those adorable blue eyes, all right. She sighed in defeat. Blinking and looking as though he hadn't been on the verge of having a mental breakdown seconds ago, really? He asked chirpily. Laughing, she wiped the wetness off his cheeks while he did the same for hers, really. She told him. Naruto eyed her suspiciously, you promise? He asked her, pointing his little finger at her. Sanadi shook her head and circled her own finger around his, I promise. She said. Naruto's smile would have blinded a Hayuga, he started waving the interlocked fingers up and down, while singing a makeshift chant Sanadi had made up years ago, to keep him off the alcohol shelf in their house. So busy was he in focusing on his chant, that he didn't notice Sanadi's loving gaze staring at him longingly. She collected him in her arms and kissed his head, snuggling her cheek in his scently soft hair. Don't ever change, Naruto. Huh? Nothing, just stay still. Having no idea what else to do, Naruto figured his mother had gone into what he called bear mode, where she would clutch him for god knows how long until she was satisfied for the day. So he clutched her back for dear life and took in the soft scent of lilies she emitted to his heart's content. Five years, she muttered. Naruto blinked, breaking free of the hug to look at her in honest confusion, with a subtle tilt of his head. I'll teach you all that I can in five years. By the time you turn 13, there will be nothing left for me to teach you. She told him knowingly, quite enjoying the way his face lifted up to give way for that blinding grin of his. Dry as she might, her attempts at keeping his childhood as sheltered as possible were failing horribly. So, the least she could do was train him and turn him into the kind of man she knew he could become. The kind of shinobi who could roam these hell-forsaken lands as he pleased, without the slightest amounts of fear for anything whatsoever. That thought did rile her up a bit, the stronger he got, the more free-spirited he would become. She knew when his mind was made up, there wasn't a way in hell he wouldn't go forth to pluck it and hold it in his hands. What if, someday, he decided to? As if sensing her darker train of thoughts, mom. She blinked out of her stupor and gave him an owlish stare, unbelieving of his understanding gaze. I won't leave you, ever. He told her. It took her a moment to comprehend how keen his senses were, before she nodded with a smile. I won't let you either. Eyes twinkling with mischief, is that right? He mocked her humorously. She matched his look with a cat-like grin of her own. Why you, come here. She laughed, forcing him back into the comforters, while her fingers started their assault under his arms. Naruto tried to paw her away with tears of joy prickling his ducks, only to have all his limbs swatted away harmlessly by her bear-like form towering over him. Their little banter ended when Naruto's entire body went rigid and his eyes stared coldly in the direction of the door. Before Tsunade could so much as utter a word, she's here, again. Naruto almost repulsed at the look of murder that crossed through his mother's face. He caught her wrist before she could go for the door and solve this matter once and for all, she is sad, mom. I don't think she's here to attack us or something. The uncertainty in his voice made her will waver, she knew him well enough not to underestimate his power at sensing people's intentions. I'll talk, go talk to her, all she could utter before Tsunade's face was inches from his own, her eyes as cold as the iciest of glaciers, you'll do no such thing, you hear me. She hissed, not even ashamed at the tone she was taking with him. Mom, I have to talk to her. Absolutely not, you can be with me the whole time, he suggested, making words die down in her throat. She could see it in his eyes, that stubbornness which screamed he would meet her one way or the other. Sighing, all right, if I'll be there the whole time. She agreed in defeat. Plopping down the bed, Naruto took her hand in his own little one and tugged her along to the door. Had he looked behind, he would have seen the look of utter despair on the buxom blonde's face while a thousand questions raged in her mind. As they walked through the hallways, her palms were sweating already. What if she tells him who she is? Would it affect what we have? Will it hurt him in any way? Each step she took, this was looking to be more and more of a bad idea. Stopping prematurely and effectively doing the same for him, Naruto, let's get you back. She told him in a voice of authority. But you said, I changed my mind. Let's just, once more, for what seemed like the millionth time, words died down in her throat when a crown of crimson peeked out the corner of the hallway they were trudging along. Her stomach most probably would have dropped a couple pounds if she were to be honest, Sanadi. I was looking for you. Chirped a lively Kashina. The redeed staggered and stumbled in her steps when she saw the little companion she was holding hands with. Sanadi had half a mind to pluck those wide eyes of hers, so she wouldn't teddy up her son with those vile eyes of hers, as stupid as it sounded. And Naruto. Whispered Kashina. It seemed as if time had stood still for the pair who were staring at nothing but each other. Tsunade, being the annoyed mother, broke their stare fest by pulling her child behind her legs before she tried anything funny. What the hell do you think you're doing here, Yuzumaki? The venom laced in her voice wasn't lost at all to the redeed, who raised her hands in surrender to show her peaceful intentions. I came to say I'm sorry. The dirty look Tsunade shot her with made her glare right back, really, I did. Kashina told them. 
Tugging her kimono from behind, Naruto had to remind Tsunade that he was here too. Ma, your grip is too tight. Naruto whispered out of Kashina's earshot. Tsunade, realizing she had held him in a painful grip, involuntarily loosened her hand up and caressed his hair softly. I'm sorry. She apologized seeing his pain-ridden face, feeling guilty as all hell. Do you, by any chance, know who I am? Tsunade's glare would have repulsed Kashina, that is, had Kashina been actually looking at her. Her attention and her question were aimed at the blonde toddler of eight hidden behind her legs. I have a fair idea, yes. Naruto whispered, clutching his mother's leg with a shiver. You do Kashina had half expected Tsunade to hide all evidence of her existence from Naruto to keep him tied around her finger. Even Tsunade, whose face was the picture of indifference was shocked and truly frightened on the inside. You are the woman who gave birth to me, right? Looking as if struck by acid, Kashina hadn't expected such an indifferent answer from the boy. Smiling a strained grimace, why yes, I'm your mother. She told him, a tad bit on the helpful side. Though, much to her confusion, Naruto only shook his head. You just gave birth to me, my mom's right here by my side. Tsunade's and Kashina's expressions were like heaven and hell one was looking at the picture of happiness, while the other looked ready to fall on the verge of despair. Before she could so much as utter a word, I've wanted to talk to you, will you hear me out? Clutching on to her last hopes, Kashina nodded vigorously, eager to hear him out. I know I'm neither strong enough, nor do I have the power to fight you back, but, taking a deep breath to stop his shaking, don't come near my ma again, much less try to hurt her. She's all that I have. He whispered forlornly. I didn't, what I am capable of may not amount to much, but if anything happens to her. Kashina's eyes went wide when a visage of her late husband hovered over his shoulder, his face the same as she had seen in countless battles in her younger years, there will be hell to pay. In the name of the forests we hold dear, I'll make sure you get dealt with, even if I have to sell my soul to the devil himself to do so. Naruto, in a sudden turn of moods, threatened her in a small voice. The last sentence shook Kashina, even Tsunade was shaken to the very core. He had all but declared a conflict not declared since ancient times, by referring to himself as the heir to the forests, the Senju's pride and joy. Let's go, mom. Tsunade let herself be pulled away without uttering a word to her son, leaving behind the redeed, who seemed no more than a shell of her former self. She guarded herself to the receptionist's desk, checking herself out and leaving a message to be sent to Shizun and the two perverted ninjas upstairs to rendezvous with them at the Senju estates. She had hoped Kashina wouldn't be able to locate them if they stayed at a hotel instead of their accustomed residence, but that plan had gone, how should we put it, peachy. But what had her surprised the most was quite certainly the long stretch of silence that had settled between her and Naruto. Placing her palm to cover his little head, what's wrong, munchkin? She inquired, her tone turning as gentle and caring as it possibly could. Much to her surprise, she got no answer, instead his head dipped further down in shame to the point where his hair was shadowing his eyes to the fullest. Knowing something was up, she stopped abruptly and pulled her little one to a jerky stop. Bending on her knees, she flicked his forehead playfully, forcing him to let out a yelp. Come on now, spill it. I'm sorry, mom. Tsunade blinked, sorry. She tilted her head in honest confusion. For what? For using your name and status like that, it wasn't my place to. Placing her finger on his lips to stop his babbling, she smiled knowingly. It's not my status and power you just used, Naruto. She told him, her tone firm and wise. As expected, she could see he was utterly lost from her words. She poked his chest for an added measure of reassurance, that was your name you used, it was the power I've handed over to you. You're the heir to send you, Naruto. Be careful what you use that name for the next time around, never let your emotions get the best of you. She honestly felt like a hypocrite right now, but these were lessons she had to impart onto him to make him realize the true weight of the name he had to carry now. Toddlers grow really fast, she lamented inwardly. That doesn't change what I did though, he whispered woefully. She hummed, agreeing with him on that point though the pride in her eyes could be seen by any passerby looking at the mother-son couple. Does it feel wrong? She asked. Huh? Giggling at his reply, what you did back there, does it feel wrong? She asked, gauging him intently for a reply. That would tell her if her teachings over the years really had come to fruition or not. Falling silent for a moment, finally, Naruto shook his head in a negative light. Oh. Tsunade drawled, amused. How so? She hurt you, I'd do the same thing a thousand times over Ma. Tsunade's lips stretched widely, she hauled him up in her arms and coddled his nose with her own, eliciting happy laughs from her bundle of life. Then you did nothing wrong. She told him. Nothing is truly right or wrong in life, Naruto. The only thing we can hope to achieve is to live a life without regrets, so if you don't regret your decision everything's fine. She recited sagely, making Naruto frown. But I was greedy, you said being greedy was wrong. His counter-argument made her eyebrows shoot up in surprise, leaving it to her son's sharp mind to recite her own words to argue with her. Greed is misunderstood by most people too, at least to an extent. 
she settled his hip snugly on her arm, quite aware of the shadowing presence looming behind them and eavesdropping on their conversation. But the presence was familiar, most importantly it was non-hostile. How so? Naruto asked, breaking her out of her stupor. Hmm. She wondered, trying to come up with a plausible argument. Greed isn't good, but it's not exactly bad either. Most people think greed means having more money or power, but everyone wants something they can't have like you did. She poked his nose teasingly. You wanted to make sure I was protected, without thinking of the consequences. That's the perfect example of greed accumulated in a good way, but wanting something that you absolutely cannot have is dangerous, so try to stay clear of that. Her cheeks flushed seeing the wide-eyed, admiring look he was showering her with. Snuggling his face in her neck, so long as you're fine and with me ma I won't get greedy, I promise. He swore in little more than a whisper. His words made her heart sore and her stomach tied up into a knot. If something happens to me. The entirety of the population in the bustling streets came to an abrupt halt when a wave of killing intent washed over the streets. Sensing the center of its source, Sanadi was shocked to realize she was holding it in her arms. Naruto looked at her, his eyes crimson and slitted. Instinctively she jolted his neck with a hint of lightning, knocking him out instantly, and looked around to see people finally shrugging off their weird phenomenon and going back to their lives. No one had noticed, thankfully. This was the second time it had happened, whenever she placed him with a scenario in which something happened to her this happened. But this time she knew one fact for sure, she was the involuntary trigger to her son's rage. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoy it. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the other's videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys next video.